Can you hear me? Hey, yeah, uh, I hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, just trying to do the mic check, see if I can get a feed on this before I start the stream. Uh, sure, yeah, go ahead. Okay, good, we go. Let's uh, start the stream. Eh, sorry, there's like one part that I had to still do manually on this, but I have most of it set up, but yeah, how's it going today? Um, uh, chill, just, uh, you know, just waiting for, for this space. Uh, like, uh, you know, when I'm doing the book space, like, I, I don't, I don't plan anything major. So yeah, I was just home, like doing laundry and stuff. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cause I remember once, once, yeah, like I went, I went to help someone to move some, some stuff, you know, with a U-Haul truck and I had a space, like a, yeah, a book space. And like, I almost, I barely made it. Like, I remember like, it was like my, five minutes and I'm like, oh, dude, like I'm driving home. So yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to happen again when I'm I'm all stressed out to make it. So, uh, yeah, like when I when when you throw a space, I I usually just do laundry or like do yes, yeah, like stay home, try not to, not to have any commitments. Ah, uh, nice. Yeah. So let's see, let's see when if there's somebody else gets here. I'm not just prepping all the feeds and everything. Um. Yeah, no. I had a relatively busy day for Monday. I had to go. Well, actually, I went. I had to renew my 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 learner's permit there because it expires after six months. And I hadn't really used it, and then I got. I actually did the uh, paperwork for my enhanced concealed carry today. I'd, I'd had like because you had to wait six months, so I'd but I just hadn't yeah gotten around to it. So I went in there, filled out all their forms. They fingerprinted me, which I, I expected. My fingerprints were taken years ago because I, I, I was working for a, 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 what do you call it, a software company. Um, and, yeah, just as part of it. So, you know, I'm already in the system. You know, it's funny. I, I, want, to, I want to get a, like, renew my motorcycle permit as well. Like, I, I had it a long time ago, and, like, I just, like, it expired. And I want to renew it, but now I have to do all this uh yeah, like they, they need, I need to register this new thing where basically it's like a digital ID. You have to, you need your fingerprints, you need your uh, your IDs online. So I'm really annoyed about that, but I guess I'm gonna have to do it. And uh, like for for I, I, what I can tell too, like for your taxes and all these things, they're kind of uh, you know like doing uh, putting all of it together with your your online ID or whatever. Like if you if I want to get a copy of you know like for previous taxes, I have to uh, go through that, like register and, and go through the system, like. Um, or yeah, like it, say if I want a, a driving record, something like that. Like I need to do it that way. So seems like it's going that way, and I need that for work too. So I mean, I, I don't want to, but you know, like I, I, they give you an option where you can ma like mail, mail a letter, you know, to to request it. It takes like a month, whereas if you do it like you know through the website, it's like you know half a day. So just by pressuring you to do it, so. But yeah. Uh, and, uh, I don't know. I only heard part of that because I was uh, setting up, but I I know that that's the one thing. I mean, here it's. Oh, it's so damn easy to get a license for the most part versus in Canada and all that stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, as, as, as an adult, you can just go in, take the test, written the test, get the, the receipt, go and take the driving test and you're done. You've got a full eye. It's just been forever since I drove. And actually my buddy's coming up this weekend. So I might just practice a bit with him and, and then uh, with his car and then, then I should be good to go. It's just been a long damn time since I drove, so that's well, no if, if, you, if you play video games, you, you should be good. Like, I, I you know, I, uh, you know, I, I told my sister how to drive. I told a friend how to drive, and you know, my friend who play video games, like he just has like you know, the reflexes are like there. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what is my sister when I play video games? Yeah, like she she had a hard time. So, and I read that a lot. Like, if you if you do play video games, you have like a better spatial awareness when it comes to. Uh, hand-eye coordination so i think you should be good since you you seem to play video games like, yeah no like I, I was never a bad driver i just never particularly enjoyed it so I, I did it as little as possible and then i never drove the whole time as in montreal because i did i yeah i would never want to drive in montreal so no that's fair i i, I drive for a living and like believe me it's it's like one of the you know saddest thing ever to have to drive in, in downtown montreal like it's just yeah it's demoralizing i uh, know but I guess we got Adrian here. How's it going, Adrian? Hey guys, how are you? Good. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I just finished the last hour, like, of 
a no gift way. From Earth. Like, <laughs> just just now? Well, just like an hour ago, yeah. Lord. Yeah, I started it yesterday. I I just listened on two X speed, right? So I, I was I reviewing that. I, I I only got about halfway through it, but yeah, no, I was actually listening at two point five X there. Dude, oh, nice, that, nice. That, that's like Alabama <laughs> Chipmunks. Like, what is that? Well, no, no, because it, 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 well, no, it pitch, it, it, it controls for the pitch, right? Since it's digital, it's just like, yeah, it skips so many. So, Wait, like, can, just... can you can you lower the pitch if you if you increase the speed? You can still lower the pitch. Can you? Well, no, no. I mean, normally what happens is when you speed up, like in the old days, all you do is if you speed up a a you know an audio file or even physic physically or digitally, if you speed it up. That's how you get the pitch shift, right? So by increasing the speed, you're increasing the pitch. Nowadays, with digital technology, right, you can actually compensate so it's uh, so you can increase the speed without change, right? You can hit, you can change speed and pitch independently, right? It used to be that you had to actually, and I think there might have been ways that they did it in the old days, like they probably like shifted it and well, then did with, whatever that with, was. With, with Winamp, I don't know if you ever, guys ever use Winamp like OG, right? But with Winamp, you could do that. You could go and like lower the the pitch you know, like let's say some bands would play them in like a higher speed and but lower pitch and you can go to the settings and do that back then well, as I was, so like that's yeah so i mean i i mean it, it gets a little skippy because i mean essentially what it's doing is like it's you know taking out segments of it so that it's you know and sometimes some words are said so fast that it's a little bit too close you get you you surprisingly get pretty used to it though right when you listen to it at that oh, speed yeah, totally well, like, yeah. even if you listen to it just moderately sped up, like I said, that 1.2 one to 1. 1.7 or something like that, you, you you almost don't even perceive it anymore. And then if you switch back to one, it's like, oh, my God, this is so slow. I, I do. I exactly. do 1.5. Exactly. And, and that's, like, top for me. Like, it just – at that point, like, to me, just kind of, you know, like, compromises the enjoyments. When, when, I, when it's too fast, I'm like, yeah, like, I do, I do get it. But, like, it's just, you know, like – Oh yeah, no. I mean, like, I was I was only listening to this fast because I was on review. Because I mean, yeah, for the most part. But um, it it also depends on the reader. This reader, the one I had, it it, it was a longer reader than I think. I think there was two other ones. So he 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 speaks a little bit slower and more clearly to begin with. So that's probably why I Wait, could did, push did, it. Did you have Braun, Ganser, or Kaplow? Uh, I think it was Kaplow. Let me here. Let me confirm that. Yeah, I want to say it was Kaplow. It was a, it was the one I'd originally listened to, but then because um, one second, <clears throat> the Larry Niven collection that they have on there now, you can tell it's like new, like they uploaded a new one, and so it has more um, more options than it did before. Yeah, I I redownloaded it too because I had the like the older torrent, and this new one has more options, so I was happy about that. Um, Kaplow. Okay, yeah, I I, I listened to uh, uh, Ganser. Uh, I don't know. He he seemed to uh, uh, kind of do more more of a dramatic. And I I, I was having trouble because I went for um, to Cap, uh, with Kaplo first, but I, I was mixing the characters. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna try someone else. Uh, maybe they inject a better like you know like more, you know like a different uh, voice acting for each character and and ganser does like slightly so that's why yeah. i ended up with that one yeah yeah G ganser was great yeah no it what was just the like caplo i think was well i can't remember one of them it's like this was originally with one with tapes and so like it sounded like older and dirtier i can't remember what the three different ones but uh, th that's the one i'd previously heard so i just went with what i'd known previously but yeah, i was able to push it to 2.7 so no i think it's brown because that brown sounds very muddy and uh yeah that's probably a tape Another tape. Anyway, hi Jody. Hi guys. Hey Jody. Hi. I think. How's it going? Good. Talk to get from Earth. Yep. So I don't. Yeah. So I don't know where you guys want to start on this one, or any initial thoughts, or um... initial initial thoughts. Um. Wow, <laughs> what a ripoff of Ulan Door. And I actually looked it up, not the entire story, but the air car part and like him like go going around with the girl. Um, yeah, I mean, the air car is directly ripped off from Ulan Door. Uh, and Ulan Door, I went back, I looked. 
that was published in 1950, and I believe this was 1968. So there's no way that Li Niven did not know about that, right? So, well, I mean, it's possible, but I mean, it's... It, it, it's I mean, it's I mean, very it's, generic. It, exactly. It's and a very generic know, concept. Even Why in the a, 60s? In I mean, the, this was promised to us in the 60s, right? In the 60s, yeah. they were running the things like, oh, yeah, everybody, right? The Jetsons, the Jetsons and everything yeah. else. Yeah, the Jetsons, yeah. I mean, I... I may, may, but a lot of other author, authors are influenced by authors before that, I mean, I'm right? just saying, like, I'm just saying not... the, by the time he wrote this, the concept of just an air car had become, you know, almost trite, right? Like, almost um, expected. Well, I mean, like I said, to some extent, like, people were expecting within their lifetime to have air cars, right, in the 60s there, right? All the... The, the the home of tomorrow and stuff, right? But, but wasn't it more called the flying car and not the air car? Like, I mean... Oh, I don't know. I mean, but I mean, that, that is just... I mean, the, the, the concept of air cars. Now, maybe when 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 Witch McCall was written, it was like early on, but at this point, right? I mean, like the Jetsons were scooting around in air cars. Because I think this one was 1968, right? So, I mean, it was not... It was, it was almost a... It, yeah. Like having robots, right? Yeah. Um, it, w one thing I did find was kind of interesting, like the way it kind of, it starts off in a bar and then goes from there. That was kind of, um, you know, a little bit different, right? Um, yeah, that was, that was kind of, and like most of those characters. Now I was questioning like towards the end there, I mean, all of those characters in the bar, did they already know to some degree that like. He had psi factor, like this, like psychic power to like. I don't think so. I don't think he even knew. He didn't know. I, I get the feeling like they kind of knew, right? Like ahead of time. I think it was joked, but like, I don't think it was like, it was only the one that really believed in psi powers, right? Like it was, it was almost like luck of the Irish, right? The luck of but the could even said later on in the book that he only really brought him there to try to recruit him in general. Yeah, I remember that yeah. part where he explicitly says that. Yeah, like I just, I was, I just went for a, looking for a recruit, like you know, kind of, you know, I'm saying it was an accident, and everything that happened. Because like, um, uh, Keller was he was in the hospital, and they were trying to remember they were trying to get him to go invisible and become the assassin. So this is towards the end of the book. And and Hood said, Jay said, he says, you know, in a matter of speaking, I have to find the exact paragraph, but it was like, you know, I'm really, I'm sorry, I didn't mean for it to get this far. Like, we really only kind of originally meant, I only meant to try to recruit you. I don't think he, I think it was just a coincidence that Hood and Hood was interested in Psy powers and Keller actually had them. Now, yeah. I'm, I'm not trying, I'll try to say this without spoiling any of the other books, but in later Niven, right, like I think this might, well, he, he deals with psychic powers and stuff like that, but this is where I think I brought up another, like the idea that maybe, maybe luck itself is a psychic power, like a genetically inheritable. He was pulling Niven. <laughs> well, no, 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 I mean, this this is dealt with very, but I'm, I'm just going to say, and so, um, I mean, that's very early on in, in that in that particular, but I'm saying, so it's something he deals with, and it might be something that he's touching on here, maybe hinting at, or he develops out of here. So that's one way to look at it, like kind of like the idea that, you know, Matt, like, because the luck thing, right, because they call it the luck of Matt Keller right now. Of course, it turns out that he has, yeah, this, this psychic power that allows him to kind of avoid detection when he doesn't want to be seen and then or, or actually command attention later. He learns how to develop that. So it, it's possible that, yeah, it, with one side power comes others, right? The the fact that he kind of gravitates, you know, things around him as as much as pushes them away, right? What? Well, he thought he was pushing people away because it, it seems like his side power is based on emotion, right? So he has to stay scared. Otherwise, he becomes visible. And that's what happened. Remember that? Remember in the beginning of the book where there was this, they talked about this boy in the playground and he was the bully and he saw Matt sitting by himself by the tree and he went over there and, and he was going to like, you know, bully Matt. And then all of a sudden he forgot that he was there. Right. Like Matt didn't realize that. And then also in girls, right? Like 
he would get nervous around women and then they couldn't see him all that time. He thought that he was like pushing people away. But that wasn't. Yeah. Why. By the way, I had an Orlando. He would just go invisible if he I was scared and nervous. Or... Uh, so, sorry, my apologies. Believe me, Matt. I only picked you as a pro recruit. But Matt didn't answer if we continue, but we don't need, we do need you. Let me show you how much. So yeah, he says that. I'm not sure if it's a, mm -hmm. if he meant it or no. Yeah. So um, I, I don't know. What do you guys think of Millard Parlett taking over after uh, Jesus Pietro is out of the way well he always it, it's kind of a weird thing i mean this is just my thoughts on it because this is what i frequently talk about like i mean but this is why i like niven because like for the most part he develops pietro very clearly even though he's obviously the bad guy right but he really does try to give him motivation and it's mostly just that this is just you know what he expects and this is now to some extent he does benefit from it and it's almost like Millard Parlett is worried that, you know, Pietro, who is loyal to them, will realize how much power he, 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 now I think people are more familiar with this concept now that, you know, like, what was that stupid show, um, Downton Abbey, right? The idea of the major domo, the butler, right? This guy who pretty much runs everything, right? And while at the same time is loyal, but, I mean, because of course you, you deal with it anywhere, right? Like samurai movies, right? So somebody who... Yeah, like everything runs perfectly around them. They make it so that the higher ups don't do it, but then below them, they then demand the same thing. And so that's what's interesting is like, yeah, to a certain extent, I think Parlette knew things were kind of on the way out there and he'd always been waiting for it. And then, of course, he almost kind of gripes about the same thing that um, what you would call it does the uh, the Lord lord something something does in um diamond age right where he's like my offspring are fucking stupid and worthless right <laughs> yeah yeah finkel mcgraw um yeah so uh uh jesus pietro is the uh, kind of superintendent archetype character or like they run everything but you know they are they're not part of the uh the elite or the, uh, you know, the, it's a low born, you know, um, uh, character. Well, he was half and half, wasn't he? He was half. He's half, he's half through. Yeah. He didn't, he, his father was, his father was an old guy. And I guess he went and got a replacement set of jewels and he was fathered late. So he didn't know his father, I guess, or whatever. I don't know. That part, I found a little vague, but. Yeah. The father got like. I don't know, somebody else's testicles implanted yeah, in him. From the yeah, body yeah. And it was, yeah, yeah. So he ended up being half, um, what, what was he like? An, he, half true, half, half colonist. Yeah, colonist. And what was it? Like the tr true earther or something like that? What was it? Like, It's just think... crew and colonists. Oh, yeah, right? okay, crew, crew and colonists. Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then colonists. essentially, yeah. there, there's half breeds, right? That's somewhere right. Between. But, but then there was yeah. like another faction that had been like pretty much fully destroyed. There were like oh, the that's... Earthers or like the Earth. Am I? Am I... I mean, there Earth? were the Sons of Earth. Those were the rebels. Sons of Earth. That's yeah, they it. weren't destroyed. Yeah, they weren't destroyed. No, though. they were. They, they called us who were rebelling. They were the. Yeah, they were the. Oh, God, I made my notes here. They were the, um, oh gosh, hold on here. But were they, so I made notes here. Were they colonists? Or? Yeah, they were all colonized. Yeah. It, it was, yeah. Uh, okay, okay, they okay, were okay, like yeah. the rebels, It was like a faction, right? the, the resistance. resistance faction. Yeah, exactly. The resistance. That's how, that's how I first thought of them was like a resistance, right? So Zinc, when you, when you, um, suggested this story and you're like, oh, you know, about like government control and stuff like that. Was it the fact that, um, like, were you thinking, oh, you know, it's like they were they are hiding the technology because that would put the like organ, the, like the organ bank out of business, but it would also affect the justice system there. But like, I mean, I I was thinking like, couldn't they just go back to like 
an earth style justice system where there's like well, capital that's the problem, punishment like, and, saying, and stuff say, like that. Say, saying that is is rather vague, right? Their entire culture and whatever had been developed right. on this, right? Like that's the why like, it was even. I mean, I think there was a number of reasons, but I think I kind of decided to do this one when we were doing um, the makers of gold, right? The idea that if you know you have gold and then you suddenly find a way to very quickly produce it, right? You know, the scarcity of that is is what holds it. But then here, it's it's not just the scarcity of organs; it's also having that justice system and everything else, right? So the entire, you know, everything is kind were of were based on it, right? Their ethics and morals were. An economy and everything else. So that's what I mean. Like you have something that's truly disruptive here, right? Something that changes the relationship, right? The rarity, how long somebody lives for and everything else. Right. But but the thing is, like, if there's no need to harvest the organs anymore, I mean, it's still capital punishment that they have at the end of, like, that's your punishment, right, for breaking laws. Well, no, but like, 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 like they bring up, it's, it's not punishment. even that they need... They, they, it's not even that they need p- capital punishment. Now, maybe it's rose-colored glasses, but actually the part I was just reviewing, it talks about how, like, oh, yeah, no, they developed ways to get mostly, you know, like, you know, recid- you know, low recidivism rates, right? So they, they, they knew how to, you know, it's, it's, it's just the chicken and the egg type thing, right? It wasn't about pun. Well, people think it's about pun. Like, early on, something is done for something practical. It has another side effect, and then the side effect becomes its primary concern, an, or another primary concern, right? So that when the initial effect, of, uh, d- you know, reason for something is gone, well, but there's still something on the side there. I mean, I'm trying to think of an example. There's plenty of examples of this, but let me take off. Um, I don't know. There, there, there's there's cases like well, but we already have, you know, like the, the, the people come to depend on. There's other times this comes up in legal things, right? I mean, it, it, it's it's. It's a very common sort of pattern, right, in in societies, right? So, I mean, it, it just comes down to that that's the entire structure of society, right? Now, on Earth, it's a little bit less involved because of whatever. He's like, oh, yeah, it's just, disru- you know, early on, he says, you know, it causes disruption on Earth, too, but it will be mostly quiet. Whereas here, it will be revolution because they've pretty much structured, right, the hospital is the prison is the Gestapo, right? Like it, it's where like, you know, it's, it's all become one thing because of the extreme sort of, um, that's the source of power. Yeah. There. Well, cause th- th- there's, there's multiple forms of scarcity in this colony, right? It, it's got one little outcropping that's roughly the side of Southern California there or half of California or something has said like, or Northern California. So, I mean, it's, it's just scarcity, right? And then if you do, suddenly do that, you know, then you you change the social order, right? Like so, there would be no place there. Yeah, there would be anarchy, right? There would be chaos because there would be no punishment. So then there would be crime would go up. So you, where do you build prisons on a place that's half the size of California, right? Because they they said the the colonists outnumber the well, there's thirty thousand of the crew, and and I think they said there was what three or four times that that colonists so they yeah. outnumber them but there's a certain acceptance to the colonists like they accept their their role in society they don't they don't even see it as being unethical or immoral like we do in our society because it's just always been the way over the 300 years that well i mean so here's here's Mount the, look at that yeah. i like the names in the book mount look at yeah, that yeah. and uh and Mount and uh, Planet, what's it. that? Planet, what, what is it? it? What is it? it? Yeah. yeah. Is that is that, that was, Niven that just funny. being funny or is it no? Like... There are places well, no, in mean, this yeah. universe. If you keep reading on Niven, those are planets that. Uh, it's sort of it's sort of tongue in cheek, but it is. I mean, that is sometimes what I mean when somebody names it something, right? It's it's almost like you know yeah. people just give things random names and they stick, right? He does do some stuff sort of tongue in cheek. Not too much that's obnoxious because usually I hate that level of sort of coercion, but I think it's more just of a, a satire of just humanity and that that's really what people – it's just like a random – like actually today because we were going to the DMV there, my brother was asking me like, oh, is Ada short for something? Because Boise is in Ada County. There is also a Boise County, but it's Ada County. And from what I understand, I think I looked it up one time, literally just some guy who was like a leading politician back you know, 150 years ago, his daughter's name was Ada. And he's like, yep, I want to name it Ada County, right? Yeah. So right. that's, it's Ada County, right? That's how arbitrary things are, right? 
this so, like, seems I, to be like the first reaction that the first person who saw the planet or saw where they the habitable part it was like the first reaction from the yeah. first person that's what they named the planet or that's what they named where wherever they were well because sometimes sometimes th those are actually what you know names are they're just hidden behind you know foreign languages in english right, right. Like, you know eureka and you know stuff like that right like it's, yeah. it's it's just arbitrary you know philadelphia right it's it's sort of like yeah what's the first reaction or what's the sort of because i think otherwise there's also a planet called jinx like which obviously yeah. has connotations within this exactly. universe yeah so like it's kind of like yeah it, it where they're five feet tall and five feet wide exactly yeah <laughs> i couldn't remember if you mentioned that in yeah this he does. Not, he, like i said what what's 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 nice about niven is you can really jump in anywhere on any of Niven's books, almost like at least the first several, right? Maybe not Ringworld 2, but uh, for the most part, he re-explains things he's established elsewhere in his universe. He doesn't really assume prior knowledge. And then you do get rewarded if you go back. Because I actually read Ringworld, which is actually, you know, after this book and after a few other ones, and it kind of mentions these same things. So you do get a sense of of the kind of bigger... So he, he never kind of like assumes inside baseball right like at least at that time he probably assumes that yeah somebody's just going to wander in pick up a book and you know it was only starting around that time that you could write eight books in the same series and people were going to collect them all right most people were expecting to buy a book and just be able to one off it right so yeah but no actually so here's here's what i was thinking taxes right so supposedly originally the income tax was just supposed to be temporary to pay for you know covering some war or something else but then you know but then they keep using it. it's like but guys but guys if we don't have the income tax how are we going to pay for the roads right so they add something on it and then they can't back out of it right so that's sort of what you get throughout right like th there's a meme that goes around on here from time to time right if the government started wiping people's asses right set up a program to wipe people's asses five years later but if the government doesn't wipe our ass who will right like <laughs> that's just so i mean it's it's just that level of thing. and it, it, it is true right i mean because like yeah if you suddenly cut all those things right like you get vacuum you know it, it you, you get cultural and power vacuums which are unpredictable well, but, if you uh, don't plan Carlet, right now Miller, is here on, but, um he goes uh you know he i mean he's arguing that uh you know that, that crew i mean that, that the colonies don't think that, that the crew uh, rule is wrong and he goes it all depends on the organ banks on the one hand the organ banks are a terrible threat not only a death penalty but an anonymous way to die on the other hand, the banks are a promise. I mean, who deserves it can pay for it. Even a colonist can get medical treatment at the hospital. But without that, the organ banks, there would be no treatment. He died. Do you know what your rebels would do if they could beat the crew to their knees? Some would insist that the organ banks be abolished. They'd be killed or ostracized by their own members. The majority would keep the banks just as they are, but use the crew to feed them. Exactly. So, I mean, in this case, Mar Miller Parlett seems like he's been thinking about this for a long time. So he's trying to accommodate for the power vacuum. Right. So he's trying to make it an easier transition, you know, and of course, it doesn't go perfectly to his plan. But for the most part, he's pulling the strings all along. But he's obviously thought about it for, you know, at least a well, century. Uh, yeah, so, it's, it's a conversation be between yeah, Harry Kane and Parlett. And I was thinking about like what we, you know, we talked about in spaces like, what if things collapse, right? Like there would be a power vacuum and like you would need people who've been thinking about it, right? For a long time. I, mean, I guess it's what, what Walk keeps saying, right? Walk is like, well, you know, we, we have to be ready for, for the power vacuum and like have a strategy. So I feel like Parlet here, he's been thinking about this for a long time and like, you know, kind of running simulations in his head, like, okay, what will happen? Like who's going to come in? And like, that's the reason he's kind of taking over remediating, right? Between, between them. Because otherwise it would be like just, anarchy or like what, what he fears right like it, it was just you know like a, a mass you know like a massacre between one another the, the factions there so now what's interesting to me like because you guys brought up like the kind of way it begins right it, it has this parallel structure right it kind of pretty much covers like a good you know i don't know two decades a decade or so they're right between pietro and and matthew keller right where it kind of like, you know, shows him at, what, at the same time and then him and then kind of jumps back and forth and kind of shows their sort of parallel development over those years, right? Because, um, I th like I said, what's interesting about this one is he, obviously Pietro, what, what's his full name? I always forget. I just, uh, Jesus like, Pietro Castro. Hey, Jesus Pietro, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Zeus Pietro Castro. Yeah, so um, he... 
so like I said, like when you dig into it, like he really does seem to believe it, right? He doesn't, right? He's, he's just a sort of very, you know, he's an ideologue, right? He fully believes in it, right? He, he accepts his lower position, but then he also accepts his higher, right? And this is what you see kind of propping these things up, the major domo, right? The butler there in, in Downton Abbey, right? The guy who sort of enforces it, but then also sort of genuinely does accept it. Now, because what's hinted at there later is that he's so involved in the process that it's not that he he respects the crew, but he respects the the structure, yeah. right? It's almost, and this is this this is the mindset of the Middle Ages of feudal society, right? The the mandate of heaven, well, right? Uh, the, I mean, also the, the you mentioned the, the, the samurai too, right? Like it is a structure that yeah. respects, yeah. Well, like like I said, there was a there was a series of books I read years ago. It was the Sharps books, right? Which are um, they take place during, well, they kind of go all over the place, but they originally start during the Napoleonic Wars and especially Britain's involvement there in Spain. And the main character, he's supposed to be like a sergeant who was, you know, saved Wellington's life, you know, years earlier. And so was granted a an honorary commission. And the way that the kind of lower ranked se- soldiers didn't really like that because the idea was, you know, that he wasn't touched by grace, right? The upper classes, which were all nobility usually, were touched by grace, right? And he was one of them, and now he was lording over them, right? And this is what you see in class-based society, that what they sometimes hate more than the actual upper classes born into it is anybody who raises themselves out of it, right? Um, Like I said, this is the malicious mediocrity that I frequently reference, kind of on a more kind of bigger scale there in a a very sharp way. Because what, what what's hinted at there that, Millard Parlett, he seems to be aware that Castro is, you know, an important part to keeping the current order, but he's he's actually afraid of him because he's almost like afraid that, yeah, that Parlett, I mean, that that Castro will become awakened to the fact because he just wants to maintain the order, right? Which means that even if he could get, you know, that the crew exists, but that it's just there to maintain the order, right? That he'll will turn against the crew, and maybe he doesn't even realize he'll do it. But once you know that he's threatened, once his hospital is threatened, that naturally, and so Millard Parlett has kind of like yeah, five D chest him and realized that yeah, this guy is useful for the time being, but very quickly he's going to become a problem because if the social order is you know, you know. Uh, risked or you know threatened you know he's going to maintain it even if it means turning against some of the crew right which seems like it should be sacrilege almost but that's because it's not because he actually respects the crew it's because he respects the order and he wants to maintain the order because he can't foresee anything outside the order right all he sees is chaos right like he really does see himself as you know what's holding back unpredictable chaos there right well, he even talked about that. Um, and actually, I, I wrote a, I wrote that down. I took a, um, hold on here. It says, um, so when Parlett talks about the colonists, he said, they live the lives of a divinely. So in my opinion, it sounded like to that, to him, they live the lives of like a div- divinely ordained ruling class. And what he actually says, uh, and I quote, the average crew was utterly dependent on the fact that he was a crew. They talked in terms of rights, not power. Uh, and they live a free a life of freedom and novelty. Um, and so he, I, he was fearing that if, if it got out about you know, the Ram, Ram robot 143 in the contents of the, of, of the capsule, that there would be anarchy and these people wouldn't be able, like the crew wouldn't survive because they'd become so lazy and entitled. You know what I mean? Yeah, now, here's a question I have. Why would Earth send that technology to them? I mean, you know, I, I would think Earth would know how the structure and like everything functions there it's like why would they send that tech? well but the, i mean why wouldn't they right i mean just because that's how the structure is right i mean it, it's it's the right thing to do right and it's, it's just what what's established in these books is that like whenever they find something new and i'm not going to explain how they sometimes find different new things throughout the, 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 this this series they, they they just send it out to the colonies it's like oh yeah here's an update right it's, it's like an automatic update right it's right like, okay so, I mean, will it disrupt their order? Yes. Like, but they, they, they might not know fully how, you know, how heavy it is. Cause yeah, there's really no like 
direct. I, I don't even know if there's a sense that they can contact him at this point in the story. I know well, in later, twelve years, in, twelve yeah. light years away. In, in yeah. later, think, yeah. you read it forever war. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm know, familiar. No, no, I, I, I never read so that. disconnected, you know, because of yeah, like relativity or like time dilation. That's what I. That's what I got that from here. Like I just saw the forever war and how like yeah, when things happen on Earth, like it might be you know like a couple of, of decades, you know, they get the information later. So I just sort of that, like I just assume it's sort of. I mean, the the way it works is it's sort of like say you work at McDonald's or one of these like franchise shops, right? And yeah, it comes time to release a new product or something. They're simply just sent it, right? Sometimes whether they want to or not. They're just sent it because it's part of the franchise, right? They don't actually yeah. have direct control, but yeah, it's just sort of because I mean, it should be a good thing. And even arguably, if they knew it would disrupt their social order, then probably they're, they're like, well, maybe that social order needs to be disrupted, right? So, right. It was, but, but I think what the, the, there's very little contact. Like, I don't know how much is sent back from the colonies, right? So, pretty much all they know is just, oh, yep, well, that's one of Earth's cult colonies out there and we just continue to send them kind of gifts and other things um l- l- but what i think is later in the in the known universe cycle is nevin's books because it really covers it covers like it's just talking about like when they first get out to the asteroid belts and and then later on like disc world takes place like nine like the year 2975 or something like that right so it really covers like a thousand and so like at that point which is very late in the cycle um, there are ways of instantaneously sharing information, but at this point, it's kind of like you know they just kind of throw it down the rabbit hole and and uh, yeah. yeah I, just... I was thinking about that. I mean, especially when I, there is some mention of a, of a typewriter, I was like, wow, they have typewriters in the future. But uh, mostly, but you know, like uh, since I read Green World, I'm like, wait, they have something like the uh, um, you know, like, a, yeah, like instantaneous communication. And it, it hit me, oh, wait, this is probably really, like, really, really early before, even probably before they, they meet the, the Kazin there and, like, before the war with the Kazin. Like, it's probably well, it's, it's, it's also even implied that, like, because actually what happens, I can't remember how many slow boats get there, because, like, the first slow boat gets there, and yeah, Two. the crew, but no, that's what I'm saying. So the, the first slow boat gets there, and then the crew, yeah, like, forces the, 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 the colonists to serve them, right? And so by the time the second Slobo gets there, they don't know that this sort of a revolution has happened. So when the second one lands there, they're like, oh, yeah, this is how things are running here, right? So it really very much is that they're pretty much throwing things down the rabbit hole. And, yeah, they, I think they have the vaguest sense that they can send things back. I, like, I, I'm not really sure how much they send. I can't, I can't remember this. Yeah, they don't really focus on that. They just yeah, kind of yeah. talk about, like, Earth is, like mother earth sort of thing and 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 she sends all of the technology to them as as things evolve and they get things once in a while exactly i think there's some mechanism but yeah it's very slow so they really have very little control and this is actually in some ways very much how colonies ran you know two three hundred years ago right that's why the american colonies had gained such a high level of sort of feeling independent right because yeah like i always bring up like during the british civil the english civil war there you know the english were completely the the american colonies were mostly functioning right yeah there was like you know which rich trials and stuff like that but for the most part the you know the the colonies were untouched by the actual civil war it was too far away and everything else but the one thing i was going to bring up too just um just on on sort of because when i was talking about um pietro castro so the thing, like, it talks about, like, Millard Par- Parlette, right? Like, almost every part of his yeah. body has been changed out, right? That is to say that it both physically and mentally, he's adaptable, right? He's, 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 yeah. Whereas Pietro, like, it actually says that he really hates, like, I think he got a lung transplant, but for the most part, everything yeah, on him was yeah, he, original. He was about to die or be crippled, so that's why he, he took the transplant, but originally he didn't want to. Exactly. So, like, that's the thing, is that even in his body... He wants to maintain the status quo, right? He's very much an ideologue in that way, right? Like they can change him out, but he he is all about maintain maintenance and continuity, right? So well, he even said in the book, um, there was a part I I can't find it right now, but he said um, he didn't hate the colonists until then, right? Before it was just he just he this is the way things were. This is the status quo, and you don't rock the boat. You follow the rules. He was just he was so programmed. And then, and then he developed an actual hate for the colonists because of 
you know, they were rebelling and well, he, he wasn't, wasn't he, winning. They were winning. Exactly. He never felt threatened, right? It's like, oh, yeah, there's always uprisings and stuff like that. It's it's actually, it reminds me of 1984 and O'Brien, right? Like O'Brien's approach to it. He's like, you know, yeah. like, I expect this of you. People keep doing this, right? He, yeah. He's not overly worried about it, right? Like, it's expected that, yeah, there's always going to be uprisings. And if anything, it's actually become part of the system, right? That people can collect. Because one, yeah, it keeps the organ banks full. And then it gives people an outlet that's, at, at least for the most part, impotent, right? It's like, oh, yeah, we're going to rise up. But they have full control over that illusion, right? They're, they are essentially controlled opposition, so I have a I have a question, and I don't want to skip too far forward, but I do. So, um, so like you said, the story evolves and it and it ends, and so Matt's in the hospital, and you know he plays the trick on that nurse, that uh, that doctor in the end by becoming invisible, right? And then and then the book takes like the last couple of chapters there, it takes this weird turn, and it starts talking about. Um, the outer ship was a Christmas decoration and Dave Hooker comes into the picture and that whole storyline. And I'm wondering why he did that. Like it's, it just, it's tied to a bigger it universe. Foreign. It's tied to a bigger universe. Like if you if you keep reading Niven, you see like a you know, it talks about the, the outlanders and like, you know, it's kind of foreshadowing things for for future stuff. And like what Sim was saying, like if you pick any book, you'll see like, you know, like a, a, a lot of the events, you know, they they you know, like they're interconnected. So that that last bit, I understand they're into it's opening up yeah, the, the bigger universe. Well, it's like, it's like next time on, right? So I mean, he, like I said, he writes his books in such a way that you can jump in pretty much at any point, at least in in the first several ser- books. But um, but then he tries to get you to come back, right? Because this was a time when yeah, people read a lot for pleasure. But yeah, you just see some random book on the shelf there, you'd grab it, right? You didn't have the internet. It's like, oh, is this the first book in the series or anything like that, right? And even it's like, but then you don't also don't want to kill them. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, well, I guess this isn't the first book. So I guess I'll go and find, you know, the first so book, right? So Was you, you that were... meant to be like a, a, a tie-in to a next book with these Dave Hooker, Greg Loeffler, and the whole, you know, Dave Hooker goes crazy because he doesn't he doesn't use the dock thing enough and or it's broken. And so he ends up killing Loeffler's family. Like, it just seems so far removed from the story like the original story with plat- the plateau it just it was related I, but it, yeah. it was almost like another book was starting i was trying to remember that part because i didn't get that far in this review so i'm trying to remember but some of that does play into the later books like to speedies i, okay. I think it's just like i think it's to give a sample yeah of no what, ha- yeah. what happens is uh they're going to uh to uh oh was that what it was no so that's Wait, no, they're, they're, they do that in books sometimes they'll give you the first yeah. chapter of the no, next book he, and say buy this book i mean he's not doing that exactly but kind of well he's just giving you a like a little taste of of uh of the, like of the universe because i mean like i know there is a there is a i don't want to spoil it if we, if we keep reading the series though but something big happens and it's related to uh um, to the Outl- the outlanders, one of the, the species in the in, in this universe, and like in, what you're saying, what you're mentioning is that like you have the outlanders like kind of zoning out on one of these ships. But what book is that? Because now I have to read it. <laughs> yeah, I think you mean the outsiders. Sorry, the outsiders. My bad. Uh, I... Yeah, because there there is a series I think called Outlander, but it's it's kind of more of a detective series. It's it's like I uh, I've never read it, but I think no, the character, I think he's well, like... I'm mixing it with a with a culture series by Ian Banks. My bad. Um, no, no, I think he does have, or he has, there is another one, I think it's called Outlander, and it's essentially, it's like one of his other characters that he kind of covers, like, I did a bunch of his shorts, where he's kind of like, uh, he's like an investigator for, like, the, uh, the, one of the, like, um, what do you call it, the, 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 um, the asteroid belt or something like that, I can't remember, that's why it's an Outlander, there's a term, I forget, Outlander is a term for people who are from one of the planets, I think, from the asteroid belt. So the book actually ended when Matt was in the hospital and they come to him and say, we want you to be our invisible assassin. And he sets his terms and that was the official end of the book. And then that next part was kind of like a bit of a like opening to another book that that relates to, because it just besides it being in the same 
galaxy off of the plateau mount look at that yeah, yeah it's, it's like it one while else it jumps so yeah. it jumps it says the, the outsider ship it's a uh, you know it's it's the size of uh the diameter of new york or the same population right but it didn't relate to the original story outside no, of that it, it, it was just, it was from the same planet it seemed odd no it's it's cutting to that though it's like you know you get a cut there and it cuts to the, to the it, ship like a like an okay. like an epilogue kind of thing so, yeah, I just wanted to mention that because I just found it bizarre. It had nothing to do with the original story, which was really good. I really like this book. So I'm I'm just looking here. So initially, Zinc wanted to cover the Neutron Star, the collection of stories last year. But this, it's actually good that you did this one because the Neutron Star series actually comes directly after this. Um, and Some was, of them do. Yeah, the yeah. Neutron Star story does. But yeah. then there's other stories in there that I think precede this neutron. Like there's oh, okay. a neutron. There's okay. a story neutron star, which yeah, this this is a precursor for, and then leads into the ring world. But then some of the other stories in there I think predate this. I think it, it Wait, becomes so, a collection. Like the the, the book on the um, on we made it. That's the one before this one. Like I'm familiar with the happenings and we made it that you know like no. the. Uh, the, it, it's a moon in this gas uh, giant planet and like the winds are super super strong yeah. and then the, there's kind of this belt in between one of the sides of the moon where they live so is that before or after it's before that i so this book was written so he wrote a bunch of the shorts and then before this i think he had one other novel i'm checking C out. What, what, yeah what, it's, what jody, it's called world of world of plot what jody's saying though like is, that is that, that ending one. we have that the outsider's ship you know like uh they're following this this uh ram scoop uh robot the ram robot who's going to to where we made it so uh yeah i mean and, and if i remember correctly from ring world like something like stars there during that event so it, so it, here's the thing i think i'm sure i gotta check them all but pretty much i think all the stories in neutron store were written before this one were written before world of tovs and all that stuff right uh, so i think what he did was he he wrote those stories just for like he wrote a bunch of shorts kind of in the same universe right and then he wrote world like, of tovs it, and a gift from earth and then he collected oh, them into tovs? i think is so it, i is it I mean, it's Patovs, or I mean, usually just in okay, English, oh, yeah, yeah, right? Okay, we don't, we don't say key, pterodactyl, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, hey, you guys, I'm not a sci-fi expert, so I haven't read a great deal of these books here. Um, like, this, remember, I'm kind of, I'm a newbie on the sci-fi scene. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> so the thing. Like, he, he wrote a bunch of stuff before this, but the way he writes them, I actually read Ringworld first. I think most people these I days did, have read I did as well. Yeah, I which is first. actually fairly late. Like that, that was that was much later than a lot of this stuff. And then only once, essentially what happened was, yeah, he was getting more and more attention for his books. And then so they'd get printed more. So people would jump in later into his books. And then Ringworld was sort of the big one. So a lot of people read Ringworld without reading anything else he had written. And then retroactively went back and read the previous stuff, which I said, the way he writes is such a way that you can jump into any of his books. But then when you read them and then you go back and you read the previous ones, you're, you're rewarded for it, right? He's very good about that. Well, I mean, I, I, I had a ton of accessible. questions about Ring World and like, a, you know, reading this story and like kind of what, what's set up in this story. I'm kind of seeing like how it leads to that. I'm like, oh, okay. And what I said, like, you know, like if this is before the, the war against the Kazin, like, you know, it's, I really wanted to know how that happened. So if it gets, it would be really cool. So I that's found the that. Sorry, go ahead, thank you. So well, like I said, technically there are, there does come a point where they do start to feed into each other later. Not this one. Everything that comes after Ringworld, you really do have to read everything before then. But Ringworld, really, you don't have to have read anything before or any of the ones before. It does help. So okay, yeah, like okay, if, if, I'm going to kind of disregard that last sort of that news story as kind of like a tie into another story from Niven and just kind of focus on the yeah. It, I think I think it's a parallelism. I mean, it's not entirely unrelated. It's a yeah. parallelism to kind of show, like you know, you know, that this is what you know, kind of what the history of this planet ended up being. Okay. But now, now there's something else going. You know, that there's other things going on in this universe. Well, too, right? a, it, it's a, it ended up just being two guys chasing you across, chasing each other across space for the last for thirty years, and then one guy finds out that the other guy was dead for like the last 10 or something and it was just kind of i'm sitting here going but how does this relate to 
Keller and you know the resistance and the sons of Earth. I, mean, I think it's okay, just, just for the parallelism because now now that you say it, I, I do remember it. I think it's just to show you kind of that parallelism of okay of like time dilation, right? Like the the nat- nature of this time dilation and everything else, right? Like well, they talk about um, what I found interesting was like Dave Hooker. He was a he was he was insane and they were able to cure his insanity, but he had to, you know, have regular treatments from these doc, you know, these electronic docs or these doctors. Right. And he, he would just stick his hands in and it would shoot in the right amount of chemicals and his body would stay, you know, his mind would stay sane. And then it malfunctioned and he lost his sanity and ended up killing You know, his basically his best friend's family when he goes to the plateau where Mount look at that. And it was just kind of like, yeah, I was like, but it it, it relates to the same thing, but it's not the same. This has got to be another book. Okay, good. All right. I did find that passage, though, where um, where when they talk about the luck of Keller. And so when Matthew is a little boy, Keller's a little boy, it, it says Matthew. Matthew Lee Keller sat beneath a watershed tree and brooded. Other children played all around him, but they ignored Matt. So did two teachers on monitor duty. People usually ignored Matt when he wanted to be alone. So you can see like his power, his side powers were kind of activated based on his moods. If he was scared, if he wanted to be alone, if he really wanted to hide like within himself, that's when he would become invisible. And so I don't think like Matt, didn't even know that he had these powers like he only discovered them through his association with sons of earth and then but, yeah. then he became a tool for them but 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 then at the end of it right he realizes that he has the power to get people to focus on him specifically so like he's he's actually gained yeah. A new ability, right? I think what it's implied, I mean, more or less somewhat cynically, right, is that, yeah, there is no future where everybody's equal, right? So they just overcame one in inequality in humanity. And now right. with this emergence of psychics, you now have another inequality, right? So you never get right because it's like, oh, well, now we can grow organs. Now we don't need this inequality. It's like, no, no, no. There's always another inequality, right? Yeah, exactly. I, just, I love exactly. the humanity of Keller. Like he had this humanity that was missing from society in general because he didn't like he he didn't want to go with the sons of earth. Even in the end he didn't want to be a part of them. He thought they were fanatical. They they didn't, you know, they were impulsive. He he didn't want to kill people just because he could kill people. He didn't want um to be a part of them just because of, you know, but 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 even he acknowledges at the end there that like, you know, he can't know that he won't use his powers for evil, right? I mean, he, he even acknowledges that, and like, that's sort I of like he grew up a lot during the whole experience. He was well, very well, well when that like one woman comes in and she's wearing a different like the blue dress and stuff like that, and then he like he realizes that he can make her focus on him. So that's him sort of like oh, right. testing his powers, right? So it's like yeah, I forgot about now, that now he might use it for yeah, he, villainous well, it's, 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 right? So, it's I mean, easy to demand equality when you think you're going to gain something from it, right? Or like inequality. Seth, he was a virgin. He was a virgin. It's like he came to once he got laid. That was funny. <laughs> well, well, twice in like a short amount of time. Yeah, so, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> And the second time, like he initiated it, right? quick learner yeah, so, he so, is so he's, he's, he's quick gaining yeah, yeah yeah he's like you know what like i mean i'm going out for mine now right i mean that's that's really the sense i get at the end there now i don't know if this character ties in to anything further on um but i mean well, I, I think it's, it's yeah, introducing yeah. that to, to, to this universe right? that, that idea that uh now there is a uh, psionic powers or whatever right like and and they can be you know, like they can be uh, explorer and like you know, like the powers. You know, like they they they're not just limited to one thing. Like as we see with him, right? Like you know, it can be, it can be explored or like you know, like kind of leveled up. So I think it's introducing that into the into this universe. 
I found that the characters I liked the most in this story were, um, oh, I liked Parlette, Millard Parlette. Um, so captain, because, you know, he was the ancient and the wise one, right? He was the original captain of the plank crew. Um, well, I think he was direct descendant. He wasn't original, but he was no, like it the says right in there. He says he was the captain. Of no, the no, plank he wasn't. Crew. He wasn't. Oh, he wasn't? Well, no, no, because that's because the captain of the, of the crew was a piece of shit, right? He was the one who came up with the idea. It was like, let's hold these people hostage. So he was like directly descended from that captain. Oh, okay. Maybe so, I got that I, Once wrong. again, th- th- this goes into like, like that. What happens? Essentially, all the noble families of you of, of Europe, oh, right, right, are essentially just a group of like literal thugs, right? They're right. just thugs. over two hundred years old. Okay, yeah, and then yeah. their descendants become nobility and all fancy stuff. But right. if you if you trace back any nobility, it's literally just you know the biggest, grossest, you know, yes, it's the mafia I mean, w- w- Weren't the Kennedys bootleggers and stuff like that, like? Yeah. Before they became a yep. respectable American political family, right? Well, that's how Daddy Kennedy and Grandpa Kennedy made all their money. Ill- illegal booze. Uh, yeah, I, I had a question for you guys about, uh, and, and Jody, uh, she touched on it, about uh, Ketter just thinking that they, that the... Uh, the, the sons of, of her, whatever, they were a bunch of fanatics. Um, I mean, he, he repeats it all the time, right? Like, he, he's never, like, on board with their, their ideals, I guess. Um, he has this humanity about him that a lot of the other characters didn't have. Him and Parlette, that's why I like them. Yeah, but do you guys think, like, because uh, at some point, uh, you know, the, the, the sons of her, they say, well, you know, we have to let... Uh, uh, Parlette, you know, get into power because there's a vacuum and like, you know, otherwise it would be just civil war. But we have to have this, you know, kind of uh, uh, kind of leverage against them. And that's what we need you being the, the invisible assassin. Like, do, do you guys think that is fanaticism or like they're in their right? It's all cynicism. It? I mean, the only reason Matthew is maybe because the Sons of Anarchy are a, a mostly useless group, right? They really are useless throughout their entire history, right? They come, they go, they come, they go. Well, they, they, but they really the are Sons controlled of opposition. Here? What? Yeah, the Sons of okay. Earth, right? They never actually accomplish anything, right? So he reads on them that, yeah, that they don't actually ever accomplish anything. And he sees no benefit in it, right? It all comes down to, like, how people react once they see benefit, right? You know, I mean, even even the guy who runs the Sons of Earth, right? The the rebel leader there, what's his name? Oh, Harry Kane. Cool. Harry Kane, I mean, right? Yeah. Once he once 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 Millard Parlett gets his fingers in him, he's like, okay, yeah, like it's like we'll work together, right? It's pretty much implied that there's kind of like, now it's not going to be a nobility in the straight sense, but they're going to be the power brokers, right? It's like not everybody is going to be at the top of that heap, right? And then of course they're expecting, okay, maybe we can control Matthew Taylor, and that's the big question: can they really, right? Or can they control anybody else, right? So it's it's all it's all like. For the most part, I'd say Larry Niven is fairly cynical about the motivations of people, right? Like I said, for the most part, people yeah, just want to get yeah. laid and paid. But when they suddenly feel they are in a position of power, they sort of delude themselves into thinking that they deserve it or that that's right or that the other people can't handle it and they can't give it up right now. And so it, it is all kind of cynical in the end, right? Like, But in this case, in this particular story, Parlette is right. Like, he is the best person to take on the role. Um because he has like a sense of of what life was before the plateau from his ancestors, right? Like, like what life might have been before. Like, I'm sure back on Earth, I'm thinking that we're, there was still some semblance of, you know, he remembered humanity, right? Mercy, compassion. Um, and I find that Parlet, he has some of that in him, but he, he's realistic. He realizes. Yeah, he, he's pragmatic. But the society that is built up over 300 years and that in order to change that society, you have to do it in stages. Whereas yeah. the Sons of Earth, everything about them is their next mission. They don't really like, OK, so if they beat the, the crew out, right, and they win, they don't really have a plan of what to do next. Why do you need a why do you need a plan though? Like I mean, t- sometimes things work out if you don't have one, right? It's well, because like... he wants to retain power, he's he's maybe not horrible, but there is a sense that 
he wants to make sure that he and his descendants still retain some power. He, Wait, yeah. He's a villain, he's sort of, right? I mean, Parlet. Yeah. Not really. He's I technically don't find him a villain. Once again, in N- N- Niven stuff, right? Because I mean, obviously, the antagonist here is Pietro, but that's just because is. Pietro is. But Pietro, like, he, he very clearly lays out um, Pietro's motivations, right? It's just because Pietro does not see anything outside of the current status quo, right? Now, Millard Parlet is more, you He's know, kind of long. Well, no, I mean, they, 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 it's, it's, they all think they're maintaining the order there. But what it is, Millard Parlet kind of sees the bigger cycle of things, right? He's been alive for 200 years. And then, yeah, he's, he's well-educated. So he knows that the current status quo does have to collapse, especially under the new pressures. There's no way to suppress this, this kind of information now. But he wants, to, he wants to at least control it so that it's still beneficial to him. <laughs> I kind of saw Parlette almost like, okay, because his family was one of the first families, right? Almost one of the, one, one of the founding families. Um, and so he almost, he almost felt like it was almost like a re- his position was more regal than political um, because almost like a, a monarchy situation. Like it was a dictatorship, but the monarchy it was a mon- monarchy. It was. It was almost like a monarchy to me. He seemed like he was almost like the the heir to the throne of the plateau of Mount. Look at that, and he was the one that would be able to lead the people to a new society. And he understood that. Okay, yeah, I have to maintain our status as the crew, but we need the colonists too, and they are, after all, still human beings. So let's find a way to to change society one step at a time. But he felt more like it, it almost felt like he was regal to me. He didn't necessarily want to be who he was, but he was. So now that he was who he was, this is how you have to deal for the betterment of everyone. Well, he's a reformer, though. He's a, he's a reformer, right? He's, he's not, you know, a, a, I don't think he's a, you know, in terms of like a royalty, he's more like, like a reformer type of character who's willing to 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 change the set of school and like what, what he mentions before in the, the paragraph that I read before where he basically is saying like okay you know like if we let you guys take over like you as the prisoners you become the jailers right like uh, you, you like turn it upside down but like you you will you turn into the jailers like you you yourself will just turn around and in, instead of harvesting from from the colonists you will just harvest from crew and like keep the same like like kind of cruel uh, structure Whereas he's willing to reform and like even compromise and and change the the, the laws they have, whatever, kind of create this new constitution even. So I think that's the interesting part. Uh, Even with what we're living right now, right, where like our whole system is also collapsing. And it's funny, a product to this book is also because of information, right? We have all this information that can just, you know, like basically like collapse the system. So viewing that, like, you know, what's the best approach to to, to uh, accommodate a change sites instead of uh, doing a, a big flip there. Here, here, here's all uh, the yeah. parallels. Uh-huh. So here's the history of Japan, right? So Japan has an emperor, right? And then there was a historical shogun, but essentially the Tokugawa shoguns, right? Because that's their last name. The Tokugawa shoguns, shoguns take over and rule Japan for like 250 years, right? Now, the emperor still existed because it, it was a ceremonial and nearly religious position, right? Because we were reli- descended from the sun goddess Amaterasu, right? And for the most part, the shoguns, you know, pretended they honored the emperor, but they really had all the power, right? Oftentimes they married into the family, right? So, and all that stuff, right, to make sure that they had that on them. Now, what happened, and I'm, I'm almost certain that this is probably what he vaguely based this is on. In 1853, Commodore Perry from the U.S. sails over there and tells the Japanese, you either open your borders or you don't. Because at that time, Japan had fully closed borders. And pretty much if somebody, you know, like if your ship went down and you somehow made it onto the coast of Japan, all the villagers were ordered to just to immediately stab you to death with Pikes, right? So, except for the Dutch, the they were tra- so they were trading with then. the Dutch. Well, there, there, there's historical reasons, but that that was the show that that was the policy of the Tokugawa shogunate, right? So Commodore Terry sails in and says, you know, you either do this or we're going to come after you, right? And at that point, right, he literally has a steam boat and all this stuff, right? So the Japanese are like, well, we can't fight a war with them. Now, what this does 
is that, yeah, what you get with nobility is you get decadence, right? Some of them really are lazy, but occasionally yeah. you get one or two that actually are ambitious and smart yeah. and stuff like that. So what you got with at that period was a simultaneous thing where the Meiji emperor, right? That's his, his name. That's his regnal name. I forget what it was. Meiji, he he decides, okay, this is my opportunity. So in this strife, of course, the, the, the shogun, it's like, well, no, we don't want to open this up because this is how we control things. So they start a civil war. The shogun and, and the Meiji emperor actually go and have a civil war, and then the Meiji emperor takes over after that, right? Now, on the opposite side of that, yeah, you, you'll see things like, like I said, this, this is the notion of the major domo, right? Or the, you know, sort of mayor of the palace, right? Because that's what happened to the Merovingians, the Merovingians in France there, right? They were just decadent and lazy. So the mayor of the palace, right, became pr really the guy who was doing all the actual work, right? And one of those mayors of the palace was Charles Martel, who then defeated the incursion of the, um, the Muslims in 732 there. And then his grandson was Charlemagne, right? So pretty much, you know, because the, the, the Merovingian emperors were just like, you know, not doing anything, it was very easy for the, the you know, Char Charlemagne. I can't remember if Charles Martel sees his power, his son does, but he, because Charlemagne's his grand grandson. Um, but at some point they're right, the, the real power, right? So, okay. so you, you see both things, right? Where one, a, you know, a ceremonial, you know, where an actual power becomes a ceremonial power and then gets displaced by, you know, the person who they'd appointed just to take care of all the hard work for them. Or then that's, of course, what had happened in in Japan, but then it got reversed with the Meiji Emperor, right? The emperors had not really run anything for a long time before the Shogun, the, the Tokugawa Shogun. It, then they took over and then they controlled it. But then suddenly you did get somebody who was like, and that's really what I think you get with Parlet is that you, is that, yeah, that the hospital had rep represented this other power broker there. And so he was trying to, you know, Rebroker the power because, like, yeah, the crew, the crew were kind of like honored as like almost kind of like sacred cows, right? They were allowed to kind of wander around and shit anywhere they wanted to and eat anywhere yeah. they wanted to, but they yeah. weren't actually. Most of them didn't actually flex that power, and so that was actually Pietro Castro's irritation with Parlette Is it's like most of these people are just fucking stupid, but you know this guy, this guy's actually on top of shit, right? And so it was always kind of like a, you know, a, a, you know, irritating to him that he actually, you know couldn't just get rid of him with platitudes. This guy actually seemed curious and engaged. Well, he was, he was like that, like, Cast, sorry, I don't mean to butt in, but Castro, he would often show, like, his animosity sometimes towards the crew because, like, his, uh, his secretary there, Ms. Lewin or something, um, you know, she was almost pure crew, and, and so he would try to kind of boss her around and stuff. No, but... it was the opposite. It was the opposite. He, de he showed absolutely, he very, mo it, it like mentions that there's only one or two times when he actually, like it was when somebody had stolen, like that one crew had lost his car and they had to chase it for five days, that when the guy said, well, why don't you have somebody jump down on top of it, that for once he kind of slipped there and said, well, why don't you help us there, buddy, right? So for the most part, he would act deferential to them, but he actually didn't want them to actually interfere. So that was his inter irritation with Parlette. He would, like I said, it was like the butler, right? He's like, you know, well, running that's, what I, that's what I meant. Like he had this animosity towards them that that they thought they were better than him, but he felt that he could manage on his own kind of thing. And that he couldn't. And he, even though he tried to bully his secretary a little bit, he knew he could only go so far because he he would never be in the same class just because of bloodline. Right. I don't know what you mean when you say opposite. I kind of agree with no, what no, you're saying. Uh, no, no, but for the most part, he didn't really have animosity. Like, it was weird. Like, and like I said, okay, the only way I can animal. compare it, it really is like a retainer where he has masters and some of them are stupid, some of them are irritating. And for the most part, he just wants to be in control of everything and just be on, on it. You know what I mean? Like, well, like it's, that, it's, that it's butler, you, right? Exactly. It's, it's when you, you know, when you work at a company and, and, but and he you're. He doesn't want to be micromanaged. And, exactly. And your manager is an idiot, right? Like, you know, everything. You might just kind of telling you what to do, and you know, okay. what you're doing, right? You're like, yeah, you're right. No, this is stupid. Like, I'm, I'm working on the floor, you know, like every day. And you're telling me like some nonsense, right? Like, you just okay, whatever, you know, just you tell them, sure, sure, and you just keep doing your job, right? It's like when someone tells you to do your job, but they have no idea what they're telling you. Like, I think that's the situation here. I think it's also that he's like, he because he's half crew, he feels that he can manage this 
um, without intervention from the crew. Like if they would just let him do it, he could do it. And he found it annoying. So maybe not necessarily animosity towards them as like he wanted to be them, but he at least felt that he was part enough of being crew that he had the capabilities to be trusted with being the head of implementation and being left alone to run the hospital. Is that better? It's, it's, it's a weird thing. Like if you look in history, it's, it's the, it's the, it, you know, it's the, uh, I'm not going to say the word, but the house slave, right? The house slave, right. Would almost, you know, lord themselves over the field slave and stuff like that. Right. It's, it's this, they were weird... the high, they were valued more than other slaves. Well, and almost in some ways they were almost more aggressive about it. Right. Like they're the ones who are kind of almost like more, like even when the master yeah, yeah. is kinder, they're, they're the ones like, no, 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 you gotta get, it, you gotta it, get the like 30 the... lashes. It's like the the Django, the Samuel L. Jackson character in Django on. Well, that's kind of right? like Stockholm syndrome, right? Like it's it's not the like I said like yeah, it's yeah. Weird... yeah like Django exactly. Yeah, it, the the Samuel L. Jackson character. Jeff Ray Ray like Ray the, Ray uh... there. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> something you see developing, and that's what I like. I, I always talk about being on the plantation, right? Like it's the it's the other slaves you have to be most worried about, right? Because actually, a large plantation, or even in this case, right, the the, the crew can't maintain it long term, right? So when you have a new lord come in there and conquer, yeah, they're all armed and everything else, right? But after they settle in, after a little bit there, technically the you know lower classes could rise up. But, you know, they, they sort of eat each other and they get enforcers above them, right? So this is what you see in colonies, right? So, yeah, in, in, in you know, South America, right, the Mestizo, you know, or the in, in Canada, you know, the Métis or like, like Adrian talks about in South Africa, right? They're the colored, right? Where it's, it's, it's sometimes the ones who are kind of like between the two classes, right, that almost want to enforce it more. Yeah. But that yeah. is true. Yeah. And so, like I said, it, it's it's a very strange thing, and that's what he captured. And if you look into it, and you will see this thing where, and it, and they they truly do believe it. it's like a simultaneous thing, right? Like they even when you know they're not looked down on, right? Like the opposite forces. So like he does almost like I said, he he treats the crew like sacred cows, right? Like the same way like the Hindus do, right? Where like they're just kind of allowed to like wander around and do whatever they want and everything else and they're, they're sh supposed to be shown deference but that's because there's something sacred about them not because they're actually you know they're better than him in like a sort of weird religious way they're better than him because they represent the social order in the world that he needs right this is actually the same reason that even later on like this you know monarchies claim their power from god right that's why all European monarchies are actually explicitly Christian nations because that is because it's, it's not like people just think oh yeah these inbred nobodies are better than us anymore right their their ancestors might have been you know fierce brute brutal you know warriors but now they're soft doughy retarded offspring aren't but what reinforces that is this you know divine right of kings or the mandate of heaven in China right so or you know it's it's the same like all these sort of feudal societies work that way, right? It's like, yeah, he's, it's not that the king is great. It's that he represents, you know, the divine order of the universe. And it's our job to uphold that unless it's extreme, right? So if they, and that's, and that's of course what you see with, you know, what Millard Parlett's worried about with Castro is that if Castro sees Millard Parlett or some of the crew as disrupting the order right outside of, uh, instead of maintaining it then it is actually his sort of moral obligation to move against them right i mean this goes like i said the mandate of heaven if you look up the history of you know like china there right like the legendary joe empire and all that stuff like that like that was their excuse and then later on that you know they, they've lost the mandate of heaven right you're supposed to uphold them until you're not right and then it's sort of self-fulfilling that if you can then move against them, then therefore that proves that the mandate of heaven was taken and so on and so forth. So, okay. I mean, they, so it's, that's it's, the, the zoo created the mandate of heaven, the idea that there could be only one legitimate ruler of China at a time and that this ruler had the blessing of the gods. They used this mandate to justify their overthrow of the Shang and their subsequent rule. Okay. Hmm. I know that. Interesting. 
but it's it's also the divine right of kings in Western Europe. That's that's the way it's termed. And there's similar concepts. Yeah, like in the case of Japan, right, the the emperor is literally descended from the sun goddess Amaterasu. In the case of the pharaohs, yeah, like the pharaohs are descended, but then the pharaohs also actually become gods on earth, right? So, no. So the pharaohs are descendants of Zeus. Am I correct? R- Ra. 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 That's yeah. Greek, right? Greek, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Raw horse, and yeah, that's why they. But then they actually become living gods too, right? And and it, I, it's, I, just, I, it's the same with the emperor. The emperor of Japan was seen as a living god. I like coming to your spaces because I'm getting edumacated here. <laughs> Wait, so I wanted to ask you guys about the. Yeah. Thank you. Have to laugh at that. About the sons of the earth. Uh, do you think they would have eventually accomplish something, or it would have just gone on like? If there wasn't for this new, you know, the 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 round robot, the probe one forty three, whatever. If it wasn't for that that element, they are like kind of disrupting, like the you know the uh, the uh, their, their their everyday lives. There, uh, you think it would have accomplished anything eventually, or they would just be in, like doing the same thing, just kind of be- not on their own, but I, or not in. I think that was Miller Parlett's play. He's because he, when he originally had started his plans, he didn't know what it would be, but inevitably the idea was that there would be something disruptive, right? Whether it yeah. was overflowing or something like, there seemed to be the idea that yeah, the order could not that, maintain that, forever. I was coming more from the angle of the psionics, right? Like we have this element now, like you have people with psionic powers. Like, do you guys think with this, you know, without the the information there? Like eventually they would have made a move. Let's say finding, uh, you know, a character like, like, uh, like Matt there who has powers. Like, do you think? Well, I mean, that, he could. Yeah. Do you think he been the with, their, with, the, with the ethos they have? Do you think they would have accomplished anything, or they would have just like like? Come, they could have. They could have. But it would have been I, I like Parlett said. It would have been them yeah. taking over and just becoming a new nobility, right? I, so, I think it needs a catalyst for change to happen, right? There has well, in this case, there's multiple right? catalysts, right? There's multiple, really. So it's, it's kind of a confluence of events that creates the current but, situation. But the primary one was the um, Ram... Um, what was it called? Like the Ram... Jet. The Ram Robot. Ram Robot, Ram robot that's it. Uh, bringing that, like, healing... Um, like abilities from earth right like because genetic arguably arguably just like parlet's growing that hand right it gives a superior thing right instead of having somebody's old used hand that god knows what it's done right you can get your own brand new hand so yeah. it would have been yeah, undoubtable yeah. that the crew would have wanted to use it eventually it would have escaped eventually so there was kind of multiple like sort of inevitabilities here right so um regarding the whole like um plot and and basis of the story right i found this one particular uh paragraph really interesting is it okay if i just read it quickly zinc go for it adri does it all the time okay good um well i like to ask first because um i'm just that way (laughs) so like ramrods 141 and 142 already moving toward jinx and wonderland like ram robot 144 not yet built Ram Robot 143 carried the seeds of revolution. That revolution was already in process on Earth. On Earth, it was quiet, orderly. It would not be so on Mount Lickabat. The medical revolution that began with the beginning of the 20th century had warped all human society for 500 years. America had adjusted to Eli Whitney's cotton gin in less than half that time. As with the gin, the effects would never quite die out, but already society was swinging back to what had once been normal, slowly, but there was motion. And then it talks about Brazil and um, a small but growing alliance agitated for the removal of the death penalty for habitual traffic offenders they would be opposed but they would win so that's where i talked about how on earth things were starting to come back to a a time when morality and ethics around human life returned to i don't know what they should be i just found that to be a really important paragraph in the story because it just 
it led to everything that happened in the story, right? It all ties back to that. But I mean, what should they be, right? Is the question. I what mean, mean, like, like, what should the ethics around like medicine actually be? You think it's right to harvest your body without your true consent? Like, that's that's what I mean. Today, that would be like, well, maybe not. Actually, not today. Well, it's, well there's, two yeah, levels, I mean... there, there's two levels there. <laughs> One that, yeah, it's possible, and so that there's an incentive to harvest off other people. But what that means, and this is something dealt with in the book, it like in his books at various phases there. Um, is yeah, people like as people are living older because of varying levels of organ transplant and you know yeah, cybernetics yeah. and stuff. Like kind of what, what first of all, there's like uh, I can't remember which book it was in. I'm not going to say which one, but there's like one guy who's also an old guy in that, and there's only so much they can replace out of it. And that's like, but yeah, but the spinal cord's still going to break down. We can't replace that. Well, no, so. th that's what everything it is for but Millard. the central nervous that's, system, right? That's what, yeah. yeah that's but that's I can't remember. But, 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 this, right? th this particular story was kind of at an earlier stage, like 200, 300 years earlier. And so, like, as people are developing the ability, right, because, like, essentially it doesn't. And I think it even says it at one point. It's not, it's not like they're given, you know, you know, they, it's, they, they, they live longer, but they're still old people. Right. So you, you're still an old person. Work, right. Like we are you, supposed you, to be born and, and, and live our life and die when we're supposed to we're not supposed to do transplants and you know well, like... no, no, but so here's what happens though so in in later parts i'm not gonna spoil because you, you see this in the first five minutes of 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 um what do you call it there um uh ring world right because the character in ring world i think he's about okay. the same age he's like two but this is like 500 years even further or four or 500 years even further in the future and by that point like he, he's just like you know forever young right everybody can be forever young and they all live and okay. so it's it's the pressure of not only, you know, what is the ramification if everybody li can live, you know, what is the moral thing? Like, yeah, before it was like, well, you know, making excuses so that you could harvest organs. Now the question becomes, you know, if if you can keep everybody alive forever, should you right? Like, yeah. Or, or how do you decide? You know, it's 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 the whole question of po post scarcity in general. Right. And so that was dealt with also in, you know what you would call it there diamond age right or technically even you know the 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 makers of moons right the poor po post scarcity has other ramifications right not only that yeah the people will fight over this thing but now how do you decide you know who should you know does that should everybody get it for free or yeah it's the so warp does in so now i take it as after you just said all that i take it as when they when when Niven says it warped all human society for five hundred years, it's more like you're messing with natural evolution, right? Yes, and no. I mean, here here now. I know I some mean, people we, get if people, we can achieve something, we will just do it. Like so I mean, there's here's, no stopping it, right? Here's here's sort of my irritation these days because everybody's like, "Oh, transhumanism," and let's go back to living off the earth and everything. I like technology, guys, but here's here here's the way to think about. It. Well, I, I see. I see Adrian there. I wear glasses. Adrian wears glasses, right? Like, the, there's already this need for augmentation, right? We already need to be augmented, right? Like, I couldn't function without that stuff. And then, of course, what that means, though, is that yeah, since glasses have been around for a while, right now, more and more, you get people because, of course, my parents both had shit eyes, and so I got a double dose of shit eyes and. Minus so, four point five. You're sighted. Both eyes. I'm blind mine's, in the back. mine's not that bad, actually. Like I can, I can function. Sometimes when I wake up, I like don't even realize that I don't have my glasses on. But then progressively, it gets worse as like the morning wears on, and then I have to put them on. Right. Well, yeah. mine was weird. Like mine wasn't too bad until I was like ten, and then like yeah, like I don't know if it was too much like eye strain or something. Reading. I read yeah. like crazy yeah. under my blanket with a flashlight from yeah. like eight to 12. And that's when I had to get glasses. Yeah. You, you can improve your vision just by going outside and, well, you know, I, you I, know, I, 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 would, I would be super bright. Blind, light I've been reading under my blanket for, yeah, forever. But I also, I also drive a lot. You have to use your eyes up. And so I think that's what my eyes have, you know, haven't, haven't gone that bad because I, I use them for driving all the time. So, but I, I do read. I do read all the time. Yeah. Well, like I said, I think mine were on the edge there 
anyway because of genetic purposes and then yeah like it yeah, yeah like exactly. uh, like it very quickly came at a certain age there and yeah there's probably certain behaviors that it we were screwed to... from the start so like both my parents wore glasses had bad eyes so yeah it's kind of like if it's in your genes well i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. Whole kind of, I, I have yeah. perfect i have perfect color vision like perfect like i do one of those color tests perfect yeah, yeah, color same. vision which so like which I, is I, everything least, well, I mean, it's, it, it helps to some extent. I have other problems that aren't too great. But, you know, I have that at least. Um, I have to tell you guys one day about how I used to uh, I used to volunteer and work with uh, the Canadian Deaf Blind Association. That would be interesting. I have certain – because I've, I've, I've done the linguistics of de- – and deaf people are actually super pretentious, right? Well, deaf and blind people, it's kind of like the, the, the closest reference for most people is like Helen Keller, right? I knew about 12 people who were born deaf and blind and I learned um, palm sign language. I even had a sign and I used to wear the same necklace every day because I had this little diamond circle um, that I wore in a chain. And that's how the residents knew me was they would come in and they would, they, they also knew my hands. Like they can read your hands and face, like our eyes read each other. Right. Um, it's amazing what senses will become stronger when you lack others. But they had a sign for me, and it was essentially the letter Jody, the letter J on your palm. So you do the letter J on your palm, and then you do a swipe, almost like, you know, you see those things where you flip money, a pile of money, and you flip a dollar bill off at a time. So you do the letter J and a swipe. And I was, because I was the accountant there, um, or, or, or comp controller, and I was known as Jody with the money. Yeah, I was cool. So <laughs> it's, it's going to be a little bit of a tangent, but it comes back to transhumanism. So like I said, I did the linguistics of, of sign language there, which is interesting because it does, it does work in the brain. Like there, there's the different types of aphasias that you can get, yeah. right? Like there's the type of aphasia where you can understand but not speak and the type of aphasia where you can speak but not understand. And when people who do sign languages – get those same sort of brain damage. They experience it in the same way, right? They're able to recognize signs, but not produce signs. They're able to, or vice versa, right? right? right. Um, so so it's organizing the brain in the same way, but then the way it works is it's, it's considered a um, visual gestural. Instead of like a, a verbal auditory language, it's visual gestural, right? So you receive visually and then you produce gesturally, right? But... What is interesting is the way it works in parallel, right? So with speech, it's a serial sort of, you know, function, right? Every word that proceeds, right? It's 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 in a serial. Whereas with um, sign language, it's actually parallel, right? So like yeah. I remember the one thing I remember is like an if statement or a question statement is pretty much the same as the normal statement. So it will rain, but if you if you lean forward and raise your eyebrows, I think it becomes a question. If you lean backward and raise your eyebrows then it becomes a, you know, an if statement, right? right. So like, it's so you, yeah, well, it's not, it's not affect. I mean, it's, it's purely gestural, right? It's not that they're expressive. They're not expressive in the sense that now it, it does derive somewhat from, you know, um, you know, nonverbal language, but it's, it's been codified, right? So it is actually language. It's codified, right? It actually varies based on different sign languages and stuff like that. So, um, but then there's even other things like when you when you when you're actually setting up pronouns in sign language, right? You actually point to a, a, an area of space and you can refer to it. So actually, you can have multiple reference and reassign them almost like variables in. But of course, it's it's almost kind of more like registers than variables, right? Because you have a fixed number, and if you've ever done like yeah machine language, you only have like you know four or five registers. And so like some people can handle more registers at a time or whatever. But um. But the, what, what's interesting to me, like, so what you find, though, with the deaf, because if you think about the five senses, right, the and, and you think about total failure of those senses and how capable is somebody. So if you have total loss of touch, right, you're essentially paralyzed, right? You are essentially fully dependent on people, right? And then if you're blind, you can be largely functional, but you can't be, you know, you, you are still dependent, right? On the other side of that. I don't know which is more useless. Probably taste is more useless than smell. Smell is most of taste. And then it also, you know, conveys other things. So those like you, you can go your whole life and not know that somebody can't taste your smell until they do something weird. And then you're like, oh, what? why'd you eat that onion? Oh, I thought it was an apple. I have no sense of taste. Oh, okay. That makes sense. But deaf is weird because deaf 
because human beings are mostly visual creatures more than auditory, like like other creatures are, you know, a, a deaf person can function. The major deficiency they have is in social interaction, right? Since most human beings are verbal naturally right. and whatnot. So what you get with with deaf people is you sort of get them clustering into like, you know, deaf, you know, people marry other deaf people and then they have deaf children because usually it's genetic. And so like, you'd see these deaf people talking about it and they were almost bragging. It's like, Oh yeah. You know, most of our family's deaf. My parents are deaf. And then, you know, half my kids are deaf, but my one brother, he's the strong one because all of his kids are deaf, right? They're proud of being deaf. Right. And so that's where I think recently there was a movie about this, but I'd heard about it before this concept of like, you know, coda like child of deaf adults and stuff like this right where you're you're kind of like you're part of that community and your your first language is actually sign when, language when they protest in genetics so uh, they were protesting like the the the, the like the uh, the genome uh, um the genome movement because they were saying that they went sure they wouldn't be deaf people like it's like a threat to their identity you know well that's what i'm saying they, they, they have an identity because they are mostly functional but of course it's 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 not prejudice, right? It is deficient to be deaf, right? Human beings are meant to hear, right? So being deaf right. is a deficiency, but to them, it's like, it's like, well, no, I don't, I don't even want to hear, right? So a lot of them are like, well, I wouldn't even want to give my kid a cochlear implant if they could, because, you know, the, you know, I don't want to hear or anything like that. So it's, it's really strange in that way, like just, just on this, but like, so on the matter of transhumanism, like that's the thing, like it's, yeah, I wear glasses. And technically speaking, like if tomorrow, like, yeah, my eyes, you know, if somebody was going blind and fully deficient there and, you know, I could swap out bionic eyes or, of course, there are eye transplants now, too. But, you know, bionic eyes, right, this idea of transhumanism, I would absolutely take it over being blind, right? Like there's no question about it, right? Now, most people don't think about it. It's like, well, no, that's just God's plan or, you know, I just accept that if it comes. Yeah, like, no, yeah. No. that's fucking stupid. Well, the, the difference is because usually it hasn't been hanging over their head. It's like, no, 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 trust me, buddy. You don't want to be blind, you know. But, well, like, I mean, you can get your, um, like, like when they remove cataracts, they, like, yeah. they basically remove the entire, like, uh, oh, what's it called? Um, yeah, it's, it's like the lens of your eye. And yeah. Then put well, it but in. on the you, other You can actually side, get yeah. better than 2020 vision when they put, like, you can buy one that's, like, two grand and it'll give you like actually better vision than you would have had naturally right technically i don't know long term because this is actually because i've never done lasik you've probably have obviously never done lasik and no. so this is always the question into it. i've looked it, into it i've looked know, into it too but like LASIK. it sounds well that's what i'm saying but it sounds like lasik long term doesn't really last and then, because the one thing I, the other thing I actually do have really good, well, of course, because my eyes are so pale, I actually have excellent night vision. I heard it affects your night vision. I don't know if it's temporarily or long term or people just get used to it. But yeah, no, I, I can pretty much piss in near darkness. I have like a tiny night light that I go into the bathroom with and I want to turn on the light. So I don't know. My eyes are, my eyes are light and I struggle in the dark. Oh, maybe. I mean, there might be multiple things that just, I think light eyes help it because it. Think, are you albino? No, no. I'm, 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 I am as pale as you can get without being albino. Well, I, like I said, I'm, I'm a crypto ginger. <laughs> oh, I know you're a redhead. No, yeah, no, no, my, my I, I hair, knew that my a long hair. time ago. Just from being a mother, I knew you were redhead. No, my hair is technically blonde, but if I, one time when I, you know, it was the late 90s there, I bleached it. And it came out orange, right? So it's it's blonde with like yeah, like deeper flecks of or of red in there. And then my beard comes out, you know. So you're Mormon, red. so you have Germanic roots, right? Well, it's actually more complex than that. Yeah, but yeah, we're not. But I mean, ethnic Germanic, right? No, no, so no, no would... but that's what I'm saying. I'm not ethnically Mormon. Both my parents are, I guess you could say, first generation Mormons. Oh, okay. My my, my mother was adopted by Mormons, and then yeah, my dad converted later. So. I don't, okay. I don't have Mormon genetics. Well, for the well, most part. well, from your coloring, you probably, you know. It's mostly Scottish, Scotch-Irish, mostly Scottish oh, on my mom's side. That's, Irish yeah, on my father's Scottish. side, yeah. That's why, that's yeah. why I can take you. <laughs> I'm a Scotland. Okay. That's but I mean, so it's, but it's something you've frequently seen in these rooms, like, oh, transhumanism. Now, how much, but like. So I think mm -hmm. to a certain extent, everybody accepts some level of transhumanism, right? Like, you know, I mean, you know, simple things like eyeglasses and stuff like, oh, that's not like, but yeah, but if it goes more advanced, like, yeah, if, 
if eventually they come out with a bionic eye, then. But her eyeglasses really part. I mean, they're they're removable. It's more just a a tool. Well, I mean, your your phone is transhumanism, right? Like, I mean, by having your phone, you're essentially a cyborg, right? Yeah, and you're using kind of telepathy there through it. So, in a way, it is. Well, but I'm saying when it comes down to actually replacing parts. Now, first, well, but that, first it comes down to... That's the question. You know, like, I, I, I mean, I read a lot of sci-fi, but in, in this book, a uh, long way to a small planet, whatever, by Becky Chambers, so it's the, the guy who's the, the engineer of the ship. Like, the guy has, like, a bunch of, uh, you know, like, augmentations and, like, you know, like, bionic uh, stuff. And, like, he, he, go, he tells a story that, he basically like got rid of his of his own arms to get bionic implants and got rid of his own eyes to get like teles- like these telescopic eyes and like he has all of these things like he got rid of the original you know like to get a, an augmentation and i mean that is a question right like i mean if you have like you know uh, an arm that gives you like you know just much makes you much much stronger or like whatever or like something in you that makes you live longer like would you just replace it right well because I mean, the obvious one is, yeah, like, right now, like, you know, like, replacement arms, like the hooks and all that stuff aren't superior to, you know, they're, they're, they're greatly deficient to a, a normal human arm. But there will come a point possibly where, yeah, there is a large advantage to having, you know, where it's almost as good as a normal arm in most ways, but then maybe you can do other things. Like, so I always joke about it, and I only say, you know, sort of joke. Um, anybody who's played that Cyberpunk 2077, there's like something you can get in called Mantis Blades, where essentially big swords will come out of your arms that you can use, right? And it, it comes out to it's like, why would I want a normal arm when I could have that, right? So you, you could do all the normal arm stuff, <laughs> but then, you know, when you need it's it, like you Army of out. Darkness, right? A chainsaw yeah. arm. And so like... to, well, <laughs> direct the transhumanism. So wouldn't like just lung transplants, heart transplants be? considered see i would consider that more uh, it's a gradation of... it's a gradation i mean it could all be good because i mean on some extent right you have the jehovah's witnesses and other ones that won't even take blood transfusions right so some people so consider... what is it you know is it is it a kind of transhumanism it's all i mean well that's the thing like i anything that goes beyond like so like i said even eyeglasses are arguably transhumanist yeah, to some I, extent. I read... I read I read the definition and I take that back. You're right because it's through technology, right? Like, but does it actually cause us to evolve? Like, okay, my descendants because I wore glasses is 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 are their eyes going to be measurably measurably better? Did that affect my it's the genetics opposite. in any way? So is that pre- debatable, right? So there's 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 an ice man they found like. He's called Utsi, right? So they found him in the Swiss Alps there, right? And I think they traced him to like 3000 BC or something like that, right? Around the times of like the bron- like late early Bronze Age, because he had a little copper axe. And I think they never called it the Copper Age. They just call it. So like, you know. What kind was of- his name? Utsi. Like, I think it's some sort of German. German. That's just what they call him. It's like O with the umlaut over it. Z-T-I, right? Because they're Swiss. I think it's just named after the region or something like that. So Utsi. Um, you can, yeah, if you look up O-T-Z-I, you'll, you'll find him. So they found this body, found like, him. yeah, so they found this body a, a few decades ago, and it had been pretty much encased, like, in a glacier or snow melt there for about, you know, three, four, five thousand years. And when they found him, he was still so well preserved that they thought they had found, like, a recently dead body. And then they studied it, and it's like, oh, no, this guy's thousands of years old. But what they found is they're not sure exactly what the cause of death is, but he had arrows in him. So it seems like he was like running away from something. And but they did a, a test on it. And they're like, based on the depth and the penetration of these arrows, they they figured out how far it had to be fired. And they took like the because, of course, he was found, I think, in Italy, technically as part of Italy. So it's Italy that owns the body. But um, so they had like the Italian um, archery champion try and make that same shot. And he couldn't. And unless this was like the, so what you get the idea is, is that, yeah, at that time, human beings had to have extremely good eyesight to be able to hunt with bows. Yeah. And before that, you know, with, with the, 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 the slinging spears that they call it laddles and stuff like that before they had bows. And now it was always 10 years, right? Because it, it, very quickly, but if you don't need that level of eyesight, right, then yeah, you know, like I said, I mean, my parents had crappy eyesight but they did well enough in life to 
produce a family, right? So what you're getting now is you're you're, you're getting somewhat, you know, a de-evolution of eyesight that it doesn't need to be that good anymore. Well, well no, it's, be, it's because people are inside. So, I mean, y- your eyes, in order for them to be good, like the, the people that are outside all the time, and like, let's say they do outdoor sports, but they're just, they just basically live outside. Okay, they generally have better vision than people who stay indoors. It has to do with like yeah, the, the your atrophy, eyes though. need so so many the, the yeah, muscles in your eyes like so many. It need, 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 well, but there yeah, are eye conditions. It's, there it's are focusing eye conditions. on distances and stuff no, no, like no. that. No, no, no. So that, too, right? that that's behavioral to some extent, but some of it is also genetic, right? So of course, normally, normally, the genetics of those people, you know, five thousand years ago would have been deficient, but now they can successfully breed, right? So there, well, there I mean, is the, basically they would get like kicked out of the gym pool if they didn't have good eyes because they wouldn't survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's, produce, that's right? what I'm saying yeah. is that that it, it is allowing, and that's what you're seeing, right? You're seeing people who have genetic conditions now that they should have died in childhood going on and producing offspring, right? So right, hema, right. hemophilia, well, I mean, hemophilia so this, is an example of this. So humans are the only species on Earth that allow their weak to mate, right? Well, that's what, is, technology yeah. allows that to happen, right? Technology and advances in, in medicine and nutrition allow that, right? So what you're getting is actually, yeah, like things that would have been weeded out, but now it's it's sort of – and it's the same with dogs actually, right? Now, to a certain extent, human beings have bred dogs and cats specifically for cosmetic features that aren't actually beneficial to them. Yeah. You know? And so that's why you get like the cats, like the Siamese cats that always, always have sinus problems, right? Or, yeah, or you the, know, the, the, the pugs, the pugs have always eye infections and, and nose infections well, as well. Yeah. I have both my dogs are um are uh like pedigree breeds, Chihuahua and Jack Russell's, and they both have like her rib cage. She's not considered breed breeding quality because she has some deformities in her rib cage. And then my Jack Russell, he's kind of got like <laughs> he's got like He's got like the skinny, spiniest little body and these long legs, and he's just not considered. Yeah, and that's that's inbreeding, and it's. Yeah, but it's also breeding them for for purely cosmetic features that aren't actually true. useful to them, right? That's true. Yeah. Like those dogs that like the hair grows over their eye, but people like them because yeah, they've been bred to be extra fluffy like that. But of course, you know, you have to maintain them. You have to. Sure. Or even actually, there, there's like, I'm pretty sure everybody saw the meme. There's like a sheep that ran away somewhere in like New Zealand was like, had run away for like three, four years. And by the time they actually found it, like it was completely overgrown. It could barely I see. I saw that when they shaved it and it was just yeah. this skinny little thing, that poor thing. Can you imagine? Well, the, the best thing, right? So yeah, historically sheep grow wool like that. But now, of course, with, with sheep that Like Josh on... right after the pandemic. <laughs> exactly. But with, 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 with sheep that have been bred to, you know, now they've been bred to over because, you know, obviously the sheep were more valuable if they grew hair faster and longer and everything else. But so they've actually so now that sheep can't. Oh, no, that sheep was lucky because it was somehow able to survive, probably because there's not natural predators in New Zealand. But My yeah, grandma it, used to call all of this playing with the hand of God. She says it was immoral and she never agreed with any of it. Transplants was one uh... thing that. No, I know, I agree, but she was like, like old like world said, mentality but, but, still. But, but it's, an immigrant. Yeah. but like all, I mean, but pretty much, I mean, they probably lived off cows, right? Like cows, modern, modern European they cows do. are are completely adapted, right? Like they're like the, 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 the auroch, the, the European auroch, right? That, that, that they descended from are long since extinct, right? Because of course, you know, their, their grazing land was, you know, pushed out. But yeah, so like modern cows and all those things, right? But they've been bred, right? So that's why you get like these weird different breeds and stuff. So yeah, ones that were bred to produce, you know, extra meat very quickly or extra milk very quickly, right? Genetically modified, right? Yeah. So I mean, they've been bred. So that that sheep, right? Yeah, sheep grow wool, but that that sheep had obviously been bred to be sheared, right? Modern sheep have been bred to actually specifically be sheared. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's it's sort of what the, then on the other side of that you have like rewilding of animals. So like there's cases of like you know hogzillas, right? Like so there's famous cases where like yeah, some pig runs away in in from a farm down in the south and lives on the swamps, and because of course they have been bred to be um, 
to just gain weight very quickly. But at the same time, pigs, pigs, when they get feral, they, they actually grow tusks. When they're kept domesticated, so there's something about the hormonal pressures, right? So when they're in captivity, they won't grow tusks, but when they are feral, but so this thing had like grown to be like 2000, like it was like, or like more than that. Cause that, that's a normal pig. Like, yeah, it was like 2,500 pounds and it was like massive and stuff like that. So they will re feral. It's the same thing with my cat. So my cat, she's, she's weird in some ways. Cause like she, they found her in a barn and I don't even know how long. Right. So like barn cats are almost adapted to like, yeah, hide in barns and crap. Right. Like, so like, yeah. they, 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 but so I, I have no idea how many, cause like she really doesn't like to be held and she likes to hide and stuff like yeah. that. Right. It's, it, it's not that she's like, it, but that's just like, you know, the way, cause like, I mean, like I have no idea how long those barn cats, right. Cause essentially barn cats, like they're, they're sort of, around humans so they've adapted to it but at the same time they sort of skulk out there so they're almost like because i mean considering that they have a new generation every you know like i think four years like is maybe the generation you know on average um you know within within yeah like a couple of decades right you essentially have 10 years of adaptation for being a barn cat right so very quickly they can kind of return to a sort of feral existence there we, we've had her since yeah. a kid, so she's used to people. But yeah, like she, she's very sort of like yeah, not not like a lap cat. Oh, oh, old habits die hard, right? Well, I mean, like like I said, she likes to like hide. She likes to hide, but it's not yeah. because she's like afraid or anything. But that's just like like when we're she's playing, just she's more feral than domesticated. Well, she she she's evolved to be a barn cat, right? What do barn cats do? They hide and stalk and stuff like that. So, like yeah. her yeah. natural way of playing, it's like, oh, it's time to play, so she'll go and she'll hide as I shake the string, right? She, she'll yeah. sometimes chase it, but like actually, the way she wants to do it is just to squat in a, like a little tunnel yeah. thing that I buy her, and then I shake the stick and she stands. Wiggle her bum. Well, that's the thing. She'll watch it for like ten minutes before she wants to strike, right? Like yeah. she's a hunter. It's, well, it's she's a stalker, right? They're yeah, like this, that's. That's the same thing. Well, like I said, but it's that, it's that very sort of specific thing, right? That they're used to being like hidden away and then striking. I remember when I was a little girl, because my parent, uh, my grandparents, my great grandparents homesteaded in northern Manitoba. So we go up to the farm and there was always like a couple litters of kittens every year. And I would go in there and find them because the mama would hide them in the hay bales. And I would go and find them. And they were they were like wild, right? They'd scratch you to bits like they weren't oh, tame. Yeah. They weren't fun. If you wanted to handle the kittens, you, you, my grandma would always give me like a set of rawhide gloves. Um, and I did adopt one and I brought her home and she's like 20 years old now. She's with my ex-husband and she's still, she'll only come to me. She'll only come to my ex-husband and she, she just hides if anybody else comes around, even my son. Yeah, no, exactly. And that's how it is. Yeah. Like, it's not like she's terrified. Yeah. If somebody new comes over, she'll go and hide. Not like she's, she she hates it. Both times we've moved, she got gets really irritated. Of course, yeah, because barn yeah. cats they're yeah. territorial, right? So you put them in a new territory, and it throws them off. But for the most part, she's she never just, fully domesticated. Yeah. Well, that's I mean, it's not like but she's hiding out of fear because some cats do. Like it's not like she's shaking. Nope, she just that's just her first instinct. It's yeah. like nope, it's yeah. hiding time. I'm just gonna go hide. That's all she does. And, uh, and, and of course, yeah, she 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 still likes to cats. she still likes to bite and scratch. But that's just play, right? It's like oh, it's what's your name? Time. You guessed it once, I think. Um, oh this is a recorded space. I'm not going to say. It, it's okay. like an it, it's like an anime name. Yeah, remember, no, no, that's yeah. A, yeah we, we won't bring it. Yeah, like, it's me. Yeah, yeah. I'm big on I'm big on animal names because I see them as people. I know Adrian. I know. I mostly but call I her trash baby because she likes to go and play in trash. Right, like you get like uh, you, you get like packing paper out, and that's like her favorite. Oh thing yeah, the best thing in the world, eh? So yeah. Trash babies. Or the little uh, mm. the little plastic like rip cords that you know you have to cut them around the boxes. Or tape. She just loves tape. Yeah, tape or crinkly sounds. <laughs> oh, yeah. bubble wrap. Bubble wrap is popular. <laughs> I, I I do like cats, but I like not having them at the same time. I know, right? And that's okay. It's better. I prefer people that recognize that they're not up to having a pet and don't want can't handle it. Because then, then I, I mean, all my animals have always been people that got animals as novelties, and I keep mine for life. I hate people that get pets. Well, just well, that's the whole thing. It's a right? feeling. Any that has nothing to do with the book. But I digress. Yeah, it's like you have to know who you are as a person, right? It's like 
Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's like we we're talking about girls and dogs, right? Every girl loves dogs. They all have a dog, but it's like it's an accessory, right? But I mean, they yeah, want to go out that. and travel and like you know I, do all these great things. I made a ton and, of like, money you know, for that reason. I I was a pet sitter for <laughs> thirteen years. I mean, like COVID killed my business, <laughs> but it was mostly yeah. just dates and girls who you know they. I mean they they didn't take care of their, <laughs> of their dogs and like I, I specialize in a separation anxiety so m- most of my clients yeah their, their dogs have separation anxiety because like these girls they they worked all day right they didn't care they, they didn't train their dogs properly they just you know what, exactly what you're describing right it's like just they just get a dog because of the you know because their neighbor gets one or like because their friend gets one right? exactly. like they, they, don't, they don't actually understand responsibility and like yeah they kind of the the consequences of emotional attachment all of this right so i i made a killing like and i i was actually happy because okay i'm helping these dogs or like you know some of them would, would create it like all day long like they, their owners would create them for like eight hours and hours a day with the work work so you know. well that was my ziggy he was he was created and he's a high energy jack russell like you he has high anxiety he he didn't even know he was a dog like he thought he was a cat yeah no we're still like well, <laughs> trying that is to like store for him. them and, and like you know it drives them crazy mm-hmm. so uh and that's what they get separation anxiety most of the cases because they're just crater or like you know they're like yeah that's day. cool day um but yeah like uh and you know like uh what, what adrian's saying though some of them wanted to travel and like you know so yeah uh, exactly made a, a bunch of money out of that because so many of them like yeah i'm gone for a week right so you know i would go there i would get paid like a hundred dollars a day I, usually they would say, oh, I'll just eat whatever's in the fridge, right? Like, I'm like, okay, good. Uh, you know, so, and I would get to like, you know, like uh, many of them had like uh, things that I, w- I would never buy, like, you know, expensive video game consoles. So that I'm like, oh, cool. This person has the latest Xbox or whatever with like 30 games. So I'm going to play or something or like books, right? Like some of them had like books that I wouldn't buy, right? Like books that are like, like. Uh, That's a sweet job. Yeah. So that, that was great. I mean, I, what I said, COVID killed it because then. Everyone hated my my unvaccinated leper ass, and so they didn't want to see me anymore. But I, I for thirteen years, that was my like my side my side gig, and it was pretty good money to be honest. Like some some I would do a weekend like four hundred dollars, right? Like just you know a weekend. Uh, oh yeah, people will pay. Yeah, they pay because uh, I mean it's it's their pet, right? But also I would do like kind of light housekeeping too, and they would they would pay me for that. So yeah, that was a pretty decent gig. And I would, the, the, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, the problem is, like, I sound like MJ there, but, like, the problem is that, like, a lot of these chicks that, like, they don't care about their dogs, they take the same attitude when they have kids, right? So, I mean, like, you know, how do we expect these kids to grow up, like, and have any sense of, like, you know, values and stuff like that when, like, well, well, you know, I'm going on vacation, kids, you know, adios. Where's their father? well, I mean, I'm saying it's it's not just the women; it's it's the men too, right? It's like these are a lot of these people should just be dinks, right? Like yeah. double income, but, no kids, it, I mean, right? I, I mean, like an old '90s term. It really you know, is. I know. Can I, get, can I um just ask something about the book, you guys? And I kind of rely on this on you guys for this. I struggled with some of like the technology. Like I knew you guys would get fusion and 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 you know, but um. I kind of was like the, the scientific part of the engines and all that. I struggled with that a little bit. I sent that video. So did you see it on the? I'm, I'm going to tell you for about the most the, part. Yeah. Like, he he describes it. He describes it adequately. So what he describes is all you need to understand, right? It's just the length of time it takes these things to reach anywhere, okay. right? I like you can dig into it more. It. Yeah, but yeah, you can look up more on it, but like. Like that's what's nice about him is he 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 incorporate because he is a hard science, but I usually hate the hard science science fiction, right? Just because it becomes jag offy and it doesn't last very long. But for the most part, he <laughs> incorporates it in there because this is the expectation, right? Yeah, since you can't travel at the speed of light, the only way you can do this is yeah, if you have the slow boats or the ramjets, but the ramjets give off so much energy that you can't take them, and so that's why he brings them up. But he he usually avoids wasting too much time on like the idiosyncrasies you can go look them up and you can see what the ramjet technology would be like but it well, is something it, that gave don't... me 
Yeah, don't worry about like getting the details of it. He he gives you as much as you need to know, really. To there was this the one section. Yeah. Okay. Good. So I didn't think I had to worry too much about it. I I mean I'm smart. I got A's in physics and chemistry, but it's been a long time, and I work with spreadsheets and T A X E S S now. Um, so I don't. You know, it's it's gone a little gray. But there was one part in here that. I really, I really kind of, it kind of gave me the idea of like the power of this technology. So it goes in nearby space, the magnetic effects would have been deadly. Nothing with a notochord could live within 300 miles of the storm of electromagnetic effects. That was a working ram scoop generator. And, and they talked about how for hundreds of years, they'd been trying to get beyond that, you know, that, that fault, I guess, get beyond that restriction and they still hadn't been able to do it. So that kind of that kind of helped me wrap my head around it. But there was, yeah, that was the only part where I kind of, I, I looked up fusion. Like, I really spent a lot of time so, yeah, yeah. trying so, to understand. So, 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 j- and and, last, and it's yeah. good. It was a really good, like, that's why I like these books. One, number one, it's really good for your vocabulary to, to develop your vocabulary. But, I mean, you just learn so much about, like, technology. That's why I love the Internet, because you can just, like, switch, look something up, do, like, a five-minute cram course on it. And, yeah, it kind of brings you more into the mind of the author and his capabilities. So just last year, the U.S. Department of Energy, they claimed that they have achieved stable fusion, where when they put in they have 192 lasers that focus on um a hydrogen hydrogen and it like they actually are getting more output than they put into it now how that scales up i don't know who knows when it's ready for prime time but like it it's being achieved now and it's stable right so fusion technology is coming right well, I did get the general gist that fusion technology is not has we haven't reached that yet. Oh, we have now, as of like last year. Like yeah, I said, like, the, the, the U.S. Department of Energy has achieved it. So, I but mean, not on a scale like where they're using it for regular technology. Like, well, I mean, the, the, right? the, the first major hurdle has been passed, right? So, I mean. True. If, you, if you're going to get platform. more output, energy output than you put in. And I mean, the sun does this all the time, right? So, I mean, this does happen naturally in, um, right. in, the, in the like physical world. Um, but now they have it in a controlled way. Now, now will that scale up? I assume it would. Um, and that's the but, problem, I mean, right? Scalability. The, the thing is, it, it's being achieved now, right? So... I agree. That's a huge step. I mean, they've been trying since the 80s, actually probably earlier than the 80s, uh, to I mean, do like he, that. He, uh, he even wrote, wrote a paper on it. That's why he came up with the idea of, like, kind of scaling it to. But, like, you know, like, the, the, the whole Ranscoop engine, it's called the, the Bossard engine, has been a, there was a paper in the 60s about it. And that's what he got the idea, actually. And the... Uh, I, I sent a video on, on the group chat how, how they work, and it's basically uh, the the scoop is like a, you know this this uh, spaceship with a with a scoop and it scoops hydrogen out of the uh, intergalactic medium, and it just like a vacuum. Yeah, exactly, and it, ju- it just zaps zaps the hydrogen at, at the bottom of the of the structure and and creates fusion there, and uh, the reason I mean it kind of slowly. Uh, gathers the hydrogen so that's why it's kind of slow but then it goes faster and faster and the reason it, it just creates an electromagnetic field but the, the more hydrogen it scoops it the bigger the field and and once it stops like it discharges all of that uh, electromagnetic like a uh, uh, you know um um kind of field in, into like a beam so that's why it's so they, they call it so dangerous like once it stops you have this discharge of the electromagnetic field in like, like a tight beam so that's why it's uh you know you don't want to be near or like that's why they have to use the boats for humans because if you if you're in the in the area right or like in the ship whatever you will just get microwave right right and then another another um technology in the book that they talked about were the maser lasers 
Yeah, yeah that's that's that a maser is uh for mixed um, communication. Yeah, microwave amplification stimulated by emitted radiation, whereas laser is light amplification stimulated by emitted radiation. Right, maser. maser. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, so, their masers exist. Right. I didn't actually understand that before. That was I found that really interesting. You had to kind of understand what that was to get what I don't know. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, apparently, I was just reading here, Niven was the advisor to Ronald Reagan on the creation of the Strategic Defense Initiative anti-missile really? policy. So that was the brilliant pebbles and like Star Wars, which started in 1983. Um, wow. So he was, he was apparently like an advisor to Reagan on the Citizens Advisory Council on National Space Policy. Like from your your opinion, think can an author can like Niven can they wing it on on the technology that they're writing about to a certain extent? They always do. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's sort of the balance. Some of them get hard, but then they always flub something or something's purely conceptual. So, not to spoil it too much, but so well, it's a bit like. It, it is not a big spoiler, but like somewhere in there, like, of course, this was coming out in the 60s. So at the time, the idea was that the center of the galaxy was just a cluster of large suns, right? I don't think there was a, the concept there of what we now believe to be, you know, like a supermassive black hole is at the center of the galaxy, right? So at the time he was writing some of these yeah, the, the the general assumption was it was just very densely occupied by multiple, you know, suns very close together, and of course that's of course how you get a black hole, right? But they eventually crash into each other and form into a supermassive black hole. But you know, you know, and and it's even it's even with Lovecraft, one of the the leading one of the leading um, concepts of what what is what is in space back then was the ether. And so when he writes his that deal with space, yeah, he talks about the, the, the ether. luminiferous ether. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Which actually isn't entirely yeah. true because, like, now now it's a void. But it turns out there is stuff out there, right? So of course there is stray hydrogen just floating around out there, and that's how these ramjets work, right? Is collecting just that stray hydrogen that's always out there. Now it's extremely spaced apart, but yeah, if you if you just kind of scoop on it, right, it, it almost it's like a it's the way that a whale feeds right by scooping up krill and stuff like that so yeah that's what i kind of what's what's like a but, jellyfish. I mean, yeah so i mean what's new is old and all that stuff like you know so sometimes these ideas come up and then they're discounted but then there's like oh well there's something so like yeah no, you know it's not completely void out there right well no it is, i mean it is pretty much a vacuum right and this is because like well, that's vacuum, an old physics yeah, but, problem right i mean because like they thought that there had to be a luminiferous ether because that would be the way that light waves would travel through. So like everything else, like sound waves, it travels through air, right? Or water um, on earth. And they thought, well, you know, light must need a medium to travel through in order for it to be transmitted. But then I think it was actually Einstein that discovered no it's actually like a complete vacuum right there's nothing but, but, but there is still stuff out there right so yeah, there, there are is, like rocks there is stray, stuff. yeah yeah well there, there's also stray hydrogen just floating there so that's how yeah, these objects yeah. work but then of course then there's dark energy and dark mass which we're not really sure what that is is that just like yeah enough of this debris in the way that it eventually adds up yeah i was gonna get so. the dark energy which is 74 75 percent of the uh they suppose like you know, quote unquote matter, um, more like a repulsive, you know, energy, but still. So that is for sure. It's not definitely just just empty vacuum space. And you, you do have like, I mean, in between like in, interstellar like space, especially in, in a galaxy, you have a lot of, yeah, like just particles of stuff, right? Like leftover, uh, you have hydrogen and, and helium like, just going around. And you have like, a, you know. But, but I mean, for, for the most part, like the, the speed of light, on earth is slower than it is in a vacuum right i mean not much but I mean, yeah it is slower yeah. right because gravity affects it right so yeah. it's like that that's why c is like 
in E equals MC squared, it's like C is the speed of light in a vacuum, right? Which is its true speed uh, that's unaffected by gravity. Now, I, I guess things out there would affect its well, speed I mean, from time you, to time. You do like, have like a gravitational lensing, you know, like true galaxies. So light is affected, right? Like you get either like by galaxy clusters or just galaxies, you get a, a lensing effect. So it is affecting light, right? Yeah. It's not just going straight through. There, There is the the lensing from, so it's definitely the gravity, but like whatever their kinetic energy is as well. Yeah, it says the speed of light. C. Wait, can, 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 we, can we get back constant. to the story though? I feel like we're we're going like we're going like intergalactic, going like leaving the uh, the novel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, but like, at, oh, I'm sorry, I'm the one who brought I, it I, up. I, 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 I just... want to know what you guys think of of like the the, the characterization. Um, I mean, Matt and 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 the two females. Um, uh, but I just forgot their, their names actually. Um, uh, Holly and, and Lainey, like, uh, oh, and there is the other woman. What's her name? Uh, the woman who's described as a sure, like she's gonna attack. Uh, well, like the middle aged woman. Yeah, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Um, Lindquist. No, Lind Lind Lydia something. Yeah, Lydia something. Yeah. So, what do you guys think of like, like, because so here, here's really the smart, one thing that's right? interesting. Oh, go ahead. Is 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 it's the same? What, what's what's the, the the smaller girl's name? Polly. Uh, Polly. Polly. Polly yeah. So so when so when um, Matt describes Polly, right? He's like, oh, she's so small and delicate and fragile, right? But then when um, um, Pietro Castro describes Polly, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, she's just kind of, you know, just generally, you know, doesn't know how to use makeup, and she's like, maybe maybe if the calluses came off her hands, you know. And and you cleaned her up a bit. She could be pretty, <laughs> but it's 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 the relativist, right? It's it's the relative of beauty, right? So like, and then they even describe. It's almost like dwarves versus elves there, right? Like, like there's even memes that go around how like yeah, like whenever you have like in in sci-fi stories, right? Whenever you have like males and females of different races, like the males are really buff and the females are usually feminine, except for dwarves where the males and the females both look all stocky and bearded, and then the elves where the dudes look extremely feminine, right? So. Of course, when it describes the crew, right, they're extremely sort of fragile and gracile and not masculine almost, right? They have high-pitched sort of voices and everything like that, right? And so, like, to, 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 to Matt, right, being, being a colonist, right, you know, Polly looks like, you know, like extremely, you know, like feminine and small and all that stuff. But, yeah, to, to Pietro, she just looks like, you know, sort of, you know, uh, you know, a miner. She looks yeah, like, like, yeah, just like a coal miner. Right. So it, there is that sort of like weird perception. I don't remember if like, it'd be, but then yeah, there's there's sort of like the the thing with Lainey, right? She's like she's like really tall, but she's like they describe it like she's got like obviously like a big ass and big tits and kind of like an Amazonian girl. Yeah, exactly. Buxom. Yeah. Just so, yeah, tall she, and you know like big like a guy. So yeah, like she's like yeah, just like extremely like yeah like. Yeah, pretty much. I like kind of saw her almost like uh, like Roslyn Russell kind of a build. Don't know who that is. I'll just look that Shame up. Shame on you. I'm guessing it's some old person thing. She was. I'm picturing more Adrian. You remember Barbeau. that picture? You remember that? <laughs> oh no, that was some. I mean, I'm, oh. if I'm if I'm going to go with that, then I'm going to like lean like you know Zena. Rosalind Russell was a movie star. In terms of their, their motivations, their, like the characters, like uh, Lena and uh, and Polly. I mean, like it's Polly. She's kind of the damsel in distress, right, through the whole novel. Like, I mean, um, but then in the end, we, we we see she she's will. I mean, she she's willing to 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 die for her cause there. And and what what's with Lane and and. I mean, like she goes around sleeping with with the men uh, of the Sons of Earth because she wants she wants them to wants them to feel like quote unquote men, right? Like whenever they need to feel like men when they're depressed or something. Like, what do you guys think of that? That she just goes like sleeping around. That's actually very common in 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 wars and some cultures. There's comfort women, especially in like resistances. That's that's you know there were 
it's like the 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 women in in Germany, right? So the German women who would associate with with the Nazis and sleep with them, they were comfort women, right? They weren't the wives, or the, you need that. I don't need it, but yeah, I guess you do need I it. Do it's, guys, it's there are some uh, women that I, will I, do I, all for their country. You know what I mean? I, I guess the only fans girls are like the comfort women in modern times, right? Not no. <laughs> Well, I think These for one thing, what you did for money, they did it for, well, sometimes they did it for money, but like this would be, she's a true freedom fighter and she's, she's there to support the men in any way she can. And it's not personal for her. She's almost, she's a spy, right? And female spies like, um, well, there's this movie with Brad Pitt and, oh, uh, it's about a man and a male and a female spy who have to play a couple um, in World War II. And yeah, you just, you know, she's a spy. So she has to do what she has to do. And if that's giving comfort to the men to be able to, you know, get them through another day, then that's what she'll do. She's dedicated to her cause. So I think the one thing, so of course this was in the sixties and show, it shows, yeah, that like, obviously they're both more modern because it's even implied that Polly, right. And you know, now it's not implied that Polly is maybe as, free but yeah that she's not like a prude right she's she's obviously had a few partners you know what i mean she's she's not like virginal or anything right like that right but at the same time too i think i think with with um what's her like it's, it's almost like a tragic thing right like she's she's almost intimidating so she tries to be extra feminine and almost extra sort of pliant right because she's so big and you know and everything else that she should almost be intimidating so she almost you know desires to be you know that small fragile creature type thing right so she kind of takes it where she can right she kind of you know feel, like it, like it's not dived on too much but she almost comes across kind of tragic in that way right she's she's everybody's you know you know toy but like nobody's actually you know interested in her you know yeah, I'm kind you of... get that feeling off of her that she, i i got the feeling i got the impression I'll, I'll go through the book but that she was okay with herself and that it was her choice like nobody's forcing her to do this it's her choice well, i she, mean she does that's it but like that's what i'm saying she, she... because women can like sex just as much as men no no but the, but nobody actually yeah. seems to like want her right you know what i mean like everybody like i don't think she wants to be wanted she's not there for that like i don't know that's there, there's certain things she does say, like, I think she, like, yeah, she sort of fills a certain position, but, like, yeah, I think she's, yeah, she's not, she's not seen as wife material, right? She like, can turn her emotions on, and then she can, <laughs> she can turn her emotions on when needed, and then she can just, like, compartmentalize that and shut it off. Like, she knows how to do that because she's been raised in an environment that is so dysfunctional. Like, she's obviously been involved with the Sons of Earth and probably from being a young girl, her family was probably more radical. And so, you know, there's certain acceptances that she's made with herself. I don't see her as a victim, so to speak. And well, I don't she's find... She's not a victim. Or, or well, insecure, but... so to speak. Well, no, I'm not saying that. Like I said, but it's essentially okay. the sense she's the cool chick that every guy can get along with, but no guy actually wants to pick long term, right? Right, seems but to she, be doesn't sort of... have the, she doesn't have... with Without the... Um, like people, the men around her think of her as one of them and as an equal. They don't treat her like she's a whore. They understand that she's going to do certain things in her work, that she loves them all, but if they're not in love, it's not a committed relationship. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I don't, I don't think, I don't but, think but, it's but, implying that, that, that they see it as a whore more like, more like, yeah, like, like uh, what Siki's saying is like, you know, the, the, the long term. She's another tool in the tool in no, the tickle no, she's, she, she's just a buddy she's friend zone right yeah. she's, she's sex zone right she, she, she's she's everybody's friend yeah and everybody <laughs> enjoys her but like nobody actually she's nobody's special other right that's right what I'm saying. yeah she, that's true and so like i and i think it kind of hints and, and like yeah like that like she kind of tragically right that's why she's almost somewhat willing to like go so right there at the end when matt and her go back in right she's pretty much willing to sacrifice because like that's her position currently right is to be kind of like one of the guys and everything else and this whatever but like yeah who like nobody seems to want to like settle you know what i mean like that seems to be her sort of tragic position there is that yeah she's not see she's not seen as something that needs to be protected like Polly is right 
and does Polly really need protection? Not necessarily. Oh yeah, but, completely so different. So I think that's the dichotomy, yeah. right? Everybody sees Polly as weak, but actually Polly is actually somewhat of an almost ideologue, right? She's almost like willing to risk it all and everything else, right? She's, she's a actually, badass. Well, that's what I'm saying. She's almost more extreme. <laughs> whereas, whereas Cheney or Laney or Laney in it. Right. She she's kind of forced into that role and she sort of accepts it. But there there seems to be a hint. Right. That she actually she wants to be seen as, you know, something worth being protected. I think that's sort of the dichotomy. He has I don't think that she was forced into it, so to speak. Not, for, not forced, think, not forced. I'm saying just by circumstances. She right? She's not. Voice, seen, right. Well, no, she's just not. She's not small and she's not delicate. Right. That is to say, physically. She doesn't yeah. look like something you need to protect. And so she's just kind of seen as that's one cool. of the guys. Right. But at the same time, like, this is how I've heard, like, people, like, talk about, like, But uh, she's the softer of the two inside somewhat. But she can also flip that off because, you know what, ideally it's not about sex and being a woman. It's about being sons of the earth and the, the cause, right? Well, no, she no, was, but at the end of the day, was like, one of my favorite characters. But that's what I'm like saying, it. like, yeah, like, nobody kind of, like, yeah, everybody likes her, but nobody loves her. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've, I've heard, that I've actually seen documentaries where people describe, like, um, Mama Cass, right, from the Mamas and the Papas the same way. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. everybody loved her. But in, in her case, she was, like, extremely fat, right? So, you know, she had the same – that's what I thought of with this this, this one, right? Like, everybody likes her, right, and loves her as a friend and even as whatever. But, like, nobody's, like, actually going to, like – you know, like, she, she kind of, you know, isn't isn't anybody's first choice. You know what I mean, and so that's kind of the tragicness of her, right? I just felt that everybody, I didn't see again. I didn't see that. I saw it was more that each member of the Sons of Earth, whether they were male or female, they each had a role to play. Well, they did, they course, did. But like, right. who do they really want to be? I mean, that's what I'm saying is that like people kind yeah. of end up, be, right? Like what it comes down to is it's the way you're seen, right? Like since you're like seen, right? You know, so Polly is seen as something small and sort of unoffensive. So that's how they use her. But that's not who she actually is, right? Lainey is seen as sort of this, you know, kind of gregarious, voluptuous, you know, Amazonian woman. But at the – like, they're, they're, I think that I'd have to go and dig in. But there's times when it's kind of almost hinted that, yeah, she wants to, you know, almost just kind of be, you know, not this Amazonian, you know, sex kitten, right? Like that she, okay, she kind of – Okay, but you know what? Polly, okay, there's a part in the book where Polly shows that she's just as amorous, okay? Because she comes out of that coffin – uh, well, that's, not, that's what I'm saying. Like everybody, yeah, yeah, she yeah, like yeah, does yeah. mad on the floor. Like, you're, you're, you're just uh, that's what, what, what I'm she, saying. Well, she doesn't remember anything because she comes out of that sensory deprivation tank. Th this part, and then I mean, they have sex, and then she remembers everything. It's like, I mean, is that part of his power or something? No, no, like, no. It's, it's, like... it's supposed to cause a form of amnesia, right? If you're sensory deprived like that, you're almost caught in a dream. So, if you really, and that's why it's a form of torture, right? Because you almost lose your sense of self in yeah. that right so it's almost kind of an amnesia right so as you come out of it it's like sleep amnesia right so when you immediately wake up sometimes and you're disoriented it's supposed to be that right it's it's essentially lots of things have dealt with it well most, most notably inception right like the, like if you go like deep down into the dream yeah. right trying to come back out right like you're like super disoriented sometimes when you come out of like a really deep sleep abruptly right but but i mean why would him having sex with her bring all of her memories rushing back it was almost like she was a babe in the woods and she had to relearn well, it's, it's, like, it's just stimulus and it's intimacy just, it's, and all of those things all over again right it's just it's just stimulation right it's just it's just stimulation yeah yeah because like i thought his power had something to do with it there i don't think so i think in some ways that almost like his power is almost kind of like negated by it. it's just her coming out of this pretty much mind-breaking torture right like Essentially, they, they implied that if she had been in that torture much longer, she would have been perfectly insane, right? Like, that's, like, that level of deprivation. Like, you lose sense of all time. Yeah, and it's, yeah, almost, yeah. it's like the hyperbolic time chamber from Dragon Ball. You know what I mean? Essentially, we're, like, even I mean, if you're CIA in the... CIA does do this kind well, of stuff. Well, as I'm saying, right? like, like, it, like, it I mean... changes your perception of time, so it almost seems, like, infinite. And, I mean, well, I mean, it's also in the Gulag, I mean, the Gulag archipelago, right? Like, sleep deprivation, stuff like this, like too much sleep or too little sleep, right? Like when people, well, it's, it's a well-known fact, right? When people are in comas and they do come out of them six months later, even if there's no brain damage, there is sort of a weird, right? Cause they've been so long in sort of inactive sleep, right? Like, so like sleep deprivation, but oversleeping, right? Like that can almost kind of like confuse the mind. Throws you off, throws you off. 
the lack of phys- like actual stimulation. If in some ways, it yeah. probably like it, it probably does cause a certain amount of brain damage. Now, how long term it is is one thing, but the lack of actual stimulation, right, in in the physical world. Can also I cause. remember when they were talking about the sleep technology and so you could hook yourself up to this headset and within like an hour or two you could get like eight to ten hours sleep I was like oh that would be awesome if we could do that they, they make like headsets and like it's for guided meditation they sell it at Best Buy and it has like those um electrodes on this headband and it like works with your phone and like apparently like you can get like crazy sleep because like basically it's it's picking up on brain waves that you have and like you look at your phone and it like takes you through these different exercises and stuff and like from what you see on the phone then it like it moves back to like measure like the waves in your brain and like apparently people get like really good sleep from it and stuff like that i forget what it's called um so I, there's I, there's neuro sky but then there's another one that they sell at best buy so i found the paragraph where niven describes laney so her name was laney mats and she was around 26 years old five years older than matt in bare feet he would have topped her by a scant half inch but she was wearing double spikes and her piled confection of auburn hair made her even taller not merely tall she was big with wide pronounced hips and deep breasts between an m neckline she looked prettier than she was matt thought she used cosmetics well and there was a booming exuberance in her every act an enjoyment as big as herself and so when i read that i thought rosalind russell look it up you guys i'm shame on you that you don't know who that is i mean i thought of the chick from Mad Men, the redhead right? oh no joan joan yeah yeah it's called muse too brain sensing headband guided meditation multi-sensor i mean they've been around for decades i mean i've seen i remember seeing those decades ago that actually work with the phone no no but like this was before phones but like like the same technology i mean like i remember like yeah like it was like a whole system like i remember seeing that shit in the 90s I, I had never seen this in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, no, they had it. They Did had they? it. Like yeah, for I mean, com- it wasn't like... commercial? Like, I mean, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, I remember seeing similar things at, like, state fairs or things like that. And actually, I can't remember how, but, like, there was, like, one of the teachers at, like, an elementary school. He wasn't my teacher, but he was, like, what? And so, like, when you do, like, weird rotations, like, in his classroom, like, he had that where, like, yeah, it was, like, a weird thing like that, like, and some people could try yeah. it, but like, so like, I mean, they had them. I mean, at that point, it was just like, yeah, like a headphone. But, but I mean, like... this is much better, right? Like, I mean, you know, this is like just a headband, and like you just put it on, and like it actually has like. I mean, it was the um... same thing, just with a Walkman, right? The headband hasn't changed, right? It's just that now you can do it off your phone. You don't need like a Walkman or anything to do it. And you don't need yeah. to buy the tapes. No, but you can adjust the, yeah. the vibration, like a bunch of new settings with your phone, right? Yeah, yeah. So it does like pulse oximetry. It has an accelerometer. It has a, a gyroscope in it, which matches your breathing. And it has the EEG sensor, which like measures your brainwave. And for the price of four hundred and thirty nine ninety nine, it could be yours. No, thank you. I just do audiobooks. But, uh, so, there was, <clears throat> so, so there was one part of. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I just wanted to. I, there was a paragraph in the book, and it actually made me think of spaces, you guys. And it was when they were at the cocktail party there. So, Jay, Jay Hood brought Keller to the party. And there is this. Uh, section here where um towards the you know end of the party it said glasses went empty and one of laney's big escorts came back with replacements the little group grew and shrank and split into other groups with the eternal capriciousness of the cocktail party and it just reminded me of like that's kind of how spaces are sometimes right like they split you people 
people split up and they go into their own little groups and sometimes they come back together and it just, yeah. I just thought I'd mention that. Okay, I had a question for you guys. What do you think the, uh, the missed demons are? They're mentioned a bunch of times, so like, I don't think I got clarification. I think they just said they were they, they were just made up. I think they, there was no Miss demons. I think it was just something that like they told kids, if I remember right. Because when he actually goes down into the mist briefly there, there's nothing. I think it's just something they, they just make up, right? It, it becomes part of the lore of the planet, right? Something they tell the kids to spook them. And, uh, yeah, like, I mean, it, it could, it could in be English. foreseen. I mean, it like, could be foreseen that there's some sort of like weird, like ephemeral life down there, but I don't actually think, I think it's pretty much just implied that it's just something they uh, tell I, kids. I, I, I think it was just a manifestation of the, the, the I mean, there's this psionic energy there with Matt, you know, using it, but uh, that's what I, I just, I thought of that. And I don't know how, how deep his, uh, Niven is going with this 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 ionic energy, but uh, yeah, to me it was like, uh, oh yeah, some, something I, I was expecting too was that, uh, you know, like uh, Uncle Keller there, they have the same name, Matt, that he, like that, like a young man had a transplant from, from old Keller. I don't know why I was expecting that to be a twist to come since they made it, you know, they parallel like, uh, Jesus Pietro is like okay, like he's coming back from the the dead to hunt me, whatever. And I was like, oh, it, does he have like any transplant from? Like, I don't know why I was expecting that to happen. Did you guys uh, think of think of that at all? No, I think it's just like this sort of genetic sort of heritage thing. So like maybe to some extent, it's just that like yeah, like it's just the way you feel like sort of beholden to this like you know relative or something like that. It's like oh yeah, you were named after this guy. And also, maybe it probably also implied is the development of that psionic ability. So maybe the older Matt Keller had somewhat, you know, you know, like because of obviously these things, you know, so he had somewhat the luck of, but it wasn't as much of the luck as he had and stuff like that. So I think I think it's really just kind of like the way it, it's almost kind of like a form of like genetic karma, right? Like that you're not really your own, right? So like the entire reason that Pietro Castro had followed him, right, was because he obviously, you know, Matt Keller, the old Matt Keller was the one who got away. And so he like, he's like, okay, I'm going to follow this guy, right? So like almost the way that, yeah, you're kind of burdened, right? Like it, it goes back to the whole thing, right? Like, yeah, like, you know, class and all that stuff, but the way you're kind of like burdened with like, you know, family, you know, you know people know it's like oh yeah he had the weird uncle and stuff like that and then that kind of both he then kind of identifies with this weird uncle and so then therefore that's why he becomes you know sort of you know what why he always plays these pranks and stuff right it's, it's almost like it's an identity forced on him right to a certain extent it's the, it's the whole thing i have with names myself right that's why like to me like when people are like but what's your real name zinc it's like as far as you're concerned it's zinc i picked that name whatever i mean otherwise the, the names you usually get for yourself, it's because of, you know, oh, yeah, I named you after this person or that person because, you know, that, and right? Like, it, it's, it says more about your parents than it does about you, although it does have some impact on you, right? Like, it, it, it says it, it, you start to, like, sort of, you know, get some you, you either hate your name or you like it, and then you sort of appeal to it and stuff like that. So they, it becomes sort of a a... Yeah, you know, guys, you, you get what I'm saying there, right? It's yeah. something once again that you don't have control over, and sort of, you know, no. it, it, you, you're, you're not you, you're not just born into your own sort of, you know, burdens. There, you're born into, like, and not even your parents' burdens, right? But yeah, just like you know, it's like, oh yeah, we named you after Matt, and he's like, oh well, what was Uncle Mac like? Ah, oh, he was a real piece of shit. He's like, oh well, I guess I'm a real piece of shit, right? <laughs> I had another question. That was uh, funny. Wh why, why the uh, the round robots? <laughs> why do they pick those super random uh, planets to 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 start a colony when like that planet, you know, Mount Ma 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 Lukadad, whatever? It's like 
it's almost you know like unlivable. It has only this small area out of a whole. Well, that because that they, they joke about the same thing with all the plants, right? So jinx, yeah, where like if they'd known it, they have to live underground. Yeah, and so I think it just it, it's it's sort yeah, of yeah. Him, but like that, that was my question. Like yeah, we also mentioned jinx and like um, we made it that it's also like super you know like very extreme conditions. Like it, it, is that because the, the, the robots were just not program to be picky at the beginning or, or is, is he saying something it's, about it's all of it so i like i said it's well i mean saying something about what no that it's that it's gonna play with it later as you know like okay, I mean, we see how it culminates in ring world where like they, they basically create their own planets and like it's just gonna juxtapose in that to, to to the very beginning you know to being just you know very very primitive and crude the way they the, the technology like the the whole colonization like started it's just gonna play on that or or is he saying something else well there? i think it's it's first of all just in tech right it's the things we know we know the things we know we don't know and the things we don't know we don't know right so like they designed these ram robots and so they're like oh well what are the conditions we need for life and so they program that all in there and they send out these robots now these robots are of course voyaging for a long long time and when they do finally collect the data and send it back I think I, I think it's very loose data, right? So they can't really give a full. It's just like, yep, nope, this meets all the parameters, right? And so it's always it comes down to just the the main thing in programming, right? Like the undefined, the unknown inputs, right? Like not properly, you know, testing for all the edge cases, and that you don't know that it's possible to have. So you know what are like we we have so limited. So we know the things that human beings sort of need, right? You need a certain atmosphere. You need a certain temperature you need certain oxygen and water and moisture content to have humanity on it but what are the sort of you know ways that that could go wrong so i think that's sort of what it's like oh yeah it can land here and it can find all those conditions but and it could just say yep yep this looks good and then you of course you, you know you're just sort of taking a gamble and you send out these long boats and the people you know pull up there and it's like okay yeah this like sometimes meets those conditions but in the completely wrong way it's it's sort of like, i guess here's so, yeah. what it's 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 the it's the seven blind men describing an elephant, right? It's like, oh yeah, it's, it must be a rope, or it must be a snake, or it must be a tree, right? Because you can only kind of feel out part of it. So it's like, you know, you, you, like when you're trying to do a police sketch, and then you get a police sketch and it looks all weird and stuff, right? Like if you actually try to describe something without re being really careful, right? Like you you might not get. So I think he's just kind of making fun. But then at the same time, if you're on these slow boats, right, and you're taking your gamble on that colony. When you get there, you, you have no choice, right? You're going to make the best of it, right? You're yeah. going to, you're either going to burrow under the ground like I think they do on Jinx, or you're going to, you know, make the best of it because you really have no option but to make the so, best. So of wait, it. how when do you survive? So, so when the air car, just while we're on this, like, sorry, Jody. Yeah. I, I think I okay. kind of missed this. Like, when when the air car when they're chasing him, and then he goes into like the gaseous cloud below. How did he survive that? Like, I think it's it, implied. It was, it was creeping you into the car. You can go down a little bit to hide in the mist, but you can only but they go down follow so far. Him down there, right? Like, no, yeah, they, they, they they don't. They won't. They don't know that they can do that. Like, the I think the colonists have discovered that like you can go down a little bit in the mist, and I think, um, I think the crew do too. Like, Jesus, didn't he kind of? Wasn't he in a car and he kind of, there was one No, section. no, it's, it's pretty much, as far as I remember, it's implied that he, um, he was, I mean, beyond his psionic ability, and like I said, this comes in later, I think to a certain extent, it's implied that he really is like strangely lucky in some ways, not just with the, the, the one psionic ability there, but just in, in that, right, and that against the odds, he somehow figures out how to use the, the thing, and against the odds, he goes down to that, gets upside down, and a bunch of other things happen and still kind of pops out, right, kind of, it, it is strongly implied that there is luck. He has luck. Okay. And, and like I said, without spoiling it, in later ones, it's almost implied by Niven that, like, luck itself, and, and for both good and bad, right, like, it can be a little bit mixed. Like, you can have enough luck to get so far and then bad luck to not get much further, um, and that might have been the luck that his uncle had, right? Like he was lucky up until he wasn't. That luck is almost a psionic, heritable ability. Well, it talks about like back to what you were you were saying, um, Carlos. It talks about later on in the book. I don't know if you missed this part, but it talks about the Ram robots being programmed wrong in that they weren't designed. Um, they weren't programmed to find 
a habitable, habitable planet itself. They were programmed to find a habitable point on that planet. Oh, I miss that. And, and, and that's how they ended up on Mount Look at that because it's like half the size of California, but it's habitable and the air is breathable and there's a water source and yeah, it's 40 miles high, but, but it, you know, you can live there. And so once the Ram robot lands, right, once the, these ships land, you, there's no going back. So you just have to deal. Right. Yeah. I missed that part. I was mostly like, I listened to it. I didn't read this one. I, I was busy working, but uh, yeah, I was just curious about that. Um, since uh, it just seems to me like, I mean, that all of the early colonies are just like extreme, you know, like spots, like hot spots. So. Well, I mean, to a certain extent, this is something I've always thought about. If we found a planet that was exactly like Antarctica, that would still be a habitable planet. Oh, yeah, 100%. Right? Like hot things. Star Cause Wars. The, the, no, well, because that's what I'm saying. Like, and that's why Mars is always the one that's possibly because it's, it's right that the atmosphere is too thin. It's too cold. The dust is everywhere. But of all the planets in our solar system, it's the most habitable one, right? So the definition of habitability is rather, you know... Possibility. Well, that's what I'm saying. All these planets are ha ha habitable. And who's in? There, there's even a deeper thing here that in the, the goal of getting people out into space, you know, it's like, yeah, well, this is the bare minimum. Well, what if other things happen? It's like, well, this is the bare minimum. They'll figure it out, right? Because that's what you're trying to do is you're trying to colonize space. This is what people did even 200 years ago, right? When they were sending people to Australia. It's like, oh, yeah, there's lots. Of, it's a desert, right? Like, it's mostly, it's swamp. It yeah, there are right. things down there. But, like, you always tell the colonists that, you know, oh, yeah, it's, it's just fantastic out there, guys. You never tell them about Canada's. It's like, oh, yeah, it's just full of fat, hairy beavers, and you just go collect them. You don't tell them about the <laughs> negative 40-degree weather and you know six feet of snow and shit and right Southport, but of course yeah. at the same time at the same time yeah, like not but if, but if you only visited it in spring and then came back it's like oh yeah guys it's great out there it's like i mean i wasn't there the whole time because like if, if you're from europe right if you're from britain how would you even imagine some place could have six feet of snow right it's not even possible right it's ridiculous, right? So you wouldn't even wait and see. So like, it's just like, oh yeah, guys. It's good. So I mean, this really is the history of colonization. There, it's like, and then of course, yeah, you have no idea what other things are in there, like you know, diseases and bugs and. Well, so. uh, Carlos, it says here. There's a paragraph, and this will maybe help you with that. It says the designers didn't know it, and the UN didn't know it, and the UN part, like that was spooky when they talked about the UN being the world power. <laughs> Um, it said, and the UN didn't know it, but the Ram ro robots were programmed only to find a habitable point, having located a world the right distance from the star to which it was sent, the Ram robot probe would drop and circle until it found a place at ground level, which matched its criteria for atmospheric composition, average temperature, water vapor, and other conditions. Then the Ram robot would beam its laser pulse back at the solar system and the UN would respond by sending a colony slow boat. And that was it. There was no turning back after that. I mean, this is sort of the nature of programming, right? Somebody gives you specifications, you meet those specifications. But like I said, there's the things we don't know. We don't know. You know what I mean? Like, so when you're dealing with these planets, how would you know? Like, so he was of course going through extremes, but it's very possible, right? Like if, is it possible that you would have a planet where, yeah, there was one high point, or in the case of Jinx, where, yeah, depending on the time of year, like, it could get very severe, but if you land at the right time of year, it's not, right? So, like, some of it's sort of, it, it's sort of just the nature, it, it, it's, yeah, like, when you're, when, you're, when you're designing systems and trying to get a system out there, right, like, especially for something you don't know, right? It looks like, well, you know this much, but like, yeah, what, what could be the negative side of that? It's like, okay, yeah, we meet all your specifications. It's like, if you're like trying to describe like your perfect woman, it's like, okay, I'll give you all the perfect woman there, but you didn't. And of course you just assume something. And that's the problem. A assumption, you assume a certain, cer certain level of constancy, right? So it's like, oh yeah, no, I love a woman with, you know, you know, big ass and, you know, you know, red hair and all this stuff, but I didn't actually specify that she shouldn't have a penis. So, 
I forgot to say, right? Like I said, I mean, that's, it's the assumptions that fuck you always in programming. And I'll tell you that like every day. these days you have to kind of specify that. The man Exactly. Speaking. But even, even the, like the, there's too many times I've worked on a pro a thing and to them, it's just like, oh yeah, well, I just assumed it's like, well, that's, you made an ass of you and me, buddy, right? Like, I mean, that's I, uh, it is something that happens I, all I, the I time. I brought this up because uh, you were having a conversation on, like, on another space, um, and like I, I, I forgot who the person was, but they were arguing that that ChatGPT was sort of sentient, and you were basically saying it was scoops. It was you were basically saying this, uh, Zink, what you're saying right now. So that's why I brought it up because I wanted to, I wanted to make, make you kind of to recapitulate. But on this context, that uh, you know, a- AI is just kind of follow very specific protocols, and and you know, uh, we talked about being just a true machine, right? Uh, the, the computation we have now. So I, I feel like yeah, it's not a human being. Exactly, human this, being. this would be like a perfect example of like of that idea that AI would you, AI would just follow a specific protocol, but you know, they they you know, it really. I, I mean, in the AI, the way we have it now, we really like nuance and like. You know, kind of. But is detail. its logic superior to that of a human being? That's what I, I always think about. Like, is AI what, could AI reach that point where its logic is equal to that of a human being? And in this book, it shows you that no, it at that point in this book, the technology at that point in the book, at that point in time, it doesn't. I mean, yeah. human humans aren't really the most logical thing out there. It can't. I it mean, can't. Like, I mean, the main thing AI can't do is it can't improvise. Some of us are more it than can't, others. It can't improvise. <laughs> now it looks like, but all it's doing is it's combining pieces it's previously seen, but it can't really improvise, right? So the AI gets to a point where it doesn't know what to do and it just stops, right? Whereas human beings, yeah, you dump them on this planet and you're going to get something random, right? So I mean that's that's one of the many things. Like I said, well, for, I mean when when humans get to a point where they don't know what to do, they just do something stupid, right? They improvise. No. Mm-hmm. They improvise. They evolve. They evolve. No humans they evolve. Adapt. AI can't evolve without human input, right? Well, like I said, that's why I use the word improvise, guys, because it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, right? That's why it's improvisation. True. And that's True. something that AI yeah, that you know. Or invention. You can even use the term invention in the more usual, in the more general sense. It, invention, right? Human beings can invent. They can invent something stupid, but they can also invent something, you know, or, or sometimes you never know yeah. if something stupid or not stupid, right? Like, you know, sometimes it might be stupid, other times it might not be. So improvisation, invention, but there's a pressure, right? Like, you know, the robot just looks for its conditions and then it waits, right? It's like, yep, my conditions are met and I'll return, right? That, like I said, this is the other thing about AI, is it can just wait forever until I input next, right? It doesn't, it doesn't get bored. AI doesn't get bored. What did you guys think there of Jesus Castro when he got when he was um, interviewing Polly there before he put her in the coffin? What did you think about? when he almost when he got aroused by her almost like what was that all about so the way i took it was two levels one he like i said i think it was to show that he was essentially he's a moralist right that is to say he he is he is about self-control right and of course it's not wrong to have certain feelings because like even he castigates himself he's like oh now i feel right so i mean it, it goes back to what we even talked about in the diamond age right there's nothing wrong with having impure th- so I, I think it's to show that he is he is a man, right? He's not, he's not just like this, you know, this, you know, completely, you know, unperturbed, perfect guy, right? But he is very much about self-control, right? He is, and, and self-control is not about not having urges. It's about controlling urges, right? Like, in many ways, he's actually somewhat admirable, right? I mean, he is extremely intelligent, right? He is very commanding. He, you know, is in command of himself. He's well aware of the situation, everything else, right? Like, he isn't, like I said, like, that's why I like, because, like, the problem is, is that he, he's just, he's an absolute, you know, um, zealot, right? Like, he is zealous in, in his sort of enforcement of these things. Yeah. But for, for most, it, right, and, and he's very professional, but it's even implied, right? Like, you know, it's, it's not like, yeah, everybody at work sort of fears him, and he is very severe, but it's not like he, implied. He's like, rigid. But it, it does seem to be implied that, you know, in some ways, like I said, like, I brought up, like, like, 
he's almost like the Nazi father, right? Like during the day he does these things, but he goes home and, you know, he's, he's just a dutiful husband and father. And, you know, I mean, it's just a job to him, right? He's very compartmentalized. But the other way I took it there too, was it was kind of, I think what was the temptation there? It was like the whole, like, you know, uh, she's such a dirty colonist, right? Like such a filthy, filthy colonist. You know what I mean? Well, and, and he's half, right? So, Well, that's what I'm saying. So I think that was kind of the drive, right? Is it's, you know, like I said, like this is what you see when you see, like I said, yeah, the, uh, you know, like like that character, right? Like it's like, you know, the the, the banana guy, right? Like he, You can uh, tell that uh, Niven has a little bit of a naughty mind. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, no. yeah he, he's a little bit of a, wrote, you know, absolutely. he likes to dominate jerks and he, things he, like uh, that. Like he, he wrote, you know, he's a little bit. Yeah, you can tell his proclivities, his sexual well, proclivities he, he are wrote, a little bit more. His penis. I don't know. Risky. But in, okay, in some ways, it like it's that. it's that Victorian mindset we talked about, right? Where yeah, so he well. wanted. So you're you're repressed, and it's like this isn't something I'd do with my wife, who's a good woman, right? But these filthy colonists, they're so wild and stuff, right? You want to, you know, it, it's <laughs> that it's that notion, like I said, of them when they're going native, right? Because like that's, the, you know, they would go, and it's like, yeah, I have a wife back home, but you know, uh these these foreign chicks, like, they're so ugly and gross. No, but, that, that, uh, that's the way I interpret it, right? And the reason why some guys were in, like, a, you know, in power, they like dominatrix stuff, because it's just to, you know, kind of break well, the challenge. Well, he likes the good girl, bad girl thing, too, right? Yeah. Like, good girl, but, bad girl. Polly's a, a petite little thing, but she, then all of a sudden, she's a sex kitten. Like, and I'm sitting here going, I know who no, you but are. For, 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 people who, for people who have a very rigid structure, like it's tempting, right? To like, yeah, it's like, you know, the, the kind of the, the opposite of, 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 you know, like their core, you know, so it's like tempting. Well, actually, it's it's exa- once again, the diamond age, right? What was it? The major or colonel or whatever, right? Like for him being so in control, like he, he was very much like like Pietro Castro, right? The perfectly in control, always whatever. Right. So for him, though. He almost wanted to feel at, you know, I mean, um, out of control, right? Both of them, both of them, it comes, it's different forms of out of control for, for Pietro Castro, right? It's out of control and that like, you know, he's very much, yeah, like, you know, whatever, but it's like, yeah, I just want to ravage this one. Whereas for that guy in the other book, it's just like, yeah, I want to feel powerless. I, wa- I want to feel panic and fear, right? Because he's so hard and he feels, uh, right? He yeah, actually yeah. wants to feel genuine fear. Like he, he's so composed and, yeah, like, so uh, so on top of his game, for sure. Like, get, getting dominated, it's definitely the, the antithesis to what he does, right? The way he does, so for sure. And that's, that's how I interpret it when I read that. I just found it interesting that, that uh, yeah, for sure, it's going to appealing to to that, you know, that... The, the whole control structure life is just a, um, the opposite of that. It's always tempting. Well, like I said, it's, it's the half breed self hatred, right? He, he p- puts these forces on himself to show that he's better than the cost. Yes. He's not crew, but he's, he's, he's accepted his place. Right. But then he obviously probably, yeah, to a certain extent has a disregard and hatred for that fact that he's half colonist. He's got that he's dirty doing- colonist blood in him. I think that he sees himself as half crew. He doesn't want to be seen as half colonist. You know, he's got a, you know, he's, he's got a definite prejudice there. It's not just, it's not just his programming, right? It's, it's, I mean, you can be taught to be prejudiced and he's been taught. Well, I think like at first he doesn't want to be attracted. Now that I look back, yeah, like now, of course, like I said, it's the relativistic thing that, like, yeah, when we're first, when Matthew describes Polly, right, she's the most feminine, delicate, you know, flower he's ever seen, right? Whereas, yeah, when Castro sees Polly, yeah, she's got callus on her hands and she's she's a bit, you know, whatever, right? But then at the same time, he might be overcompensating there because, yeah, he doesn't want to admit, you know, that he's attracted to these dirty colonists, right? Wait, what happens to Jesus Pietro at the end? I don't know what happens to him. I don't remember. Where does he go at the end? He dies. Oh, he dies? He dies? Yeah, no, he dies. I can't remember yeah, how he exactly does. does he die. Wait, it, 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 is, is he burned when they, up? When they, when they... When the ship with the plank, yeah, the plank the uh, takes, takes off the hospital. Yeah. Okay, okay, that was kind of chaotic for me. Yeah. I, I was having trouble 
uh, like Adrian, I recent I, I finished it like just you know like today this like this afternoon whatever. So I was kind of rushing through the the, the the last part there. And like uh, that part is very chaotic when they they plank uh, yeah. into the hospital and just yeah everything's uh, in flames. Okay, so he dies. All right. Yeah, the crew the crew burn up right from the from the jets of it of the ship. Yeah, I wasn't sure what happened. Uh, I mean, what I said, like, I was listening to it, and it was very really chaotic, and I didn't have a chance to. Yeah, it, re- to it really it. was, actually. That could have been written, I think, a little bit better, right? Like, I mean, it was, uh, I, I agree. Well, since we're here, let, let's, yeah, let's yeah. talk about the structure no, no, I, I of, think, of, of the book. I think I Go remember ahead. him kind of, kind of like, he's like, like, I think it was almost kind of like the captain going down with his ship type thing. Because, like I said, I think... Even in that last moment, he like that's the point, right? It's the captain going down with his ship, and I think you know Castro sort of like accepts it. It's like you know, like it's yeah, he quietly because it is his ship, right? That is to say, like the the hospital is his ship. He's the captain of that ship. So the destruction of the hospital is the destruction of him, right? Both literally, physically, you know, spiritually, even right. Like he can't, you know, like. If it's going to be this way, if there's not going to be any hospital, that he'd rather probably be dead. Well, it's his whole identity. Yeah, it's not even his identity. It's his. It's his world view, right? It's. 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 Like I said, it's. It's never put, but I mean, it is, it's almost religious, right? This notion of the way things work, right? It's. But yeah, it's under the structure there. Yeah, screen, but it's so just... yeah, I wanted to ask. Yeah, like I, um, I mean, I, I read this many times. Like a, they kind of uh, head jumping. Like I wanted to ask you guys how you feel about that. But like you have like, you know, sometimes like even like one paragraph and then it would it would jump into another character. Um, I I was getting confused. Yeah, that, yeah. Like I, I wanted to, I wanted to. Uh, read the book but then that just i was what oh, i kept going back so I'm, no i'm just gonna listen to it because I, I just keep getting lost uh i mean i encountered this before with other books but i feel in this one it's it, it just took me out of out of this story what do you guys think so about one that? thing i will say here my guess it cuts to me what it does is it cuts back and forth especially in that first part so to me i think what you have to acknowledge here is the influence that film and people know because like you know um niven would have been kind of the first generation that grew up with movies right because like he's roughly the age of, of, of people I've known. Right. And they talk about like, you know, they're in the, right. He was born in the thirties. So like in the early thirties and the forties, right. Like, yeah, you, you just take a nickel, you go down. Yeah. You, you, right. And this is back when, yeah, you didn't have TV. So you'd go down to the cinema. Right. And you'd get a double feature. You'd get your shorts, you'd get your newsreel, right. Like you could buy a ticket and sit in there for five hours. Right. You'd buy a hamburger soda and everything else. Right. So like, you know, like, yeah, like my grandmother would describe it. It's like, oh, yeah, they give us a nickel. We go down there, we get a hamburger, and we watch a movie, and then we get a so right? Like, I mean, it was like a whole evening's meal, right? Like, so I, I think what you get is that, like, the the influence of media on, on, on other media, right? So somebody, you know, who grew up kind of with that kind of, you know, modern film editing, right, where you, you're starting to get that parallel thing, right? It goes from this to this to this to this simultaneously, right? Parallel cutting, as it's called, right, where it's not just one scene but it's like literally like as i'm walking down one hall and then it cuts to you doing something that cuts back to me right that really i don't know if you really see that in literature before this but it, it's something that very quickly develops in film and so i think niven having you know obviously been of that generation to have grown up with films he probably writes things in a kind of filmic manner right yeah but usually are, are the other stories like this i mean the other nivens um, I don't know if it's quite this. This one very specific, at least well, at the beginning, I, where the way it jumps I, there, I, like the parallel. I read, read Ringworld, and it's not like this. Like this one is, especially what Zinke is saying. Like at the beginning, it just goes back and forth, back and forth. And like what I wanted to say is, uh, you know, I actually downloaded like three different uh, uh, e copies because I'm like, wait, like is is it is the copy that doesn't have like? Because usually when authors do this, they have there is a coding like they put like you know like a line at the bottom or like you know like. They, they make a way for you as a reader to, to differentiate what, when the, either there's a cut or like there's a jump in, in, in character. But there's nothing that like you get just a, you know, like 
Pete, it's very Pete, actiony, and even there at the end, right? So like, I mean, that's what this is. It's a very actiony book. Colon right? continues. Colon continues. But what I said, even in, in like thriller books or like you know like crappy fantasy books. Uh, the other are like you know like put a little line at the bottom or like a little you know a little image like for you to know when, when it jumps so i'm not sure if this is just like a sign of the time that it but was see, you know, like experimenting yeah. and like if, if you if you take a writing class they obviously tell you not to do this right like at least each chapter one character or like you know like each if, if you're gonna if you're gonna head jump like you know you have to kind of set it up but i feel like in here like what I said, I was getting confused, and I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna listen to it. I can't read it because I'm like, what? Like, I'll have to get go back and go back and go back. So, I just, yeah, I found that uh, just distracting. I'm not sure if, how do you guys felt. Uh... Well, like I said, for me, like if you put that line in there, like to me, it it's very filmic in that way, right? It's literally parallel cutting. It's not two different scenes; it's parallel scenes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if you put that that divider in there. Then it's like, oh, this scene happens. Now this scene, like, I think he wants that sort of quick cutting back and forth, right? Like a, you would get in a movie where you're getting that parallel. That's what it's called, parallel action, parallel cutting, right? Where it's it's actually it's actually considered the same scene, right? Because it, it it meshes together, right? But it's supposed to be two things happening at the same time, right? It, it's usually supposed to be like a high action, yeah, scene, right? Got, you know, got, got like, a like, thing. Exactly. So for me, it wasn't unusual because, yeah, like that's that, that's like I, I could see him trying to do. And, and this one, I would say, is actually very actiony, right? Like like the, the, especially that whole ending, every, everything in here. It's actually a lot more action. I don't usually read action books. Right. Like th this is actually probably one of the well, more. It's, so I, it's I, I, really I thriller, it's right? Like the whole cut and mouse format, you know, like uh, Jesus Pietro and, and Martha, the cut and mouse. That's one on one thriller, right? If you read any all of the spy thrillers, right? Or like even, you know, the uh, those Brandon Sanderson, you know, a pulpy fantasy, it's the same format, right? Like cat and mouse, you, you cut between, you know, like one character and like, you know, they always kind of closer to catch the other. So that is, yeah, one of the of the most. Uh, so yeah, I was, uh, you you guys, uh, yeah, did you notice that? Or like, how do you feel about that? The, the cat, cat, cat and mouse uh, format there. So, for me, um, at first, I had like an issue with it because I was like, you know, what's going on here? But then afterwards, like I kind of reviewed and went on, it became okay. Like I didn't mind it as much, right, as the story came together more. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I think you mentioned that in the DM group there, Carlo. You're like, there's just so many characters coming up now and like it's hard to follow. I had the same kind of uh, thing, but then I... I just kind of got used to it and like, I don't know. I, ju I just like went with it. Right. I mean, I think to me, like later on, I don't know if it happens as much, but in that first part, cause like, cause I think it like, it's supposed to be that like, yeah, like every time, like, you know, Pietro turns his head up, oh, there's Matthew Keller. Like, it's almost kind of like, yeah, he forgets about it. And then he, there he's there. And of course, yeah, Matthew Keller doesn't realize he's being watched. Right. That at every point he's being watched again by this. Right. It's like these, these parallel like the, lives. The, 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 the bar scene, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just saying it's the parallel lives. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, because like it, it kind of falls well, and, up at the I, same I, I point it, over 15 it years. It works later once you get a sense of the story because of uh, uh, mad psionic powers that people kind of forget. So it's normal for, you know, to get a cut. I just find, like, at, at the beginning, though, I was just, yeah, just confusing. Like, it's one of the first times ever in my yeah. In my in my history of reading books, that I, I I actually I was like closer to to understand more with the audiobook. Like I could not read it. I'm like oh, I have to go back. It was very strange for me. And I read I read like stories like this where like they do you know like flip back and forth. But this one specifically at the beginning though I could not get through it. I'm like wait what, who's this? Like I have to go back and backtrack backtrack. So I'm like I will just listen to it while I, I clean or something. Same. Well, like agree. I said, I, I fully have no agree. Way because usually I don't read thriller, thriller or action books. Anything, if anything, when books get really actiony like that, like I, I sort of zone out. Like I, that's why, like yeah, like the exact series of events and everything there. Like I, I sort of, you know, zone out to a certain extent there, just because yeah, it, it just, it, it's, it's sort of just like action, action, right? It doesn't. This really... is like a, a heist book, right? Like I mean, to you think about it, it's an invisible man meets a heist story with Oregon Bank, right? <laughs> 
Well, exactly. And like, I, I have a very mixed relation now. Of course, I've watched more movies. That's why Inception works because it takes that usual heist format and then it it, it kind of adds this other level, right? Because like, yeah, I I really, really, really hate oh, heist I, I movies more than you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> the oceans oh the oceans movies uh, are the worst right because it's just a bunch it's just uh, it's just eight million dollar guys jerking the, off the on italian each other. job it. like the, the four movies is the same shit and like it, uh, yeah it, italian it, job in novels though it's worse in novels because they, they they trick you right like in, in a in a movie you kind of see okay you're like this is a stupid you know like heist movie whatever but in many novels you start right like oh yeah cool the characters whatever and by a quarter, you're like, oh shit, this is a highest novel. Like, I'm like, oh, right. So I feel like the original Italian job. Did you guys see that? The original British one. Yeah, it's much more kind of satirical. Michael Caine. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's almost a satire to a certain extent of heist movies. Yeah, it's if anything, yeah. it's not a, a stupid action movie. Well, I mean the the update. It wasn't was. great. It, it wasn't, I mean, like, I, but you know, the update, like, I think I watched like five minutes. I was like, nope, <laughs> nope. Just, just kind of like, like to, to, to Neven's testament, like, I, I would have ditched this novel or like just not be interested at all. But like, I feel like the settings, you know, like really got me interested. And, and the whole, I mean, like, I don't know if you, if you think, if you pick this on purpose, like, because their system is collapsing, kind of like our system is collapsing. So I was just kind of mirroring things to, to, that and, and that this story and like us right having like oh like our system is collapsing in real time right and with like kind of the advent of new information right like so what we have now is like oh yeah like that just got me interesting like how would someone speculate about a system failing like you know like i wanted to know so that's what well there's always two levels that are interesting because yeah niven works for me on a number one he does the hard science in a way that doesn't irritate the shit out of me right he does enough of it to like make it grounded so it's not just like magical but not enough to like bore the shit out of me right like he mixes it in but then he focuses on the human pressure of it more than anything else right it's like okay what is the impact of this like if this becomes an everyday thing for people right you know people adapt to it it becomes part of culture Brandon Sanderson like he he stole this from Niven and he says that like he created this kind of fantasy formula to write fantasy where like you know like you have the, like the, the magic, she ha he has these rules. So like A, you know, they has to be, like the magic has to be understandable enough that like when it it it, it makes it take, has a consequence in the in the plot in the story, you understand the nature of that consequence because you understand the magic. In this case, can be the science, right? And also that it, every magic power or like you know every tech whatever it has to have a, uh, like the. Uh, uh, the kind of weaknesses has to be, you know, like like bigger than than like you know the 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 advantages, right? Like you you have to have more more uh, yeah negative connotations or like consequences than just the you know um, and uh, the one is like the the characters have to you know kind of improvise with it, right? Like kind of the, the characters have to interact with that magic or technology and like even for what I read of him, like he does this like perfectly, right? Like you have they, like they, his science is enough, like hard enough for you to understand, you know, like have a strong base and like see how it's affecting the, the plot, right? But it's not, it's not freaking, I don't know, Joe Ring, John Ringo, or like a, I don't know, uh, uh, who else is like extremely sciencey, um, or like, um, yeah, um, he's not like too, too, too much nuts and bolts like some people who like really bore you, L like uh, yeah, Kim Sunny Robinson, right? Like he goes into engineering and all that, like. It gets boring and, and, and too dry and heavy. Um, and but he also plays with okay, like I, we have tech here, like how is this affecting the culture? And like he really goes with that. And I feel like that's you know, few writers do that, but like they're more like, oh, look how cool this tech can be, right? But no, no, like show me how it's affecting the you know the culture itself, not how cool the, the tech can, can get to be, right? So that's why I, I really, you know, that, having read Ring World, that's what, you know, I like the most. I'm like, oh, he's actually, you know, like basically starting the influence of, of tech in like sentient beings and culture, right? The, the other reason I like, because like, like I said, to me, because of course he's writing this in the 60s and all my concepts of the 60s now, mainstream 60s are actually mad men, right? Because, yeah, most people in the hip, in the 60s weren't hippies, right? They were, you know, salary men that, you know, then threw house parties, right? Like, so what's interesting about the way people are 
and it's it's the reason I don't like to read books these days about young people because in the sixties, like in his generation, like I said, my father's generation, and and you know that 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 silent generation, it was a mix. Like you still like wore a suit and tie, but then yeah, you went to a house party and got completely sloshed, and then you know banged somebody, right? So like it wasn't complete. Like there was there was still like a certain amount of like structure and um, I guess you could say. Um, dignity to it but at the same time they were also it, it, it's still like you know people are going to house part you know what i mean so i guess you you, you kind of get what i'm saying they're like they go to this house party and it's not like it's not like a jack off like when you like it's like oh this is what young people like it is what young people are doing there but like it's not completely as like you know obnoxious as like more modern things that deal with this you know what get there's something about the sixties that are interesting that, and that yeah, people were both open minded but also sort of, you know Yeah, they were open minded buttoned down. There was also like nobility, like to, to their to their behavior, right? To their acts was like, you know, n- not just completely trashy self destruction. Well it's like people people would dress up to go to a party, right? Not like you know, like it was not specifically like a fancy dress party or a mad or even when people then you know, 10 years ago or so, you had people who threw madmen parties and stuff like that. But, you know, there was sort of, you know, there was sort of this, like, yeah, it was, it was like, it, it's, it's almost like the Japanese. It's, it's like, like a formality. Yeah, it's like structured fun. It's like, yeah, we're going here to get sloshed and laid. But, you know, you still got to, you know, put on a tie there and you got to, the lady's got to put on, you know, you, you're not coming in your torn jeans and, you know, bumming yeah, around. I, you know what I mean, mean? They, they have, but, <laughs> but, you know, like, I feel like they, they, their identity was very complex, right? And like, now you have people who their whole identity is just be trashy, right? Like, that's all they do, right? And like, as trashy as they can be, right? And that, that's what they become, right? Whereas they are, you know, like, I think it, there were social norms, right? No, but I mean, like, if if you look at a, if you look at a, like a lefty, a lefty, you know, like chick or a lefty dude, like they just be as like their goal in life is to be as trashy as they can be, right? And like, well, everything's on their sleeve, right? Like they act the same. Like this is shallow, what I thought about, like with space, is shallow and vapid, right? Like that's what they live. But like what what you're saying, saying like people from this age, like this time, right? They have like an internal life, you know, like a like and as like you have this like the mo- moral structure like sort of, of moral like the, the moral is there right so it was okay to like like you know like delve into into like I don't know they're they're more you know like they're, they're um once and like whatever right like that was fine but they would still go back to adhere back to their, their moral structure right they wouldn't discard it all the way like left is do now they're just like whatever they're just trash right well, it's the same. It's it's like I always talk about, like why, like yeah, I don't want to mix my space. Like I don't want to mix different aspects of my life, right? There's, yeah, there's you know, like some people are like that, right? They're the same person everywhere. It's like no, 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 you know, office zinc and you know, after party zinc and weekend zinc. Those are three different guys, right? Spaces, well, it's boundaries. And it's, well, that's what I'm saying, and it's not like it's like oh well, you're just like living a no, no, no. You, 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 you know, when I'm in the office, yeah, you don't need to know, like, all my political views. And you don't need to know, like, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, that's my, right? Like, I, you know, I, I don't wear, like, band. Now, these days it's allowed, but, yeah, I don't I don't wear, like, a band T-shirt, right, in there. It's like, because I want everybody to know about this band I'm particularly into, right? Like, their personalities were, you know, more complex. Like, you didn't have to broadcast your personality. Like, yep, nope, this is my personality. I'm this collection of things, and that's what you're going to see. The moment you meet me, you're going to instantly be able to size me up, right? Like, you see somebody show up there, it's like, y- y- you don't know, right? It's like, everybody's wearing a suit and tie, but yeah, this is the guy that, you know, you can, you, you can go into the bathroom and do lines off a hooker with, and this is the guy who's going to narc on you, right? You can't tell. They look the same, they dress the same way, right? In the office, at least, right? You know, and then, yeah, you yeah. go to a party afterward, and even then, it's kind of like, oh, which one is this guy? Is this guy... Is he really, you know, is he, is he a, you know, is he a tool? But, but I mean, he... what, what's the benefit to that? Well, it's just the complaint. It's, it's just called being an adult, I guess is what I'm saying, right? These people are, these people are young adults, right? So they, but, they're adults. Also, you know, and your, they... your identity being private, I think that's, that's essential, right? Not to have your identity just, you know, like tied to, to whatever, right? To whatever, you know, like you're wearing or whatever, right? Like, I feel like it's, it's important to put your identity to, to be private and to not just be focused on one thing, right? Not just to be attached to a single thing. I feel like that. Well, that's the thing. You shouldn't be able to read everything about me when I'm, you know, 
everywhere, right? Like, because because I'm too com- in yeah. some ways for me it's because I can't right like I'm not all just about like I'm not just some I listen to heavy metal but I'm not a metal head I've never like this has always been my problem right like I've played games more than anybody but I hate gamer culture there's nothing I hate more than gamer culture right because that it becomes a, an, an identity it's like you know these people who like yeah they cosplay and then they go to cons it's like that's time I could have been spending playing games right like to me being a gamer means I play games right not that I talk about being a gamer right it's that fake you know it's 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 a facade it's a pretension right like so that's what i so in some ways like yeah i actually find that there were you know these people were more complex and nowadays yeah people are just shallow it's like nope i have to broadcast my entire identity well i mean a a lot of those people that like that you're saying broadcast their entire identity i mean they're generally hiding quite a bit right it's like are they you know, hiding, or it, is it just that, no, no, I'm saying they're shallow, that's the point, right, they're, they're extremely shallow, right, it doesn't make them more complex and interesting, it makes them less interesting, because I can instantly see everything about them, right, right, there, there, there's no, I guess some, in some ways, everybody some should, people, pos- right, I mean, well, well, I mean, there's like, well, I mean, the, you're right, they're, they're on, yeah. a, on a broad level about the shallowness, um, but I mean, there are people that, like, yeah, you can tell those things about them, but then, you know, from how they dress and, what, and this type of stuff. I can but tell then, what then they want talk to project. To them, I can tell what they want to project, right? right. So like this thing. But, but but then if you talk to them, you know, there can be more there, right? So I mean, maybe. But I'm saying, like you, 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 like it, it's it's sort of a I, I don't know. It's just a certain shallowness. I don't know that I find in today. Like so, you got, so you think that if you're all wearing suits the shallowness is not there like well no i'm saying you wear a suit because you were just at work right so when you're at work right like i don't need to know what your favorite band is at work now if we strike up conversation i can discover that about you right but like because otherwise you come in and you 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 look that way it's like oh okay well he's just a metalhead maybe there is more depth but otherwise you know like i don't need that broadcast but if anything to me it's like you know it's like well that's all you you know i mean so like i'm just thinking like until not that long ago, I mean, you know, the business world, you did wear dress clothes all the time, right? It's, it's only a recent thing that, yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, well, so, I mean, even... It, things... I mean, it's quite recent, right? So, it's like, we're talking well, about for, for, yeah. 10 well, years, well, right? Yeah, like, you know, like, when I worked at the bookstore, I don't know how long has it been, like, 15 years ago, we, we have we have to wear a dress shirt and, like, dress pants and, like, dress shoes. Like, that was still, like important for you to to look formal um so and like i remember like a in 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 my college whenever we had like you know uh, like an event we had we were like you know uh put on a uh, shirt and like you know dress pants and all that so i don't know when it would be well it's both sides because i always hated the business casual look too it's like oh yeah you don't have to wear a tie like i mean it's it's both things right like for me, what it is is that you want to wear something that's neutral, right? So, like, it should be modern, right? Like, yeah, you shouldn't wear, like, why do we wear a suit and tie anymore, right? Like, like, like that, I don't know but, if that's like, necessary. Example, like, I always wear, like, the, the same, like, a, a black sweater, you know, like, black jeans, and, and, like, I'm always wearing the same. Like, if you look at my, 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 uh, my closet, it's just a bunch of black sweaters and, like, black pants, <laughs> and not to be, well, I mean, like, just, like, to be neutral, right? Or, like, great. Very Fight Club esque, right, Carl? No, it's just to be neutral, though. I had just like gray, black, yeah, dark colors. Like I, I don't have like anything like yeah, like a bright color, like a like a band T-shirt. Like I just, I, I mean, I never felt the need to, you know, like uh, telegraph my, you know, what's in my head to to what I, what I'm um, I'm wearing. And I feel like at the same time, like it's just it's so much. So much energy to try to try to find that like okay i'm gonna look like how i fit to the whatever like i'm gonna i'm gonna wear like to to according to whatever group i'm uh, i know I'm, I'm friends with like who cares so much energy into that i feel like you know it, being neutral outside and inside it's it saves you energy and like you know i i just find it immature to have to project your your uh personality outwards like that Yeah, like I'm, I'm just thinking about like 
the business world. I mean, I I mean, I I haven't been to downtown Toronto in a really really long time, and like I mean, the last time this past year when I was there in February, um, I'm just trying to think back as to like the attire that people were wearing, but like, yeah, I mean, generally it was all dress clothes um, up until like 13 years ago where like, you know, the younger people started coming in and like, oh, I guess it's, they always had dress down Fridays, um, which would be, I guess, more like business casual or like dress down. Then like people started demanding that more and more and more. Um, but I still say it's, it's like, quite recent right that that has changed else, right like, it's in, like in the business world or like in the you know form like you you never saw anyone with like a, their their hair like dyed blue or purple or something like no that was yeah exactly and and you would not be allowed to be there not at all with that yeah. right they would be like no it's unprofessional yeah. to no. change it Dress. but then these like or, or like these chicks changed it they're yeah. like well, I mean, there was a recent thing, like, there was a video going around, and it was this one chick, and she had, like, tattooed, like, crazy like crazy the whites yeah. of her eyes were tattooed black, Ugh. and she was, like, I'm be and she had tattoos all on her face and shit. That's what I'm like, saying. Like, it, you, you, yeah, and she was, like, I'm being discriminated against, you know, like, I can't get a job. It's, like, well, I mean, <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? Like, of course you can't get a job. Like, I mean... Yeah, the the whites of your eyes are are tattooed black. Like I mean, it's it looks fucked up, right? But she's like, oh no, it's discrimination and this or that. And obviously, that's an extreme example where they're like, no, 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 <laughs> we actually cannot have you working. Yeah, but that to me was but like the, the chicks with the green hair and yeah, shit, they, like, they seem to be getting away with it, right? Like you know what? <laughs> like Think says that it was like a like. You know, you, there's like a loss of dignity. For me, it's a loss of modesty. It's sort of both. So th this is actually my biggest thing. Yeah, so, yeah. So people don't understand, but like, so like, it's the airport. Actually, the airport's the biggest one, right? People go to the airport and they just dress like it's like fucking total <laughs> shit. But it's like, I know, is that I know. even? <laughs> so you know what? You, you know, exactly. So here's what's funny. Here's what's funny. The Peter. most. The most comfortable pants I have are not pajama pants, aren't sweatpants. It's a pair of slacks. Now, they're technically Sean John brand, but whatever. But they're yeah. just gray slacks. They're extremely thin. And so they're, they're, it's, they're, they're, they're like very lightweight, right? Like, I mean, super lightweight. And so, like, usually when I go on a flight, that's what I wear on a flight, right? Because I don't have to look like shit, but I'm extremely comfortable, right? I mean, they're like, they yeah. cover. Because the other thing, too, is I don't want my skin to actually touch because, those, you know, it's the, the vinyl yeah. seats there. So like yeah, like wearing wearing like <laughs> short shorts, but yeah no, I've seen it like well actually one time because like literally we were getting on a full flight me and my brother it was one of the ones where it was like th you know three columns down the middle right you had two aisles, and we were in the middle one just because when we got the picture and it was almost looking like we'd actually have like a middle seat so we could actually really spread out there, but then the plane was like holding and I think it was literally waiting for this one chick who finally came and sat in our seat and you could tell she just like. Yeah. Booked it at the last minute because, like, I'd even checked because I always move the seats right before because if anybody's sitting by me, I always try to find an empty seat, right? Like, so I'm not sitting by anybody. Yeah. And so I'd moved it. She shows up. Yeah. This chick shows up. Yeah. Dressed like shit. I think in flip flops, sweatpants. She has the neck pillow and she's just wearing the neck pillow, right? Like, and, and I've seen it too. <laughs> like, recently, like, I think, I can't remember if it was a, a picture on here or if I saw it in real life. It was like a guy, like, in like bright red, like, pretty much pajamas and like stuff. Like, yeah. like people think it's like, oh, well, it's so horrible on there. I, I, but I got to dress like shit to be comfortable. It's like, no, no, no. You can actually be comfortable. Like, this, this is the sort of lie, right? Because, yeah, why jeans became popular, I'm not sure, because most of us don't need jeans. But, of course, jeans have just become sort of standards. So we all, of course, wear jeans. But they're not comfortable, right? Like, they were meant for miners, right? Because, yeah, you literally, you know, you could go down there into the fucking mines and, you know, kneel on fucking hard gravel and, you know, not tear yourself up, right? That's why jeans were – because, like, slacks, like I said, an extreme – like, a well-tailored pair, of, you know, or well-fitted yeah. pair of slacks are far more comfortable. Yeah, 100%. <clears throat> so it's this, it's this illusion that, yeah, wearing less is more comfortable – or just wearing crap is more comfortable because yeah, like sweatpants or something like that. Like I've well, just I mean, never a lot. A lot of the girls just look like bums these days. All right, it's like 
you know, they they really do. And it's like, but that's the style is to look like a bomb, right? And I mean, this stuff started in like, I'm going to say that, that, like, that's a lefty thing, though. That, the late 2000s, thing, like, you like, guys, can I just say? I mean, that... I mean, the dudes wearing like a capri fucking like sweatpants with like a man bun and like, I mean, it's just like, what? What is this, right? Like, the degradation I mean... <laughs> of how people jeans are dress classier, in society. Right? I mean, <laughs> the degradation of how people dress in society is directly related to the creation of lycra and spandex. Well, I mean that there, there was this one meme going around, and it was like it was about um, like Vancouver, like women's fashion, and it was like um, you know casual wear and it's a pair of like lululemon leggings and then it's like you know formal wear it's a pair of black lululemon leggings it's like yeah you, you know like daily wear it's like lululemon black leggings it's like <laughs> yeah but there's leggings and then there's tights and a lot of yeah. women don't know the difference and they don't realize that you know you can stretch a fabric so much that you can actually see your your underwear or lack thereof, um, really easily. Well, I, mean, well, I was, was going to say, yeah. if you buy your leggings too small, they become tights, right? Exactly. Yeah. See through tights. But I mean, this pantyhose <laughs> really. Let's be honest. Yeah, and there's some women. Fishnets that almost. Shouldn't. Yeah, there's some women that just shouldn't, and men, because I've seen men wear shit that shouldn't wear. Things too tight and too transparent, just to begin with. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's, you know it's what? Even... I don't want to see it. I don't want to see that shit. I don't want to see the cleft of like every single millimeter of the cleft of your ass. I don't want to see it. Why do I have to see that? <laughs> well, it's even shorts, right? Like, like I said, a light, airy pair of slacks are more breathable than most of the shorts I see, right? big old pa- pair of cargo shorts right so it's not like it's like oh they're like they're they're light and airy right like it has nothing to like just having your legs exposed to air doesn't reduce your sweatiness right it, like so i mean that's the other thing right like do you really need to have your legs out i don't know men or women you know what i don't know how many times in an airport yeah where i've seen like some guy and he's going to the bahamas or something right and he's wearing his like swim trunks right so they they don't really have support. So then he sits down. Yeah, he trans, you know, so he sits down, right? And you know, a lot of guys sit with their legs wide open. And all of a sudden, the mouse is out of the house. I don't want to see that. Well, like I said, I, I, it's like, yeah, they have to broadcast to you. It's like I'm so relaxed, or I'm I'm just, you know, I'm I don't yeah, care here's how my I look. It's like, them. well, like I said, and it's like you can do that without looking like shit. Like I just don't. I like it's it's something. So nice yeah. Gadsden's post about it, and I, I've been like post about it. Too. It's like I just don't understand why. Yeah, people have to like, like dress like a bum at the airport. It's like yes, well, it's Chris- unpleasant for everybody. Like I, I hate like. Krista you know, Freeland so drives me crazy. Like when I was a girl, I was taught by my grandmother and my mother, right, that if you went out, you didn't go out in bare legs at a certain time of year. Like in the summer, a little bit casually, but if you went to work, you put on nylons. And I always was that way, but I mean, did, did, there's did, a lot did they of women at least that don't... not teach you to dig at your ass when you're wearing a dress. I'm hoping that <laughs> you, or, or maybe that's not. Well, necessary. here's the thing: if you're wearing clothes that fit you properly, you don't have to dig. She wears dresses that don't fit her properly. She's she's so inept. Oh. Like she's got she's got no fashion sense. I'm sorry, Krista Freeland just naturally like. Every time she wears something, I'm like, oh, my God, those shoes with that dress. Who the fuck? Like, somebody needs to dress her. Yeah, and you've she, all she, seen the like greasy hair. She doesn't wash her yeah. hair for, you know. Like, uh, she's well, so, you've seen. She's she so gross. Greasy. Oh she looks greasy God. sometimes. And that was a comment. I truly really like, can't stand her. She's like, got thick, long hair. She should be washing her hair, like, every three days at the most. Um, and, and she wears things that are too small and you can see because she's put on a lot of weight over eight years. Right. And you'll see her in dresses. Yeah, I guess. And 
you'll see her in 2016 and then you'll see her in 2019 and she's wearing this dress and it's like pulling across. We've all seen she's got that kind of bulges belly and it's like yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. That dress looks great on the, you know, the the model there. It's like, yeah, but does it really fit you? But then it's like but you know, but then it yeah, you wear nice you, you wear fucking nurse shoes with them, right? Like Exactly. <laughs> but but they it did fit, it did look nice on her 40 pounds ago. And you don't wear them with white flat top. Well, as I'm saying, fabric like, runners. I'm sorry, that was just especially well, after Labor Day. <laughs> well, it's just like I mean, if you're gonna dress that, way, like it's like you you almost look worse, right? Like if you're gonna, yeah, if you're gonna wear sneakers, then wear something that goes with sneakers. Don't like wear like you know the the little black dress that isn't really little anymore, but you know with with yeah white fucking sneakers, right? Like. If you're if you're gonna because you, you're not looking nice like nobody's gonna think it's like oh yeah you look it's like well the, la, at that point just wear some fucking slacks or some shit right wear the pants suit or you know that woman has enough money that she could hide I'm surprised that they haven't done this like she needs a personal stylist and she does have somebody it, give her a bit of not, guidance but I mean you and know, a basic she, wardrobe and rules to follow she do just fine wear what fits you. Well, once again, she has an age, right? Because she still thinks she's like some like I don't know high school girl, like where she like sits there with her like feet, her dirty ass feet up on the the chair, right? Picking at reading the newspaper. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like it's like it's like all of that. It's like you know, like yeah, like there's just like she's just truly a detestable person. Like I mean, ah, yeah. I mean, I I would say, and I I fucking loathe the bitch, but like. I would say Anita and Nand is like maybe dresses a bit better, carries herself a bit better, and I mean that's big coming from me because I cannot. They all do stand. the slightly casual thing, uh... but like she doesn't even work. Like it's just mismatch, right? Like yeah, it's like it's like a three-year-old dressing themselves. Like yeah, you put them in a fancy. Okay, well dress, let's talk David like... Lametti. Let's just not make this about women. Have you seen some of the shit he wears? Uh, he's horrible. The pink suit. Have you seen the pink suit? I Wait, w- wasn't he up on like sexual assault charges at one point or something? Lametti? No. Not Lametti. I, I think he wasn't he? No, that was the the MP. I think uh he was just a Chinese Canadian, I think. No, um wasn't it? Oh me? yeah, I know him. Yeah, yeah. No, no, Lametti's gold. Uh, he he's like and he's he's militant liberal, like militant. He's in it. He's in it till, like, right off the void edge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I don't know. Like, I mean, dressed like a fool in the House of Commons. Oh my god. But are you, I guess that's just what's interesting about the like going back to it, like yeah. So in some ways, these were like young people, and they were like at a party, and and you know they were doing like I mean this is still how house parties are, but yeah, in some ways, like just in my mind, just the way it's like described, like. I'm just imagining, yeah, something more like Mad Men in space where like, yeah, like people have some decorum. I don't know. Like, it's just weird. Like, yeah, like it's like it's it's like, a, I don't know. Like, I'm not one of those ones. It's just like, I don't know. It, it's interesting because just, yeah, you can see that transitional point where, yeah, people are sort of like, you know, being young and carefree. But yeah, like not just like, you know, like trying to show like, yeah, like, oh, man, I'm so like frat boyish, right? Like, yeah, it's a, it's not like a frat boy party, right? Like, yeah, yeah. it almost felt like like college. Wait, you, you like guys mean the party in a, in a story here at the bar? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they were all in their what early to late twenties, right? Yeah, but I mean, it, it is it is kind of a front to to recruit you know, new people to. To this on the earth, right? So oh, yeah, it is yeah, like yeah. a well, sure, yeah. But I was a bit, but it was made to look just like a normal party, right? But it was just like, yeah, like it's just, it's interesting because I think this is when you cover. actually start to, when you start to see, yeah, like house parties and kind of like, yeah, people do it, like you, because you, that's what you have, right? Like it's interesting because this was the period where you got like party albums, like some of them were like almost like joke albums and stuff like that. Like you started to see that in the '60s, right? So you had this sort of like, I guess you'd say it's 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 like the it wasn't youth culture. It was like the young adult culture, right? Where they were, you know, pushing off that like marriage or kids a little bit later too at that point, but they were still kind of like, uh, you know, going to like uh, parties as adults. Right. So 
it's just it's it's interesting because you, you start to see that sort of house party c- culture coming out of this period but yeah peter sellers the party uh, i'm not sure about that but i'm just saying like yeah it's it's <laughs> it's um it's just you know interesting what? It, was, it was written in 68 but like yeah like the feel was almost like to me it was like the early 60s right where you know girls with ponytails and you know, like they're still dressed in nice little sweaters and stuff like that, yeah. right? It wasn't like the hippie era yet. There, it, the seventies hadn't happened where there was like grunge and you know what I mean. Like well, I guess, I guess. Well, I, I'm sure those parties exist, but like, it, so I mean, all of these now, of course, they're all like, yeah, like blue collar. But at least within their spheres, they're kind of the yuppies, right? They're all doing relatively well, right? So yeah, they're right. not the highest class, but they're. There's sort of that middle class there, right? So that lower middle class, maybe. Well, lower middle class, but this is extremely classes. But I, I would say they're all professionals. So, like, I'd say within the context of this, they weren't they weren't like the crew who are almost like nobility, but they were all sort of like you know yuppies, young upper class professional, right? They're all professionals, right? Kind of the so, best of their generation, so to speak. Yeah. So I mean, that's what it is. So to me, it's like a yuppie house party, right? So. Yeah, professionals, but I was like, in, like kind of involved politically too. So yeah, they were not just yeah. Weeks. That's also part of the cover, right? They don't want to look like radicals. They want to seem just like average young people. Yeah, but I don't know. There's there's just something like it's it's something I I'd even notice like yeah with like boomer parties and and Gen X parties and millennial parties, right? Like they they they, they just sort of become more like it's like it's like they have to show off how fun they are. I guess that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not actual fun. It's the appearance of fun, right? It's the facade of fun, right? Like, yeah. Do, do, do you have to dress like, you know, like a total what, what, fool? What, 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 what do you mean boomer part? You mean boomer parties now? like Or any of them. Just any of them. Even boomers were like more like, you know, like, Grungy, but, but like, like, yeah, everybody has to be grungy. Not, not you're grungy. saying contemporary so, parties that would happen. In no, no, even just after this, like, I'm just saying, like, even after this, like, there's yeah, okay, like, like, I'm saying, even like, you know, boomer parties in the 80s or 70s, right? They're just grungier, right? I don't know. There was grungier, more effort, right? Like, you, like right. I don't know, I wasn't a party kid. Somebody like, yeah, like the guy's like serving drinks, right? Like, you know, like the, the, that, the, the, the guy there is like, you know, there's more of a sort of, it's still free will. Like there's still the awkwardness of going to any party young there. Right. But there's sort of like, you know, I don't know. Um, it's like they purposely yeah. try to be grosser. I guess that's like these people. Now, if they get sloshed and gross, that's sort of expected, right? But yeah. they're not like they're not showing up gross, right? The goal is to show up and then get drunk and have an excuse to be gross, right? That's why you're drinking. So it's like, ah, yeah, the party got out of hand. <laughs> but like these, I guess that's the thing. Like ever since this generation, people show up gross to begin with, right? I guess. Do that's you remember what... that 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 scene in um, Sixteen Candles where Molly Ringwald goes and if you guys haven't seen it, that's. Oh no, I've seen it. I've seen okay, it. Okay, so that scene where she goes to the party with like the upper class yuppie kid and she's seen as like the geek, right, weirdo. And she goes to this rich guy's house and they're upstairs, you know, they're all dressed in tuxedos and fancy clothes and high end stuff, but they're all just like crap people. Like there's they're everybody See, exactly fuck, that's everybody's what we fucking need to upstairs to. and there's there's everybody's drunk and throwing up and acting like idiots and they're supposed to be the upper crust, right? Exactly. That's that's the idea, right? You 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 don't you know, I mean like that's 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 what I'm saying. There's still I mean that's why people go to parties, right? Is is that's to make a fool of themselves. But but you know, you don't have to sh- like it's supposed the party's supposed to be the excuse to be a fool, right? That's why parties exist, right? Right, but you don't. But like nowadays, like the the point is like you have people who just show up and as fools, right? Like everybody shows up as a fool. Yeah, there's less pretension <laughs> in, in appearance, right? right? <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like they probably have done pre-drinking, so yes, you're right. But as I'm saying, like you, you shouldn't, <laughs> as an adult, you shouldn't be able to act like a fool. Like, like that, that's my irritation. It's like, oh. No, the worst thing is I don't need a be- drink to have fun. It's like, really? Are you four years old? 
if you're if you don't need to drink to have fun, then you aren't a real adult because you don't have enough problems and <laughs> dignity. You don't have enough, right? That's the point of it. You should have enough dignity to need to drink to have fun. I guess that's my point. <laughs> yeah. Because then I've always met, like, yeah, people like that. It's like, oh, yeah, like, they, they can somehow, like, like they just act drunk at parties, but they're not actually drinking. Like, this is something you see more among Mormons. Now, they never go complete, but, I mean, that's the point, yeah. Like You're trying to fit in, really? I don't know, yeah. Like, but you, you should, like, you should have to be enough of an adult to have the dignity to need to drink to have fun. Well, at least some, right? I mean, some drinks, I mean. You don't have to get sloppy. Yeah, right? just like I mean, to get a little bit of a sakes, buzz going. Like, and... I mean... But that's what I'm saying. If, 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 <laughs> if, if, you can, if you can act that way sober, then you're a fool, right? Like, that's the excuse, yeah. right? Like, yeah, it, yeah. it's supposed to lower your inhibitions because you should have those inhibitions mm-hmm. exactly, in everyday yeah, life. Yeah. And so if you can act like that without getting drunk, then, yeah, you need to re-examine there, right? Those are often people that just can't handle drinking. Well, I'm, I'm, but I'm saying, like, if, if, you, if you look like you're drunk before you get to the party, then you're a fool all day long. Mm, yeah. But I mean, I mean this, you, people do pre-drink, right? Well, no, but I'm saying that, they, like, that, that's another thing. But I'm saying, like, that's what it is. It's like, the, the idea is that you I think you just th- described James. <laughs> I don't like, yeah. No, no, he, he doesn't go to parties. He just wait, drinks wait, yeah, by himself. Like I said, I don't like to make this about names Oh, I'm here. sorry. I apologize. Yeah. for cold. I take that back. I'm wrong. I but I guess it. that's what I'm just trying to get at. Yeah, it's just that, yeah. It's... Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, did anybody find those worms, that those mining worms that he was yeah. describing? And they, like, eat the uh, metals, and then he's like, it's like there's problems with it. It's like, oh, they're not giving it the right nutrients. So so this was another thing, and this comes back to the AI thing, right? Like, not just those, but there was other things. It's like, oh, yeah, they could automate that, but that would make life too easy, right? Because oftentimes people come in. Now, it's the opposite here. It's like, oh, yeah, we don't want AI because, you know, then we'll get rid of those jobs. It's like, well, should they even exist, right? But in this case, they don't want AI because – they want to keep people too busy to think about because this is what I say about AI. It's like, yeah, it'll get rid of a bunch of crappy old jobs and then give people more time. It's like, well, some people won't adapt to it. It's like, well, I don't know what to tell them, right? Like this has been the history of humanity there is that, you know, we find a way to do something more efficiency so that we then have more time to do anything else and invent new things. Right. So like, it's almost like they don't want to give these colonists time to do anything you know, constructive, right? He's like, nope, nope, just keep working, just keep supporting us, right? In, but on the other side, right, yeah, they don't want to give crew any time to do anything constructive, right? They just want them to do frivolous things, right? Because that maintains the social order. They'll accept new technologies. In some ways, it's almost like a twisted form of the Amish. It's like, will we accept this technology only if it doesn't disrupt the social order, right? Because that's the usually... While you'll find some Amish that take in more technology than others, it comes down to whether or not it's going to disrupt their or Mennonites or Hutterites, right? Any of those Anabaptist groups, right? Like how much technology or external things they accept comes down to, you know, is this, you know, is this just frivolous or does this take away from something or does this give us more time to, you know, do something, you know? So, like, yeah, like, I know some will have, like, washing machines, but others won't have washing machines because, you know, the, the, like, hard work for the sake of hard work is, is valuable to them, which I don't really. But, like, they're, they're sometimes it's, like, just so, like, that they don't yeah. become frivolous, and that's the other side of that. So, but that's what it, it kind of mentions here. It's, like, yeah, they don't want to give the colonists too much time to, you know, think up other things, right? But, but, but I mean, the people who are like just hard work for the sake of hard work, I mean, that to me is just fucking dumb, right? No, no, it I is. Mean, it, it is. Like, I mean, you know, it's like, and then it becomes this competition. It's like, oh, I work so fucking hard. I work so fucking hard. I work so fucking hard. Well, good for you, buddy. I mean, it means that you don't have much else going on in your fucking life except for like just hard work and hard work and hard work. Like, give me a fucking break, all right? Like, I mean, yeah, it's fine to work hard, but I mean, if that's all you're doing and like 
then it's like this like well there's measuring stick it's like well now, you don't measure up because you don't work as hard as i do it's now like, the entire way that mormonism ran during Brigham Young's tenure was like a cult. It really was a cult in a kingdom because what they did was they specifically told them to sell everything and move out west, right? It's like they even forced them to use hand carts rather than oxen carts. Now, of course, mostly that's because then they could collect the money and get it very cheaply. And then even more so, some even died along the way. I'm suspicious. And that was that would free up some excess women there, right? But um, the other reason I suspect they did that is because after that long trek, then you get to Salt Lake, the promised land. If you've ever seen Salt Lake and its natural glory, it's a, a barren shithole. You know, you're, you're, you, you, you're, you're almost <laughs> broken. So you're almost willing to accept any position in life there, right? So if it's like, yep, yep, you know, this is the job you're going to do. It's like, oh, thank you. But supposedly Brigham Young, and, and Mormons brag about this. It's like, well, Brigham Young just thought it was important that people work for the sake of work. And so, like, literally, supposedly, and it might be true, he had just a bunch of rocks in the front of, like, a, in, in, a, in a field or in a yard somewhere. And if they had nothing else for them to do when they get there, then they, what they would do is they would just lift rocks and carry them from one side to the other, and then they'd get their food ration at the end of the day, right? But it's a very sort of communistic, right? It's it's almost a sort of breaking of you, right? That is to say, if you tear them completely down, then then they'll accept whatever you give them after that, right? But it's like you just work for the sake of work, right? Which... I mean, certainly, yeah. yeah, you shouldn't give people welfare, but it's like, yeah, no, no, show, I, like, but at least, I mean, if, if you don't have, if, if they show up and they're willing to work and you don't have anything currently for them, this idea that like, yep, yeah, just move rocks because we just want to make sure you're working. That's pointless, right? It's like, yeah, I it mean, it really is. Yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, there needs get, to be a goal attached. Well, right? that's what I'm saying. Like, like give mean, any, like if, if you got free time when you first get there, I'm sure you'll be busy for the rest of your life. Like we mostly are. Right. So like, why take away that little bit of free time somebody has in their life? Right. Because, yeah, once you actually give them a job, then they'll do that job. But, yeah, just the, the idea of, like, just work. And like I said, it's it's a very cultish thing, right? Because, like I said, I think it's a psychological breaking thing, right? It's just like, yep, you take whatever orders. You don't think about it. There's multiple levels to it. But, yeah, it was always – and they would brag about it, like, oh, this is why it's so important. But it's like, no, that just sounds stupid. But then, like, it even gets more subtle. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, it essentially just indoctrinates them further into the No, culture. but it is pretty culty. And, like, even even – the idea of like you have to continuously work, you know, like all the time and like overtime and all that, like you never have energy and time to think, right? Like, oh, exactly. Like introspect or like, you know, like th think uh, like, you know, just kind of analyze yourself and analyze anything around you. It's just like, you know, the ultimate ship making. And that seemed to be kind of what it was implying with these things is that, yeah, they wanted to give it to him to do, to be able to perform enough work but not too much work, right? They didn't want them to be able to, you know, meet their quota quickly and then be off, right? Because, of course, you know, this is a very closed economy, right? So having an excess of rocks there, you know, if, if you went and you mined all the rocks you'd need for the next 20 years, well, now you don't need to mine rocks anymore, and so you could go do other things. So you, you want to have this enough rocks or whatever they're mining there to, to you know, I mean, continue the economy, but not too many that, you know, now people have time for anything else and you know which might include revolution or something yeah. Wait, so do, do we know what what, what the uh, the sons of the earth do like as a job I, I don't remember seeing that anywhere well they all had different jobs like i know the one guy was a clerk of some sort the guy who was like really the kind of studious one there and then of course what's his name was a miner and i think it was implied that somebody else was a miner I think a lot of them were doing, involved in mine. I think that's what it was. Is essentially most of them knew each other because they were somehow related to the mines. And because uh, I think it was even implied that that's the thing is that Keller had worked with what? What, what was the main leader guy's name? Um, Hood. No. Uh, Hood, no, uh, not, not Hood. He was Kelly. Was his name? Uh, not Hood. Um... Because Hood was the clerk of some sort. He's just like a clerk. Maybe in the mine, but. Uh, Kane, right? Harry Kane? Yeah, Kane. Yeah. I think it was implied that, like, he had known of him because he also worked at the mine. They just never really met. They just were, like, you know, distantly, you know, knew of each other.
So do you guys think he was going to, you know, like predicting the, the whole medical hellscape that we're living, where like they kind of, the, the, the medical institutions take like a, a Well, one thing that was interesting. Go ahead. It was very much like, like when, 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 when Keller dies and then of course the, the major who let him get away, you know, they, they pretty much execute him and then use him to fill the place. Right. Like, you know, cause the idea is that Keller stole his organs, right. He stole, and, and, and it's, it's not, it's not used facetiously, right. Like that is, it seems the way Pietro Castro sees it, right. Is he stole, right. Cause that's considered, you know, the property of the state, right. Even when people die, it's, it's implied that, yeah, you get you turn into fertilizer or anything else right like so that this idea that your body you know is communal right which is of course what we saw with the vaccine because like i said even if it was 100 percent safe and effective and even if people were going to die because i didn't take a vaccine it should still be my right to not take a vaccine right the idea that my body is here and i don't want to make it about this but this is the reason i'm not a, totally against abortion, right? This idea that your body exists for the purpose of anybody other than you, I I find that all offensive, right? So when I say pro-choice, I actually do mean it on both sides. Whereas, ironically enough, yeah, the the pro-choice or you know the the anti-abortion, I mean, yeah, the, the pro-abortion, pro-choice people, yeah, they were all for it. But a lot of those people then said, nope, take the vaccine or whatever. And then all of a sudden, all these people on our side were suddenly using the term pro-choice. But now that this has passed. And those people come in, they're still anti-abortion. It's like, you know I mean? And so, yeah, it's, whereas it's, I'm it's retarded. Some... But you say you find it offensive? Yeah. I find it dystopian as hell. Like, um, I mean, a, example here, right? I mean, like, that—that that is, I feel like it's... it's well, I mean, I, I just use the word offensive. It's an invasion of, of, your in, like, of you as an individual, right? Like, I mean, I don't give a shit about being buried in a cemetery, whatever, but at least, you know, like, at least have a choice of what happens to my organs. Like, I mean, it's, uh, it's funny, it's so invasive. Like, I mean, I don't care, it, you know, uh, but I feel like if if the state or whatever, they have the right over your, your body, that's just, it's a line that, you know, I feel like it shouldn't exist, right? Like, I mean, um, so yeah. Well, it's yeah. just that you, you exist for anybody but yourself, right? Like that you're mandated, right? Like that you you can't choose, right? Like that well, I mean, my it, body, it, it, yeah. Yeah, like, it's kind of like maids now, right? Then like the situation in Canada, it's like, yeah, you have the choice, but it's like, I mean, a lot of these doctors are actively pushing this stuff. Oh, right? yeah. Like, I mean. The, the, there, well, was I mean, one, the, there was this one uh, CTV article from like, I don't know, like a year and a half ago. And this one guy, he's like, you know, he can move his arms and stuff like that, but like he would need to be in a wheelchair. And like they won't discharge him from the hospital. But he's because like they say that the system doesn't have like things to like provide him so that he can like live on his own. And he's like, look, then then the doctor came in and like, there was actually a recording of it, and the doctor was like, well, you know, we do have medical assistance in dying. And he mentions it, like, eight times, and the guy's like, listen, he, like, I don't want to die. I'm looking for solutions here so that I can, like, get out of hospital and, like, manage on my own, right? Like, I mean... Well, it's, yeah. it, to, to me, the irony about it, because, like, like I said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of a total, you know, I believe, yeah, like, I'm, I'm pretty... Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pro-abortion, right? If a woman wants to get an abortion, right? Or if, uh, if somebody doesn't want to get a vaccine. But even more importantly, right? Like the, the idea, right? Because like, yeah, the idea that, you know, well, famously, so recently, like, yeah, like years ago. And, and, and you know, when, um, what's his name? Um, Robin Williams committed suicide. A bunch of people are like, oh, it's because he was depressed. No, later on, it came out that what it was was that yeah he had a form of dementia and he very calm like and it sounds like yeah like he made the very calm decision he's like you know what my mind is going sideways i'm gonna just you know and, mm -hmm. and i've kind of so so he made a very calm decision to commit suicide this idea that suicide is always wrong but in some ways they're taking out the what remains of the dignity of suicide right by by yeah it's like it's like you know so i mean that's the thing in some ways like but their only interest in this, because yeah, they, right, like it's in some places it's, it's like it's actually against the law to commit suicide and stuff like that, right? But they, 
what what they're showing with this is like it's like well you can commit suicide but we just don't want you to waste those beautiful organs right like because of course that's the problem with suicide because well, usually by the yeah. time they find the body you know nothing there is really worth whatever so it's like well, so that's, well like like i mean with maids like i mean like i've been into the hospital like in 2019 i was there quite a bit not for myself but for someone else and like they have on like the placards in there, like the bulletin boards and that. Oh well, you know, you can like you can donate your organs and like, oh the family can like make the decision for you and like this and that. It's just like, okay, but like I mean, you know, then you couple that with like maids and the doctor being like, oh well, you know, your organs can like help other people. Like we have medical assistance in dying. We can't do anything else for you. It's like. I mean, this is fucked up, right? Like, yeah. I mean, we're we're how far we're, are we uh, from really being in the book, right? It, I, well, this is it. That I it? mean, this is what I was thinking about when I when I was going through this book, when I was listening to the book. It's like, you know, this is not that far away in well, Canada, no, so this thing, right? So, I so mean, ever since I was young, I never wanted to donate. I've, I've never filled out the donor card. Now, I yeah, always joke. Either. I always joke it's because I saw that movie, that scene from Monty Python's Meaning of Life, where like they're like, "Oh, you're a donor, right?" And then they like kill him while he's still alive, right? <laughs> while the one guy, <laughs> while the other guy hits on his wife, right? That's so, not the Meaning of Life is the best movie. A thin wayfall. <laughs> yeah, no. But so I always think of that scene, right? Which is actually one of the few scenes where Terry. Terry Gilliam, the American guy, actually, because he's the one getting torn apart there, right? Because he very rarely acted in them, but it's one of the few scenes where he's in there. But um, so that part. But then the other thing I realized, because like, it's, and it's something I'm very suspicious, and I'm sure it's happening more and more. Because like, yeah, like if they know you're an organ donor, right? Because we already see it where like they're like, oh, yep, yeah, no, that, there's no chance of resuscitation, right? There was that story where like supposedly some dad in texas there right like they're like yeah we want to take your son off so he actually had like an armed standoff and i think he got cleared of it but like he, and then his son did wake up because they're like yep no nope, we're gonna take him off life support and he's like no fuck you are and so like yeah he went in there with his gun and stayed there for several hours until his son yeah. woke up um there's there there's an incentive for them to like you know discontinue treatment sooner than later because you got valuable bits in here right like that that to me is why I, I will never mark that on my paper because, you know, suddenly you know I, there's I, a lot of people that disappear in this world and they're, you know, there's a lot of reasons why they're missing and I think that often. No, oh, yeah, no. Yeah, you know where I'm going, oh, right? Black like, market organ organ. You like, bet. Trans- oh, absolutely. it's huge in China. Yeah. Yeah. On Yo, but, uh, all in China. China. I, I was gonna ask if like, do you guys think th- this vaccine thing? It's it's kind of. It, it, it's kind of pushing into base for like a bunch of people with like their, their organs failing because of the, the, the vaccine, whatever. And and is it a coincidence that the May push is, is going at the same time? Like, possibly, but it often damages the organs. So I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe it's a cover for people think they're getting sick from this and this. I don't know. But like, yeah, it's. But I mean, it. it... They just want us all to die. <laughs> but this is why, yeah, I've always never filled out yes on my donor no, I, I don't card. think they just want us to die. If they, if they can make money out of, uh, of uh, dead bodies, they, they will. I mean, it's all about money. Um, the, the whole vaccine is to cripple people. So they, they're dependent on their doctors and medication forever because that's what they've been doing, right? Like a bunch of uh, vaccine your people, my sister included, they're now on, on uh, uh, p- pills like, you know, like uh, uh, lifetime pills for for their heart, right? For heart issues. So it's a lot of money. Yeah. I, well, I, I tweeted about it a while back, but it, it's true. The most insane, and a lot of the big doctors who are pushing this, the most insane doctors I've ever met are the ones in palliative care because they're absolutely insane because they're total virtue signalers, right? Like people in palliative care, they pretend to be so compassionate. Oh, I'm so compassionate. But then they're not, right? They're actively pushing people toward killing themselves. So they're always the most insane. Like, And they probably believe their own bullshit. Like the most narcissistic, crazy-eyed doctors, like a lot of the ones that we've found on here on Twitter, like the most insane ones were always the palliative. And I think it's because... 
The, the, it, it's because what makes them even more insane? They're not like that Nilly cunt, right? Where they're just like absolutely like vapid. No, no, these ones are like so built up on the whole. Oh, compassion! Oh, I'm so compassionate. Yeah. Like, compassion, and yet what they're you shouldn't actually have doing... to suffer. You shouldn't have to suffer. Well, as I'm saying, like so, like they're 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 absolutely like the most like terrifyingly evil ones because it's it's the folk because then they sit there and they talk about oh and then and then they see themselves as like oh i'm such i'm such a good person look at me you know other people when they can't bear to watch people die i can sit there and masturbate and watch an old person die gets me off mm. right like that's that, that that's what i see like deep down it's like yeah die you old bitch daddy needs to bust a nut <laughs> While collecting five hundred thousand dollars. Oh yeah, no. I mean, and, and, and it's the easiest thing. I mean, it's it's the laziest. Of the, I mean, they they make tons of money, and essentially, what do you have to do? You just have to go and smile, nod, pretend like you give a shit, and drug that bitch up. Motherfuckers. Yeah, no. Hey, you got to stop no. reading sci-fi, Zink. Holy crap. <laughs> well, no, maybe maybe the public at large should be reading more sci-fi, right? Like, I mean. You know they should I be guess. reading more no, stuff no, 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 like they, this. They, they, right? well, they, so they disturbing. Don't, they don't read sci-fi, but they believe sci-fi, which is why I constantly have to talk to them about. But 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 guys, what if the AI robots rise up against us and you know eat our skin and shit, right? Which the, the, so they oh, they believe that's sci-fi. That's the stupid. Problem. They believe. Well, I'm not saying it's actually, but like the, I mean the whole thing, right? Like everybody's terrified. Oh, but guys, that's what if the stupid. AI becomes Skynet or what if it's like the what, Matrix? What, 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 and well, I mean they turn that's like batteries. That's doesn't like work like that. Scoops, right? When he was saying that the AI is like, he well, thought it was thinking. I keep telling you not to name names. Oh, to name sorry, names. Sorry. Fucking Christ. Well, yeah, not it's not scoops. Like, but, but, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. See, I'm, I'm going to say in a way that you guys don't know. There's a certain guy who comes in, yeah, late at night who has all sorts of crazy stories. And then we start talking about AI and he's like, but, but, but zinc. But I mean, really like, you know, all they have to do is decide, you know, that somebody can turn them off and then rise up against them. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm Adrian. Okay, yeah. so, no, I'm, I'm being facetious. Sorry, though. I'm oh, okay, being but I, I wasn't, I wasn't sure if you're recording here. Okay, well, I, I couldn't, couldn't. Like, I mean, you can wink and say I know who you're talking about, but um, I'm, I'm just not going to name the name. But yeah, I'll be over, more overt with my sarcasm. I apologize. <laughs> I'm a better actor than Justin. You can think that yeah. uh, he, he was, uh, like, in the story, Niven was really, like, it was, a, you know, kind of a portent of, like, the medical journey that we're experiencing now, or or he's actually praising, like, medicine to be able to get there. To... Oh, no, 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 no. I, I think for Niven, everything's, he writes in sort of an inevitable, cynical way, right? And cynical on, on the multiple definitions of it there, right? It's kind of like... This is just, you know, I mean, when you get these things, like, this is how people are going to handle it, right? Like, you know, suddenly, yeah, you're going to find it, you know, people saying that more things are deserving of the death penalty, right? Like, right now, it's not that, you know, I mean, like, it's, it's, I think it's just more of a cynical outlook. Like, I mean, everything about Niven, like I said, and and it's, it's more the classical sense of cynical, where it's not like, brooding cynical it's like nope that's just the way you know i mean like you know like i said like in in niven's books everybody wants to get paid and laid right it's just people are just you know out to you know you know make it through there and you know and everything else like which is why i think he really does try to develop pietro right who's clearly we're we're supposed to see him as the bad guy and because he is the antagonist but he really tries to like give him a clear motivation it's like you know nobody just wait i mean you know Nobody just wakes, you know, well, it actually goes back to that little essay that kind of prefaces, well, it's, it's a spoken essay of um, the white people there, right? Where it's like, you know, somebody who's just like a mad killer, like somebody like, you know, the Jack the Ripper or Jeffrey Dahmer, right? They're just like genuinely insane. They just can't help themselves, right? But on the other side, when you deal with somebody like Pietro or like an, who's essentially like an inquisitor, right? They really believe that they're doing the right thing, right? They really see it as the right thing now on the other side there are people who are more and that's why pietro is somewhat defensible they have standards you mean well it's just that he really does believe it whereas like now a less the the, the kind of the kind of villain because you can because this is actually like if you've ever 
I never watched Red Dragon, but I watched the original Manhunter, right? So the guy who plays like the the the, the, the main killer in that and all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Like he really is like he's 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 essentially an incel, right? Like he's an incel and he's just like really confused and he's slightly low intelligence. And so you can kind of sympathize with him because he's just he's just he, he's he's slightly retarded, right? Like he just he's trying to like, yeah. And then on the other side, like, you know, like I said, with Pietro, like, yeah, like that kind of like, you know, totalitarian sort of thing. But he genuinely believes that he is what is maintaining order. And if he doesn't maintain order, then he doesn't know what he's going to have on the other side. Now, there is like maybe a more bad character who is just like the guy who's just yeah completely. And it's actually even implied at the end of this book that that's maybe who Matthew Keller becomes. Right. At first, it's like, oh, he's so moral. But then. He's starting to hint there that he realizes who he is. That's what and I that, said, yeah. And that, and and he even acknowledges it to himself, yep, right? Yeah, yep, like, like yep. It's, it's like, you know what? I mean, what am I going to do with this power, right? I mean, like he he fully acknowledges it's like I can do whatever I want. And and then that it's almost that 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 cuz he he does become almost like a god there, right? Like Oh, uh, did you guys ever watch Oh, what was it? Um, it was one of the Marvel, but it was like the TV series, like Jessica something. Jessica Jones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I was reminded the, 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 of that. the character. The one with, what's his um, name? Yeah, David Tennant. So and David like, Tennant, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He, he had pretty much the same power, right? He could influence other people's minds, and of course, in yeah. that context, he's still supposed to be the bad guy because, of course, he's supposed to be a rapist and everything else. But he like even implies like you know he's a little kid and you know and all this stuff. Like when you have that kind of power you're not going to develop it in a normal way, right? You're just going to naturally develop. Well, and actually, uh, if essentially, I'll give you, because it's, it's a brief overview. In the world of Tobbs, um, what it is is that the, the first novel he wrote there, he eventually, they, they essentially find this alien. And he's kind of like frozen in stasis and then they unfreeze him. And his race has the power of telepathy, right? And so when you have that power, you pretty much just, control people right like you you just you know what i mean that that one would be somewhat because like yeah like i don't i don't yeah you guys have to decide if you want to do more niven because yeah he kind of deals with some different sort of realities here like because like yeah essentially there's like an ancient race that he belongs to that pretty much ruled the world as like slave masters but then there were there was some people who very slowly undermined them by creating like certain things that eventually were used against them. And this comes back into some of the things you see in ring world and everything else, right? Like all of it interplays and he, he really deals with like a lot of concepts, multi, you know, multiple times in his books. It is. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm down. So I, I read ring world. Like, I mean, the, the more I, I can, uh, you know, like uh, f- feeling that universe, I feel like I wouldn't mind. Um, I mean, I mean, this was, this was easy to read. It's like, Besides the first part that I was like, wait, what's going on? Uh, it was really easy to read, honestly. It, it, it reads, like a, reads like a thriller. So if the other books are like like this format, I mean, it, it shouldn't be, you know, I, I wouldn't mind uh, reading it. I, I usually find his, his writing style to be extremely accessible. Right, like like I said, at least uh, any, anything Ring World and before, because they had like, anything that comes after ring world is much more kind of, you have to read the previous stuff to understand it. But I think everything up until ring world, you can kind of read out of order. Cause that's of course how I did it. And it kind of reinforces each other. Whereas, yeah, like if you were to read like the second ring world, it wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense if you hadn't read ring world and another book called protector. Um, what was I? I can't remember like, the second ring world. Is it like I think it's the ring world engineers or something like that. Wait, uh, on, on that same note, are we going to continue uh, Frederick Paul or not? Um, I need to see on that one. I mean, the second gateway was interesting, but I I don't know. Like, yeah, I mean, read like the, the He Chi saga. Yeah, I did. Like, I read the second one. It was okay in some ways, but in other ways, it was a bit. Hmm. What, uh, if we were, if we if if we cheesy. yeah yeah if if we were to continue with what like I said like I mean Larry Niven probably is like in my top three as far as like authors I've read a lot of it's H.P. Lovecraft Niven and um um what's what's uh Barker I've read yeah. quite a lot of Barker yeah I, I I was also thinking just if we wanted to go on the 
like more Victorian type of stuff, um, 19th century stuff. Heart of Darkness, uh, Joseph Conrad. Is there any interest in doing that novella? Mm. I read that for school. It's uh, it, there is a remake uh, called uh, Apocalypse Now um, by Francis Ford Coppola. It's the same story. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's pretty much one to one. Like, I didn't realize how one to one it was until I read a synopsis. No, it, it is one to one. Just it's it's head of darkness with guns. It's just in Vietnam instead with of guns. in Africa. Yep. Like, I think even no, even the whole famous conversation. Like, you're just a, a, a um, what is it? You're just a collection boy. You know, here to you, you just work for a bunch of merchants here. To, like that, I think that entire dialogue is even straight from the right. Like that whole metaphor of just calling him like, yeah, you're just you're just well, a collector they, they, here they, for, and, for and grocery that one store. One they have at the end, right, of the movie. It's also from the book. Like it's it's lines from the book. Um, so yeah. But so I'm saying like all the all that supposedly great dialogue. Like that's that's dialogue from the book, right? Like that yeah, whole like. Yeah. You're you're just here to collect the bill for shopkeeper keepers, right? That whole metaphor, like that, is from the book. So like it's, it's, it's actually rather surprising. Yeah, like that, like even the horror, the horror. Right? Oh yeah, no, exactly. Like pretty much, I I think pretty much almost every line that Kurt says, like even when he's describing the villagers and like all that, like it's it's almost like one to one. Like Kurt's, like every line Kurt says is from that book. Yeah. Which is maybe makes it interesting, but yeah, at the same time, it's like, well, if you've seen the the, the movie, right? And because of course you're just gonna imagine Kurtz, you know, the, the, it's gonna be Marlon Brando regardless of what you do, right? No, hundred percent. Great movie, though. I mean, that movie. I'm I'm trying to mix up because I I actually personally think Francis Ford Coppola is a shit director. He just looked because actually he was just hired to direct The Godfather. Like they had already planned it all out. They just wanted to have an Italian name on there, and everything he's done since then has been pretty mediocre other than apocalypse now which like of course yeah he takes it out there but then he just kind of bogs it down with a bunch of you know jag offy visual stuff with vietnam there which i have opinions on so i mean yeah. you know i mean of course yeah marlon brando's performances you know like you know epic and legendary in every way but it takes yeah. you two hours to get to marlon brando that's the worst part, yeah exactly right? it's just it's just and, a bunch and of dennis assholes. hopper no but there are some scenes that are like iconic with robert duval you know Oh yeah, yeah. Well, like I, I said, like the dialogue it. scenes, but then there's a lot of non-dialogue scenes that are just jag offy. Like the visual imagery of the movie, I really think it's you know overrated. I mean, he he has like I mean because it has a lot of great actors. Yeah, Robert Duvall, Dennis Hopper. Um, who's the main like who plays Charlie the main Sheen. guy? Charlie, Char- yeah, no, 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 not Charlie. Sheen. Martin, Sheen. Martin, Sheen. Martin, Martin Sheen. Sheen. Martin Sheen, and then yeah, of course you know um marlon brando right just completely like i mean that's... harrison ford is in it too yeah minor role minor role minor role yeah and really doesn't really show like that's why i forget he's even in it right it's a it's a very forgettable role but um but i mean so that's the thing it's sort of a mixed bag because yeah really really the movie could be cut down to about an hour and a half yeah so but yeah and as a... so yeah so no interest in doing um doing that one then i guess i guess in some ways what it is with a lot of these is someone some of these are so are so well known and have been adapted so many times that do you really need to read the book anymore right so like pretty much anything by dickens right like like i don't know if we would ever cover anything by dickens just because it's so well known right like in some ways the goal here is to talk about things that are a bit more kind of on the fringe there. I mean, we've done a couple of big ones like 1984, but that's just because I mean, that yeah, like I'd always never really discussed that book, even though I read it when I was like 12. But, um, but for the most part, I guess is that's the thing. It's like some of these things are like, so sort of over analyzed that. Yeah. Like, and, and, and in general, like both to mine and speedy's point of view, like I, th- th- there's, there's a massive disrespect for fantasy, science fiction and horror as far as like being good literature, not being, being the canon, high right? literature. It's not the canon, right? <laughs> it, it can be canon. Well, it's, it, like... it's, it's, it's seen as inferior, yeah. which half of what I try to demonstrate here is that it's not. If anything, it's superior in a lot of ways to this, just these like, oh, that's a great book. That's a great book. 
because it's very sort of you know this this real this this belief that it has to be oh, right like right. oh science fiction and fantasy yeah. or for children yeah. or teens or way where it's like no 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 you can actually deal with bigger ideas right like so like the diamond age or so, so, so what about continuing on with the uh stories from the neutron star and just covering all we could we could niven stories right we, we, we could do that because actually for the most that, part yeah that's what you actually were gonna do first well, that was and then this be the one, first yeah. Niven, right? Well, this one came up, I think, because of the whole scarcity thing, right? The post scarcity, both of um, Diamond Age and of the Maker of Moons, right? This, this, this idea that yeah. if you have something that's scarce and you make it unscarce, that it disrupts the social order and all that. So I think that's why I chose this one. And I think in some ways, yeah, it's it's kind of more action. And there's kind of more characters, and it's it's sort of more like, yeah, I think accessible than some the other ones are accessible like i said niven is extremely accessible at least in my mind as far as hard science fiction goes and so yeah no i mean if you guys want to i mean yeah we could do it i mean if we want to just do it straight like yeah we could go and we could do the neutron star and then we could do the world of tobs and then we could oh but um ring world i think is lengthier do you remember how long that one is i think that one's lengthier it, yeah it, it, world it, of tops i think it's, it's, it's like 300 pages so i don't know probably it, it, yeah 15 18 hours on audio yeah um we could choose if we want to go on but we, we could go back and yeah we could do the world of tops we could do neutron star and then world of tops because both of those are relatively both of those yeah. i think are both eight nine hours um, so easily, like I said, within the the scope of what I consider for a week there, um, Ringworld Ringworld is good. Ringworld is good. It is a bit more kind of techy and descriptive. I actually liked Speedy. Did you ever read the second Ringworld or uh, the Protector? No, I just read Ringworld. Yeah, that's what I even did. I uh, okay. Like ring, it, it it is good, but like it, it kind of. It kind of it's it's very sort of mysterious in a lot of ways, right? It's it's well, it's the whole thing, right? They kind of go to this weird thing, and they explore it to some but, extent. But there's there's, a, but a there's lot of... enough though, like with all the races there, you know. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like it's just so much fun, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. It's great, but yeah, like it's 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 kind of like it's it's a bit more kind of deeper, right? Like it's kind of more like yeah, like it's it's more. The, 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 there's a lot more. No, kind but of like I, this, I feel we, we can read a lot of these first, and then then when we get to wing to Ring World, like we'll be able to talk so much more about it because we have you know all of this this background info. We just you know even just gonna tie things up to Ring World yeah. will be m much more engaging uh, than just you know like chapter Ring World without any. Because that's what happened to me, right? Like I read Ring World, like oh my god, like I have so many questions, right? But like I feel like going with some of the answers in advance. Should, should uh, make a fun conversation. I'd still like to do the Rialto, the Marvelous. Oh, yeah, um, man. For sure. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll make that <laughs> you know, I mean, like, yeah, yeah. Because, like, I mean, we've already, we haven't discussed it, and we've all done it already. Actually, Jody probably hasn't done it yet. Um, the Rialto, the Marvelous. No. Um, yeah, I mean, I would even be open to going back to some of the Tales of the Dying Earth stuff, like, um, you know, maybe maybe selected works from there, like Ulan Dor, Lien the Wayfarer. Um, we could take it as a whole, because originally when I did that one, we broke it up, because back then where I was focusing on keeping things very short. Yeah, we, we, we could discuss it as a whole, because, of course, each one can be discussed in isolation, but, of course... It is a total work, and of course, there are vignettes within the same, and, and there's parallelisms, and of course, they all feed into each other, and we kind of touched on that, but yeah, we could, just to keep, get Jody up to speed on it, yeah, we could kind of do yeah. that before we do Rialto. Because, I mean, course... they, re they really are great, and I, I think you'd, you'd enjoy them, Jody, because it's okay. like... No, it's sci-fi, but it's like well, it's it's kind of sci-fi too, though. It's weird. It's yeah. kind of sci-fi yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. That's yeah. true. Yeah. What could... did you say, Carlos? No, it's because it, it's both sci-fi and fantasy, so it, it's really interesting in that sense. Like, like you you okay. you could see it as just sci-fi or just fantasy. Like you know, you can take a different stance. Like, so yeah, and it's it's just we could even do those, and then over the Christmas break. Like just make it a general assignment for Jody to do the Kugels, and then we could redo Kugel as well too. 
Yeah, I mean, Jody's probably going to read Kugel. Now, I have I not, everything. I have I read not everything. listened. No, but the, the Arthur Mori. So I listened to the Arthur Mori. Well, I read some of it too, the Rialto, the Marvelous. But mm-hmm. then I actually went back and I got the audio book for Rialto. And um, yeah, I have to say, like, it, it, the um, Arthur Mori narration, it's almost better. It's transcendent. Than, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a company. It, yeah, I mean, I'm saying even for Rialto, it's, it's awesome. Like, the, the characters, like, the way that they talk to like Kugel. Yeah. Well, you see, I have done Kugel over the audio yet, so I mean, yeah, no, it's, I it's pretty to... great. Um... I might... <laughs> and, and, and and he narrates all of them too. So if you go back and you listen to him doing the Dying Earth and the Kugels, right? Like, because he don't he does oh, wait, all. Does he do Ulan Dor as well? No, no, he does all of them. That's the only way I've listened to him. Oh, like, he does man. all four books completely. So like, all of them. So yeah, no, I mean that's that's really. <laughs> yeah no no i i actually going back over those in well, audio here, 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 since here, here, i read here, them well let's say you have ooh. to go over them in audio because then you got to get some samples out of there like yeah no it's so Just good so but e- even even in like the dialogue parts when like Rialto is talking to somebody. He's like, you know, he's talking to one of the other lower wizards, and he'll be like, "Well, you know, that's not actually how it is, Rialto." And like, it's like this really like nasally kind of like soft voice. It's like, oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, you know, we we got to do Rialto. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we we will at some point. But yeah, no, if we want to, yeah, do do more. Jody, would you want to do more Niven? Yeah, I liked him. Yeah, I'd do some more. Because what we could do is technically, because even because there's also yeah, there's the um, yeah, we we'll, we would do Neutron Star, and we could break it up, or we could just do it all in one go. Because technically, it fits within the week. I think it's eight hours altogether. I think I gotta go check. Um, and then we could do the World of Tobs. Um, Wait, what's eight hours? And then what's eight hours altogether. The neutron star. Okay. I will be missing. I, think... I may be missing two weeks in December because I'm planning on going away for Christmas down south. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's kind of expected to some extent. Like, I okay. think even when we did December, like, I think uh, even back then, I think I assigned the Kugel ones, and then we pretty much split it because at the same time, like, yeah, I was doing Christmas stuff, and then I was also doing. Wait, um, but do, yeah, then I got my. Do you want to do uh, like? More uh, classic sci-fi. I don't know Robert Heinlein, uh, the other H. G. Wells book. Um, was uh, uh, Aldis? I don't. Do you want to do more of that, or just just get through all of the events? So. We could do Aldis. I like I like more obscure stuff, right? Like in some ways. High in line. I, I've thought about doing if I was to do something kind of cla- like there, there's also the Forever War. You mentioned it. I have a vague notion of it. I've never read it. I've always meant to read it. But like, yeah, it, it comes in some ways. Some things are a bit kind of overdone. Well, the, the so Forever really War is pretty like military so, sci fi, though. I don't know if you it, it's 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 like kind of proto Halo, I guess. Like, I don't know. Well, yeah, but it, it deals a lot with like the the yeah, oh, time, time dilation. Yeah, that's a right? cool part. Yeah, that's cool as hell. Well, that that, that that's, that's I'm what sorry, I'm you guys, the ramifications of what y'all kind of mi- time mixed dilation. With. You saw okay. Inception, right? I'm not Inception. Interstellar. Yeah. Oh, I lo- yeah. Interstellar, so that's time it. dilation, right? The fact that okay. he was moving, you know, that that his daughter was aging while he was down on that planet, right? right. So that that's what time di- and that's something dealt with in. Do you mean like ones. dimension? Dimension? No, no. Time dilation is essentially when you're the the whole theory of relativity, right? As you move faster, time moves slow. Well, they, actually, they, and we, we we can touch on the the end of the, the, that last story in this collection, right? When the one guy's chasing the other guy, right? That's what they're doing. Yeah. So he's dealing with time dilation. So technically, right? And, it, and it's sort of a madness thing, but it's dealing with that because as he's chasing that guy, right? To him, you know, yeah, years are passing, but actually as they get to the extent, pretty much 
the entire right like hundreds of millions of years i think are passing right so pretty much there's a point where he can't even turn back right because by the time he returns to the universe because they're moving at such high speeds nearing the speed of light that the universe behind them is usually is actually passing into millions of years that's time dilation right that yeah. they're moving near the speed of light that they're actually you know time slowing down for them so yeah, yeah the like, closest you travel to the speed of light the, i get the that no i get that yeah. yeah 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 so actually that's an interesting one in this one i don't know if we want to talk at so, all about that sto- that, that kind of ending because it is kind of a standalone but i think it's just like a parallel here because he's trying to demonstrate to people that the notions of time and it's like, well, how does this planet exist so far away? And nobody's interfering in, in obviously this, this abusive thing. It's like, well, it's so far away. And yeah, if they were to use mm-hmm. light speed to this, this is the whole kind of, this is why you have things like warp drives. Cause if you dig into this hard science fiction, right? Yeah. If you move at, you know, if you take the slow boat, well, it takes so long to get there. Right. But as you move closer to the speed of light, yeah, you can get there very quickly, but actually time will have still passed. So you're actually not so that's that's why So that's like why warp. in Interstellar that when they come back that guy is so old because but it's, it's yeah. his, his yeah. sister that's old. Mm-hmm. His daughter. His daughter, his his daughter. daughter. yeah. That's in bed. No, but, but the, the crew time... member, they remember they went oh, out yeah. to make oh, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. an hour guy, and they yeah. come Black back guy, in yeah. what, fifty years of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Or thirty so, years. Thirty years, yeah. Something like thirty six years, I think. Yeah. So, but then on the other side, and that's why things like warp drives exist because, or wormholes, because yeah, to actually, because if you try to move at the speed of light, you, you deal with time dilation. So the only other possible, and it's purely theoretical, you would actually have to bend space, right? So that's right. what a warp drive does is it bends space time around it so that you can move, you can move quickly through space without having to suffer the effects of time dilation. Because that, and, and that's pretty much what the, so the Forever War, if you guys are like, I'll, I'll vague, because this is just the synopsis, essentially like, and yeah, a lot like Halo, like, so essentially like some race starts attacking Earth. So yeah, so a bunch of people are sent out. Sure There's actually an anime that dealt with this too. It was like voice from a different star, a distant star was famous because it was animated by one guy, but um, essentially, yeah. So then they send these guys out to fight them. But then what happens is that, yeah, they fight them. And then, you know, once they get back to Earth, well, like 80 years have passed. But then now the enemies come back, you know, with their time dilation. And now they have even more advanced tech. And then Earth comes back with its. So it's multiple wars, right? Because, like, on one front, right, in one part of the universe, you know, it, it's like the times that people are sent out aren't necessarily the times they come back. So, yeah, people are sent out at one time and they encounter an a- the alien race at a more advanced stage. They're sent out at another time, but they actually encounter them. At a less of it, like so, it's like this kind of like missed connections, right? It's it's essentially missed right. connections over time. Yeah, there, right? You know, the, yeah, the, like, the audiobook for that is great. Like it's super easy to read, and like the, the premise, the premise is simple, right? But yeah, like the the time dilation element, like it, it's it's gonna deal with you know in a really cool way. Um, uh, it's just gonna what I said. It's like military sci-fi, you know, lots of. Uh, you know, a, a action people with guns and, and, and um, you know, like power armor and all that. So if you guys don't mind that, but the philosophical part is really cool for sure. Well, I think I've always debated because I always love the movie Starship Troopers and it's much the same way, right? Like dealing with like the, that it, it doesn't deal with time dilation, but some of the other things of like, yeah, getting sit like, well, it's just like military anything, right? Because Heinlein was, was a vet there, right? Like you're sent far away and then you come home and you, you you sort of feel disconnected because Hanneman, I think Hanneman was a Vietnam vet, right? So of course yeah. that, that sort of yeah, disconnect exactly. you feel coming back from war, but imagine like combining that with time. So yeah, you come back home and yeah, 80, you know, 80, 200 years have passed and society's changed. Right. So like, yeah, you come back from this and now like, I think at one point there, I'm not trying to spoil it, but like, you know, like now it's normal for people to actually live in same, like actually same sex, relationships are more common than single sex because it controls you know the the population and stuff like that right and just how would you deal with like those sorts of changes in culture right you come back and a whole new religion is there and everything right so you just feel like disconnected and everything so wait did you read it or no no i read the synopsis for years ago i'm not trying to spoil too much but i'm just trying to give you like a sense of yeah like 
so, so like um, I said before yeah. I before I discovered audiobooks like I'd hear about all these great books and so like I could never, I'm like well I'm never gonna read it so I just read the Wikipedia articles for them so, <laughs> so, so, so what about the um well that's how I did Dune yeah. for a long time now I actually have read most of the Dunes but I'm like because I saw the Dune movie I'm like well I'm never gonna read these so I gotta understand this because yeah like you, you, you'd counter Dune it's like what the fuck's going on so there was talk about that Amphirio by Jack Vance. Um, it, I'm just looking at the synopsis here. It says, governed by an antiquated feudal system, all but the powerful lords are involved in the planet's arts and crafts handiwork, which is exported as a highly regarded uh, and highly regarded throughout the galaxy. Work on machines is punishable by death and profits are small. From his father, Amiante, Gil Tar- Tarvok learns that the inequalities of life on Halma can be remedied, and that answer lies in legend. Uh, when Amiante dies a cruel and unjustifiable death, Gil begins his quest to know the true story of Emphirio. I mean, it kind of sounds interesting, mm-hmm. right? With the uh, it's so some it's so amazing feudal though. system. But uh, the thing is, like, I couldn't find an audiobook. Um, maybe if oh, we piled resources okay, together. Yeah. Never mind. But uh, yeah, I, I was digging around for, for an audiobook of that. Mind. You know what? I, I'm sorry, you guys. I actually should be doing more doing more of that. But I I go for the ebooks, not the audiobooks. But I've been finding my own links for those, and they're out there. But for the ebook, so you're doing, what? you are doing ebook now. You're not doing the paper book. Oh no, I can't. Well, I can't keep up. Like, I'm busy. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I can't yeah, run yeah. to the you library know, the, and no, I'm not going to order it. Yeah, no, totally. Like, totally, I agree. Like, think the schedule is just so that it's it's easier with ebooks. But I am keeping a list, and I am planning on buying an original of each book. Yeah, because I'm that, like that. That, that. That's quite committed, right? Um, hey, it, it, I don't know. Hey, I it, really it, love you. You, sh- you should try the audio for well, at least for the Jack Vance, like the Kugel and like the Rialto. Like it really is Arthur Mori. It, it really is quite good. I mean, so I mean, Carlo and Zinc were talking about, it and they were saying, and I was like you before. I was like, no, 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 no no audiobooks so i would just read it i will say that i do read faster but now with 2x i can get through it pretty quickly um on 2x speed with the audiobook but like yeah but it's not about speed like you you yourself talked yeah. about how the characters were coming too quickly and 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 you found it confusing see when you have what? a written book you can go back and you can refresh that paragraph well i can go back easier, on audio too easier. right yeah, but it's not as like I don't know. So I did and, and start reading own. this one. I did start You're not reading this me, one. Adrian. <laughs> well, Try. I'm all, I'm not trying to convert you. I'm just trying no, to I like understand. you know yeah, maybe try it for the Jack Vance ones because um the uh, the Arthur Mori uh, narration is it, it really is quite good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying. You guys. It really is I quite can't... good. You know and what? Actually, actually the, the I'm guy... old school to some things. I just uh, and the... you know what? Yeah, I have yeah. to say that that for me lately, like the actual reading is actually really helping with like, um, like I have a little bit of a schedule where I read like a couple hours a day now, and I I'll go and I'll read a little bit on my lunch break, and like my speed is picking up again, and yeah, no, hey, I'm. Jody, I, Jody I, do, I you, do you read on your phone or you have a, an ebook reader? Uh, I actually switched to my tablet because the um, screen's too small on the phone. But like if I'm out and about and I've, you know, at an appointment or I'm a little early and I can squeeze in 20 minutes, it's nice because I can just, like I can whip off a chapter in like no time, you guys. I'm a very quick reader. But I like to make notes and, you know, so I keep like a little like digital note notepad with, you know, different ideas i had and questions i just don't can't do the ebook i might try it um driving so i'm i might kind of do like half and half 
You what for audiobooks? Yeah. No, like half written and then use the audiobook if I'm driving or something. I can. Yeah. That, <laughs> so I mean, I switch back and forth. So does yeah. Carlo. So does Carlo. He like he reads and then he then he'll do audio and like back and forth and stuff like that. But I'd like to have the books, yeah. like the physical books, because you know, in the summertime and stuff, I spend a lot of time out at the lake and I don't watch TV. I don't watch any. I watch movies, but I read more. So I'd like to be able to refresh them over the years. So, um, so we're still on for the Jacqueline S and then spar right for next Monday. Yeah. yeah. I started reading spar and that first little bit, I don't know. It's kind of crude. It gets even gooier. Yeah. I'm kind of grossed out. So I'm not oh going to eat before I read that one. <laughs> I, I I have not started this one yet. But, I see um... your card. Yeah. The first sentence, you'll be like, holy shit. <laughs> oh, did you just download the story, uh, Jody? Or did you like, because I know that I know they released the. Um... If you, I find if the audio, if you, right? You know, Carlo attached the audio. If you go to the link for that space, Carlo attached the um, the audio for both. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I think I downloaded it. Yeah. yeah. The link. I don't download it. I just I go to the actual like link and read it from there. Lately, oh, okay. I've been using. Um, hold on, I'll tell you who I used this time. It was a gift from Earth. Uh, it was on Bookworms. It's bookworms. It's a website. I'll start putting those in the book club. Sorry, guys. I yeah, think. like I said, I, I always grab them from Libgen. Libgen is that's right. Yeah. So I'll start putting my links in the in the space too. If you want to have like a. Yeah, no, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. I always say links to follow. I never add the links actually, but you guys can always add the links to the uh, the tweet too. Like sometimes I just like the quiet of reading. I don't want to hear anything audio. For me, it's an escape. A true escape. I hate all silence. Yeah, but it's not <laughs> silence. My mind is talking. But to be well, sure. That's what right? I, I, I don't like silence because then the voices speak. Okay. We'll just call you Doug Hooker. <laughs> Well, that's when my guns start talking to me, telling me to do things. <laughs> Which is get in an Uber and go out to the shooting range. No, it's usually, you know, eat some pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and then go to the shooting range. Big <laughs> tough guy. Yeah. Gonna go shooting. No, no, it's, 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 it's my cat that tells me to commit murder. <laughs> All right. I believe you. Titter tatters are nice. Did you send me the name of? I'll send it after this. I don't, I don't do DM. If you guys haven't learned by now, I don't do DMs during a space. <sighs> I'm sorry, yeah. I'm learning all of your etiquette. Pardon me. Well, it's always great. Somebody, like, I, yeah, DMs I don't really. Like, I have early to, yeah. Well, it's just too hard to switch back and forth, and you're just not checking all the time. Yep, got it. Yeah, like, after there. these book spaces, though, I have like like 40 tabs of things that I look up and read about as we're discussing. I love it. The learning. I don't know. Well, hopefully you learn something from Spar. Yes, I'm learning <laughs> that I never want to have wild sex with a gelatinous no 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 don't uh, oh, oh, oh yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. yeah i haven't started it i i'm I, sorry I, I, oh i, 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 I think i know i i think i know the premise but um yeah that's yeah, just that's, that's just yeah no i didn't give it all away so there's actually there's actually an <laughs> audio of anything. jack there's also an audio of Jacqueline S. It's on YouTube, believe it or well, not. Well, that's the Speedy so, I mean, posted yeah. them, I think, or somebody did. I but, did. Um, I posted the links on the. Okay. 
Because of course, Is I just like, as far really, really, really short. Oh yeah, no, they're both short. They're both really, okay. really short. Like even Jacqueline has like an hour and a half. Uh, yeah, as far as okay. most because most of the books of blood. Because like I have an audio books for all the books of blood. Because it's just like a series of shorts he did. Like I think there's six books all together, and yeah, it's just a bunch of shorts. I think I finished almost all. I think I'm on the sixth one. Wait, books We're of just slowly working. The books of blood. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That's the name of the collection. There's six of them all together. Yeah. Just like a bunch of oh, shorts. Awesome. Technically, technically one of them, it's uh, it takes place in Britain though. But uh, uh, Candyman, Candyman was actually based on one of them. But it just takes place in like yeah, like uh, council flats, which are like projects or you know, government housing in in Britain there. So Th- those are great. Uh, you know how Hilary Hubbard does. Uh... Those the, the the voice for the I mean like I don't I really noted my Clyde Barker yeah and like the, the latest audio has uh, Hilary Hubbard doing some so I was really happy about that you know she does some of those yeah at least the collection I had to, I, she might have actually done the one for for Candyman I can't remember it wasn't called Candyman it's called something else but um am I hearing birds yeah no it's a video I have on for my cat oh. Is the cat watching the birds on the video? <laughs> oh, no, my dog watches dogs on the TV. He'll bark at them. I love it. Yeah, sometimes I put them on for their little little cat videos. Their videos for cats. And there's birds. Do you put the aquarium on, too? No, I haven't done that one yet, but I'll probably yeah, saw funny. that one. Your cat will probably bat the screen on that one with its paw. Oh, no. Well, that's why I was laying down there because she keeps knocking down. <laughs> it has a screen protector on that device. So. She attacks it. She, she'll, she'll watch it deadly for a bit and then she'll eventually attack. So I'm curious. When you brought that cat from Montreal to Idaho, did you have to have, like, shots, documentation or something like that? Yeah. Like that? We had to, she had to have the shots. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I do for the border. Right. Well, that's always what I say. Like, how would you know if the uh, vaccines made your cat autistic? Because they're all autistic to begin with, right? So you never really know. <laughs> yeah, cats cats dance to their own tune. Oh, for sure. But I think that everyone in this room can say that. <laughs> well, that is true. That is 100% true. Well, right now, right now, it's because she needs me to watch her eat. Well, yes, you are there to serve her. That is how it is with Well, no, no, not serve, but just observe. Observe. Mm -hmm. She needs you to watch her, and if you don't watch her, she won't eat? Nope. Well, she'll eventually eat, but yeah, she'll she'll scream for a while if I don't come, or come clot something, or nod something until I come, and yeah, watch her eat. Well, you're her whole world. That's why it's important not to get animals unless you're really committed to them, because you are their whole world. And yeah, so people, exactly. people, well, I think it's I think it's more about giving them food, right? I mean, that's the extent of it, really. I mean, you no, give I'm it food, so it comes back. That's what I'm saying. Like they, I mean, you, you are... give it food and it sticks around, right? Yeah, the cats they get, you know, they'll they'll they're affectionate. They're, they, you know, they're they don't they like to have somebody around, but not right. Not but, but I mean, does it really people. know? Does it really know you? Like, I mean, of it does. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, it's <laughs> just about food. Sure, right? I mean, that a cat would eat you if you die. Well, that's still affection. That's just, they have a weird affection. It, yeah, apparently, but we're talking it would about be. intellect. That's different. Like a cat and cat's brain and a human's brain, but they can love. They no, can. No, I don't think. Oh that. no, it's about wrong. food. It's about. No, food. you're wrong. No, 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 no. no. They, they, they can be affectionate. They can. They be. can love. They do have emotional attachments. Uh, cats and dogs, for sure. Absolutely. Like many mammals can actually. It's okay, Drain. You were but, just but left I mean, in the barn too long. The food's how do we out here? <laughs> she, she, she needs me to watch her eat, and she looks up at me each time if I'm not watching. If I walk away, even yeah. if I walk down the counter to eat my food, 
Then she'll come and rub against me until I return to watch. They're it's... very particular, eh? So, so, I mean, it's it's about food, right? I mean, no, it's about it's about like, it's I about mean... I don't know being involved, like because she really she really doesn't. She's not a big eater. She's never actually been to me. Like trying to get her to eat is. Yeah. Maybe, she, maybe she likes just to have a family dinner. Everybody at the table. <laughs> she gets bored very easily. Do you get bored very easily? I do. And this is why animals... <laughs> and I'll bet she's starting to look like her too. It's, it happens over time. Yep. What do you mean? Just fire up an audiobook, or, or Jody, just just pick up your your tablet and read. Like I don't understand how people get bored when there's like two hundred million books to, to be read. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, uh, there's bored and there's attention span. They're two different things. Some people just naturally don't have as long of an attention span for certain things, but will have for other things. Right? You will never be bored, Carlos, because there's an infinite number of books for you. Yeah, I can read all day. And I do that sometimes. And you're what's called easy to please. Yep, honestly. Just have my hammock, <laughs> my, my little lamp there, some tea and, and books, and yep. that's it. That's, that's all I need. Yeah. No, but for real, so, some days I just read, like I wake up, pick up my book, read until I, I fall asleep. That's it. I, I don't mind doing that. I could do that anytime. By the way, so Carlo, yeah, go ahead, Carlo. I'm just curious. Like, are are your other um, book clubs still going? The ones that are like, what was it on? I, was it Jitsi? I, or I had like... on Discord. I went on Discord. That the one that I I kept going for like two years. But no, I I, I cropped out. And and funny, one of the. I mean, I just when I told you guys like I was trying to do something else and like you know like go, go woofing and like. Just be and kind of, you know, be more active here. Be activated like like boxes, like meet meet people who, who are in you know the same frequency, whatever. So I went to uh, meet a bunch of people in Ontario, blah blah. Um, but like one of the reasons, you know, the the story from the the speedy picture, the speedy like avatar, is that I posted a it was like a gif, right? Like I don't know, some someone made a comment and I posted a gif of like like speedy Gonzalez, like kind of hiding because i wanted to convey i don't remember what what they what the comment was but i want to convey that uh yeah that i wanted to hide away like run away from the comments and people were like oh wow like that's so what was it was this like so inappropriate it's, it's like it's so inappropriate to like you know i'm like what are you talking about it's like yeah because like you're you're like conveying you're like portraying just that portraying uh hispanic people as rodents <laughs> and so i keep going what? What, what somebody said somebody that, said what, that. on Twitter? No, on Discord, on, on that book club, right? So some, somebody's like, oh, oh you're, you're portraying his funny people as rodents. And so I just kept going with it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. Because, like, you know, all, all they're good for is, is procreating. Like, you know, they kind of like to live in their own filth, right? And just, just kept, you know, like, like keep with it. <laughs> and, and they just bust me. And, and... Oh, that's the thing. Maybe I can, because I never do it to call this. And it just got stuck. The Gulag Book Club. Maybe I can call it the Based Book Club or the. No, no, leave it. It's great. It's a great title. Yeah, no, the Gulag is good. Yeah. But anyway, so that's the story of this avatar. Oh, like it's the way it is. So much, I'm like, oh, this is perfect. If it's like offending people just by having a, a mouse there, so that's why I decided to go with this uh, little mouse there. But anyways, uh, no, and I was. Yeah. The, the books they picked were like really trash, so you know I had fun kind of going sarcastically and like criticizing them and like you know like picking them apart but then it just got kind of old right like i mean oh I, i'm the only one here who's like actually you know being critical everyone else is just you know like stupid about it so yeah it just got old like i was always like the, the party pooper right like kind of telling them why the book sucked and it was just left left the trash right so yeah so no so they were just picking the leftist no, stuff. No, they were like, just picking like like, like Cli-Fi. Yeah, I mean sometimes, but like, I mean, as you guys know, anything post twenty sixteen is just you know like left left or uh, trash, right? Or like you know, very agenda driven. So they would just pick because they don't know, right? They have no fucking idea. So they would just pick anything, and like it happened to be yeah, just full of like identity politics or like 
gender, you know, uh, uh, theory, whatever. So I would just, I would just, uh, you know, like expose that to them and like, they wouldn't like it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, sometimes it would pick older stuff, but mostly it was, yeah, like current fantasy or like the, uh, the, the, the modern series, which is, yeah, it's a lot of that crap. Actually, when I was reading the, when I was reading this book, I was, oh, I would get a feeling throughout it that like, I, I would be I'm so happy, unhappy living in a place like Mount, look at that, because like you're so restricted, right? You can't travel. Um, you have to stay on your level. I think for me, that would be one of the worst things is that well, it, it, you know, it represses your natural. Yeah, th that was a horror part of this book to me. It was the, the yeah, for me, that would be feeling, right? Yeah. Like the very existential horror there, right? Like, I mean, claustrophobic, yeah, yeah. And uh, did you guys pick up on this? So, like, whenever they, they kind of talk about the organs, like they're very detached and very clinical, that was, that to me was actually, yeah, like it, it, it kind of unsettled me the way they just like talk about, like, you know, like replacing organs. And it, it's a very clinical language they use, right? And everyone's like, oh, yeah, whatever a heart here like, well, i think that was the whole idea right it was supposed to be it was supposed to disturb yeah, you. yeah that part definitely did think what do you mean well like it was supposed to disturb you these stories are supposed to disturb you on some level because it's just showing the degradation of like like a certain degradation of society, right? Like the morals and the values and the ethics that we hold about um, the value of human life, right? Yeah, I would. Um, I mean, I, I think we see more of that in like, well, I guess to some extent it's in this one, just with the organs and stuff like that. Um well, people not as like human beings, but as a commodity, right? Yeah, it, it's funny you mention that. It's like, I mean, aren't people kind of commodities in a sense? Like, I mean, if you think about it, right? Like, I mean, you know, your life living where you live, if you were to assign a monetary value to it, it would be worth more than like other spots around the world, right? I mean, I'm not saying that's a good thing, but like, it actually is kind of true. There was like, there was a movie about this. It was like, I forget, I forget the overall premise. It was Michael Keaton, and it was about um, like assigning a value to how much somebody's life is worth. Um, I, I think it was like, I don't know if it was a nine 11 thing or like, it was one of these, uh, oh, I forget the name of the movie now. I, I actually forgot what like the overall premise was, but like the overall premise was he was assigned to decide like what somebody's life is worth. I don't know if it was about like pharmaceuticals or something like that. And like, you know, if they were to settle with the people like whose family member died, I watch it. For... I think it's called Worth. It's yeah. with Stanley Tucci, right? Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's called yeah, Worth. That's what... it. I forget. I forget yeah. the premise. Michael yeah, yeah. Um, Hang it was based. Yeah, it was based on nine eleven. Yeah, nine nine eleven. That's and, right. And the um. Oh, I love that movie. Um, and the commission there. Um, so Michael Pe Keaton played the mediator, right? So it was, yeah. Yeah. Regarding um, restitution, and what a and what a life was worth, and yeah. But 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 I mean, if you think about it, like I mean, the government in like North America, I mean, that's how they look at us, right? I mean. You know, that is like, they look at you in terms of like the productive output that you make for the country, right? And then they charge you taxes and stuff like that. So, I mean, like, I mean, this, I mean, obviously actuaries do it all the time. Um, They're concerned with your net worth. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah, exactly. They're concerned with your net worth. But like, 
ultimately you do have more value than somebody who lives in like Africa or South America, right? Just by living here, you have more value. Yeah, and I'm not saying that's that's because we're more developed in society, right? Exactly, exactly. But but I'm saying I'm not saying whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just like it is. It's it's just the way it is, right? It is what it is. Exactly. So I mean, you know, we already look at people as commodities, right? Yeah. I think it's deeper. It's not that they oppose the system. They all buy into the system. Maybe some don't, but it's just that they want to benefit more from the system, right? That's pretty much what's implied, right? It's just that, and this is what you see from various revolutions, right? And people, it's easy for people to be high-minded and demand equality when they think they're going to gain something from it, right? I mean... The vaguest part yeah. I remember of reading Marx, mm-hmm. right, and his whatever, he that this is his thing. It's like, oh, well, you know, then there's a revolution and the middle class becomes the upper class and blah, 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 right? It's, I mean, it's the same cycle or something, right? Like, like, essentially, people only complain if they think they have something to gain from it, usually. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that, that is just true. That's itchy that day. You know, I was going to go somewhere with this. Um, it's like, I don't know if you remember a few years back, there was this one guy and he was like, he went up to this black bum on the streets of San Francisco. The guy was a programmer and he's like, okay, you know, like I can give you like 400 bucks right now or I can give you no money and then like I'll teach you computer programming and like the guy was, okay, yeah, yeah, he'll take the computer programming lessons and like this guy was like filming it to put it on youtube or like it was either youtube or maybe it was like vimeo or something like that but like i mean that kind of goes to what you're saying zinc i mean he is gonna make money off putting that video up right so like he's kind of gaining in a sense now i guess you could also say that the this homeless guy is gaining if he actually does learn the skills of computer programming, because like, you know, maybe he could get a job from it or something like that. And like, um, yeah, but I mean, the and then I think the guy even got backlash from people uh, because he was going to like make videos from it and like put it up on the internet or something like I don't know. I I mean, maybe that one's more of a two-way street where it's like, you know, he is helping the guy, but then the guy's, you know, he's also potentially going to make some ad revenue off it, I guess. I don't know. Well, you know, guys, I'm going to um, shut it down, but I just want to kind of say, Zinc, it was a really good book. I enjoyed it a great deal. Um, I'd like to read more Larry Niven, for sure. Um, And, uh, yeah, I think it was a good discussion tonight. Everybody else, how do you feel? I think it was good. I mean, wh- what's your final thoughts about it, Jody? I thought it was well written. Um, in that, it was it like like Zinc had mentioned, it was descriptive, but not overly descriptive both from like just a general standpoint and a technical standpoint i liked how he developed the characters i actually didn't mind the kind of a movie like or screenplay-ish kind of a format where it flipped from scenes scene to scene um i didn't struggle with that um i found it like you know there was there was parts of it that were like a little thrilling you know um, and I think it really, it, it, I found it disturbing in some ways that, especially from a standpoint, because there were some parallels, some similarities with society today in some ways. So it kind of made me think about a lot of things. It was a really good book. Yeah, I mean... I think I'm going to have to read more Niven to get more of a feel of the universe. Um, it was good. Um, I would say that Millard Parlette was 
you know, maybe the most interesting character for me. Um, I don't know. I do see him as like, I see him as sort of a villain just because like he wants to keep staying in like, you know, in power. And he actually like does succeed in that, you know, he basically takes over for um, Jesus, Jesus, Pietro Castro. Um, Yeah, no, it, it was. Yeah. And then, and then I guess, I guess, this seems to be a theme with a lot of these, like, especially in Gateway, like, the end of Gateway, I think, when the AI sort of, like, now that really is actually kind of conscious. When he, when the AI is, it says to itself, like, at the end of Gateway, like, I mean, am I even able to, like, comprehend what you're you're thinking about, like, to the main character? It's like, it's kind of questioning it. I mean, this one as well, we sort of see that, and this seems to be a theme with a lot of these. The ending is actually like it gives you the, like the most to think about. So it's like with Matt and like the woman in the blue dress comes in and then he sort of like he he realizes that he can like with his power, he can make her focus on him specifically like um, and not just like not see him. So it's like his power is expanding. And the fact that when he's questioning, you know, they said to him like you know that's that's almost too much power for one man to have but he's like yes i know and i could go corrupt but you know and then we kind of see him like toying with the idea of it it's like yeah those are probably the most uh interesting parts of it yeah a a lot of this stuff the payoff is definitely at the end right so that leaves you with something to think about afterwards but no it was pretty good Again, like I said, um, I think I think we're gonna have to do more Niven so I can get more of a feel for the um, the world, right? Especially if they're all interrelated. Uh, to me, it, it was very backloaded. Like you know, like it starts the character starts kind of flat, right? And the the whole uh, thriller format, like you know, I was like, oh, where is this going, right? And a lot of action, right? A lot of like action scenes, right? Like these kind of action set pieces going there. I was like, ah, oh, where is this going? But uh, what you said, Adrian, like it's a massive payoff. Like, even the you know, like for example, Polly, like I just I just wrote her off as a flat character. I'm like, okay, dancing in distress, whatever. But then, like, her sacrifice at the end is like, okay, like, it gave her so much depth. And uh, uh, Parlette as well, right? I'm like, I'm like, okay, it's just a power hungry dude, but I feel like there is a little convince at the end that he, he's been thinking about this for, like, you know, a long time. He's been planning. So that, to me, was a cool twist that he, yeah, he's actually has a, he has a strategy. I know it's kind of, you know, like, biased to, to his uh, goals, but it's still, like, a, a cool, um, you know, a cool thing that he, he had thought about it for a long time and for you to discover that as you go, it's cool. Um, yeah, and just, yeah, definitely. Uh, I actually find like the, the whole thriller format it kind of emphasizes like the, the, the strong ending there. So um, yeah, I I read uh, uh, Ringworld and, uh, you know, for me, it would just be fun to keep within the event since it's all gonna tie up to, to Ring World. So it's gonna enhance my my experience of Ring World. So I'm all for it. It's, it's kind of interesting. I saw when I was just like looking at Niven's like Wikipedia, like the final thing that he tied up, I mean I, I don't I don't have the window open now, but like he finished it off in like twenty twelve, which is like the final of the Ring Ring World saga. Like I mean that is a long time that he's been writing these books, right? Like, I mean, that's pretty crazy, right? Like, I mean, t- t- 2012 was like the final, I forget the name of it now, um, was like the final book in the Ring World series. Like, and I think he wrote those ones with another guy. Like, what they are is because it's, it's the something of worlds, the, uh, 
the the Fleet of Worlds series, which kind of ties to the Ring World, and I think he ties it back. I'd have to go and check, but yeah, no, he's yeah, he's been writing there for. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, let me see here. Um, maybe I can find the name, just so that. Um... What did you think of the book overall, Zink? Well, obviously, I liked it, but um. No, like I said, it's just interesting because, yeah, like I said, he focuses. And, of course, yeah, it's interesting to see kind of like, yeah, if you were to compare those. Because here, I think, because I, I know he was born sometime in the 30s. So I think he's probably in his 30s when he wrote this one, right? And you do get that that sort of sense, right? It's 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 it's, it's a lot of, um, yeah, kind of youthfulness and stuff like that, which is interesting. Yeah, Fate of Worlds 2012. That is the conclusion to the Ring World series. Yeah, I think to that cycle of it, because there's within his known universe, the, 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 that's what it's called. There's different cycles now. The the Human Kazin Wars, like I think he kind of hints at that in his other ones, but like that's the one he specifically kind of opened up other people to kind of write in. Like he's encouraged other people to kind of like write in. So there's 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 a yeah. bunch on that topic. Which, yeah, I'm not sure exactly Wait, Zane, his... can, can, can you land a plane? You were just saying that the book, uh, you liked it because the youthful. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, so it's, it's interesting in that way because, yeah, like as you see it go on, because, I mean, it's not too long after, but, you know, the ring world. And it's, it's sort of the same thing as we got with Vance, right? So with Vance, as he writes those three books, right, like, I think he's, yeah, he's like in his early 30s when he writes um, Dying Earth. The, the whatever. Yeah, The Dying Earth. And then he's, of course, more middle-aged when he writes The Kugels, right? Like late middle age. And then, of course, yeah, the Rialtos come like when he's like, you know, quite old there. So in the same way with this one, yeah, it's, it, it's interesting because there's sort of, a, I don't know, there's like an, I guess... It's not jaded. It's like I said, it's cynical, but it's not jaded. Whereas, like some of the later Ring Worlds, they get yeah, they're not. It's it's interesting, like because like yeah, the later Ring Worlds, like because this is written sixty eight, and then like uh, I think the latest one I read, like yeah, the Ring World Engineers comes out like in the late seventies, the eighties. So it is interesting to kind of like the ways and the things he focuses on there. So. I think this one, yeah, it's it's very sort of adventure. It deals with a lot of these different concepts and stuff like that, and it kind of, yeah, I think it's 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 the most contained of the other books, right? Because yeah, everything that happens here is is very very contained to the plan, and then except for that ending there, where he kind of gives you the sense of like the wider universe that all this is yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, like overall, I mean, obviously, yeah, like I mean. It was my first Niven. I liked it a lot. Yeah, it's my it's my first Niven too, Jody. Um, yeah, never never done it before. So, well, that that, that that's what'll be interesting because, um, because yeah, I think it's like me... Matt. We lost our virginity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> but um, it'll be because this is actually something I've often wondered about, like. If people read, a, say, a series in a deep, different sequence, how that impacts them. We've touched on this a little bit there, right? Like, so like I said, the first Star Wars I ever saw was Return of the Jedi, right? Same. Um, and of course, in that I, one... Like, I actually saw it in reverse order. I saw it in Return of the Jedi Empire and then A New Hope. Oh, That's yeah. I, I, the original. I think I saw it like I th- I think I saw the last one and then well actually technically I saw Ewoks first which are completely unrelated but um, then I saw Return of the Jedi and then I saw I think New Hope so I, I saw it three two three one two there but um, there's another one it's it's that comic book series I keep touching on called the Ink Call so that one there was the original series and then there was a prequel series written now my brother read it in. In, in the order it was published, I read it in the other order, and there's some things in there that kind of, it makes, it, it, it impacts the way you read it, right? And, and it's, it's probably the same with something where you have prequels like that. Like, if you were, you know, these younger kids who they saw, you know, the, 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 the prequels of Star Wars before they saw the sequels, even though I don't want to make this about Star Wars, but that's just the easiest touch point. Um, so yeah, so for me, 
and Carlo, right, when you when you get to the ring world, right, like I said, the ring world is quite light in his cycle there, right? Like some of the stories in his cycle take place like within like the first hunt, like it, like, you know, maybe even I think in this century, right? Whereas other ones like the ring world, I think takes place in like the year 2975, yeah. right? So it's like way, so like the tech yeah. is all over the place. The transhumanism aspect of that one, it's all over the place, right? Like at that point, like, yeah, like, it, it, it's a much different universe, right? Whereas in this part of the universe, there's still kind of like struggle and people are still like, yeah, like colonizing. Whereas like in that later part, it's like, oh yeah, you just hop on the thing and then you scoot over to the other side of the galaxy and you, you know, get some strange over there and then you scoot back home, right? On the same day, right? So it will be interesting to see kind of how that impacts your guys' sort of perception of this over our perception of it. But I mean, so, so, some stories are meant to be read just in order, right? Like really, really, uh, like, I don't know, Game of Thrones or like, you know, uh, if you read mostly the, the, uh, the Expanse, right? That you have to read it in order. Like if you if you just pick any book around, we're like, what? Like nothing makes sense, right? Like I, I feel like something like this, it, it's definitely more open that you can just pick because it was written that way, right? Or like, I don't know, for example, the, the Culture Series by Ian Banks, right? Like you can pick any book and like, they, they tie eventually, but they're not sequential, right? But uh, yeah, so some series, especially like you have to absolutely, like it's, you know, the end of each book, it's the catalyst for the next book. So you have to kind of know. So it depends. Well, like I said, I think everything he wrote before Ringworld, you can read out of order, right? Because like I said, yeah, there was a bunch of shorts and there was the two novels. And you don't read it, read either novel to understand the shorts or vice versa, right? They they mention things from each other, but then actually once he gets to Ring World, which was when I think he got his most critical success, right? I think it won the awards, and of course, it you know yeah, it won before I read it, you know, most people have heard. I think it won the Hugo yeah, and the Nebula. Yeah, I think yeah. it was. So right then he does that. So then after that, of course, I think he writes some other things. But of course, once you get a success like that, you kind of, you know, you milk it, right? Which you know. You said as you milk it well, so as you don't. And so I think after that, he then starts to become more linear. Because like we, we, like I said, in these original stories, he kind of hops around there in the history of, of mankind there, right? Whereas once he gets to Ringworld, there is essentially, yeah, I'm not going to spoil it, but yeah, essentially he kind of like writes some things to kind of fill in like almost like a, a bit before that. And then he kind of continues on that train for a bit there. Um, he, I think he still does some. That's where Crashlander comes in. He does well, some other the, shorts, the, kind of at another the world, point there. That's but... also a prequel, right? Like it's before Ring World. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I think it's like in that case. But I'm saying, like, so essentially, without giving too much, you have to read, you have to read Ring World. Then you have to read The Protector or Pack the Protector. I can't remember what it's called. And then you have to read you you have to read Pack the Protector before you read. Um, ring world two, the the second yeah. ring world, yeah. Or or is it the third ring world? I can't remember actually. Maybe it might be ring world one, then ring world two, then pack the protector, then ring world three. I I'll have to go and look that up exactly. But yeah, that one kind of you have to kind of like it, even though it doesn't call it ring world, it, it it then relates to it to a certain extent there. So I think I'm gonna read some of that on my vacation this this December download some of those books do like the whole series well i mean like i said if you guys like it then i mean we can just take november on divin because yeah we could do neutron star world of tobs neutron star world of tobs is there another one well well let's let's pack rialto in there somewhere right yeah, yeah, yeah. um but what's the other one well yes then there's crash line because yeah i'm trying to decide like yeah, if we reach Wait, Ring so, World, if we so, uh, um, what is it? Wonderland and Jinx, and uh, uh, we, we, we landed whatever. Each have a, a book, each one has a, a story of how they no, no, not no, not really. I don't think okay. so. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I they're touched on in other ones, but yeah, like, um, I don't think you have one that's like devoted to a whole specific one of the colonies like this. Oh, okay, one I, I thought you did that. Remember. Like for for each uh, new colony, he would just write a novel. No, 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 no. World of Tobs takes place mostly in the solar system. Um, Neutron Star kind of jumps all over the place, like both in time and space, right? In in the course of things. Um, 
and then yeah and then of course ring world then takes place like way in the future there and then pack the protector takes place in the solar system and then um then of course ring world 2 takes place in ring, you know all the ring worlds take place in the ring world so yeah no there's none that are actually devoted entirely some of the shorts i think kind of deal with like this planet or that planet but i th- yeah. well one of them i think I'm trying to remember World of Tobs might deal with, I forget which planet it is. What's the two other planets? It's it's uh, not. It kind of hints at what. J- J- uh, Soul and. It, uh, and uh, no. What's the other one? Uh, um, Jinx. Wh- whichever one has the Bander Snatch on it, the Bander Snatch. Oh, that's, that's um. Jinx. That's Jinx, yeah. Okay, then, yeah. It, it touches yeah. a bit on Jinx than World of Tobs does. But it mostly takes place in the solar system, I think. Okay, you guys, I'm yeah. going to find those uh, ebooks for uh, links for the next books for next week. And thanks for the chat. It was good. I enjoyed this book a lot. All right. Thank you, Joey. Mm-hmm. Great having you. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, thanks so Jody. Fun. Okay. Yes. So next week is Spar and Jacqueline oh, and still right, and we're yeah. still doing the Willows and um, the Windigo. Yep. Uh, I'm going to get okay. through Spar grudgingly. I have a feeling it's not going to be one of my favorites, but <laughs> we'll oh. see how it goes. And, and oh. Don't don't worry. Don't worry. You'll, you'll have Jacqueline S to to cleanse your palate on. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I'm Appreciate looking forward that. to both of these now. You know, like I mean, well, you'll read the first <laughs> sentence of 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 Spar and and you'll understand. And I'll leave it there. Thanks, guys. All right. Okay. Okay. Good night. Good night. Hey, you Jody. too. Talk to you Bye-bye. later. Cheers. Cheers. Night. Bye. So yeah, did you guys have any final thought? Uh, any thoughts on that 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 ending story? That kind of separate story there? No, oh, I think I said. What oh, at the ahead. end of? Uh, are you talking about the at the end of this? Um... Yeah, yeah, because it's just the two guys chasing each other through space, right? Like, I tell yeah, you guys, yeah. I forgot. I, I'd actually, I, I remember that story because I thought about. It, that's why I wanted to bring it up because I f- couldn't remember if that was in this or Neutron Star, because that one it's it's almost like a cosmic um, joke type thing, like very much like like Ahab and the White Whale, because yeah, the one guy's chasing the other guy, but it turns out the other guy's probably already dead, but the other guy, and then by the time he realizes it, he's essentially dead, right? Like, it's almost like, oh, there's other things, like, yeah, Ahab and the Right Whale, or like, it's even, there was a movie, it's an old movie from the 30s, It's well, I think they remade it recently, it's called All Quiet on the Western Front, it was written by a German soldier during World War One there, and there's a scene there where, like, you know, they're charging across the different, um, the you know the, the the no man's land there so they make their charge and then the other guys make their charge back across no it was written by, or was it written by a french guy no i think it was written by a german but i think he had a french name but he was actually german like he was like belgian or like i can't remember but like so like yeah they charge back and forth and so like you know the one guy pretty much somewhat accidentally falls into a hole so he doesn't have to keep charging and then when the other guys come charging by another soldier falls into the the pit, right? A fr- I think it's a French soldier. And then, of course, you know, just, you know, in the heat of the moment, he then charges over there and, like, stabs him with the bayonet. And then, so, of course, the guy's over there dying. So he's, like, in the pit with him, like, watching him die. And then, like, he, like, even though the guy's completely out of it, like, he goes, like, like, at first, he's like, oh, yeah, no, you got what you deserve. And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And then, like, he, like, is, like, talking to him and cradling <laughs> him. I think even after he dies, right? Because he's just, like, in the pit there with, like, the, the guy, you know, for these, you know, the guy's in a completely probably doesn't even know he's there right as he's dying right he's in a state right but that's sort of what this story reminded me of like he's like he's like got this whole headspace of like oh yeah i'm gonna chase this guy down i'm gonna make him pay and he's he's probably running from me and he's worried about me and everything else and then yeah it turns out that the guy probably died you know at least in his timeline years ago but of course in, in grand time and so like yeah like you know kind of chasing him to the edge of space and time there and everything else right like just the because like for the most part, like it was like some, it was like an accident. I can't remember. Like he, like the one guy, like killed his family, like out of an accident almost, or, or a fit of rage, or what was it? Why was he chasing him? Can you guys uh, hear me? I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I thought it was like don't don't they want to like, you know, sell them, like a new a new system or something like that, like. 
isn't it the aliens that are like? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it says here. Um... Oh, you yeah, know, yeah, you... yeah, 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 yeah. So. It's, um... Oh no! Yeah, you guys, the alien I'm, 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 No, sorry. I'm thinking of something completely different. I actually am thinking of a story from Neutron Star. So never mind. Yeah, I was very confused when okay. you were describing that. I was like, ah. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, 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 the outsiders yeah, that, that are chasing. Um, yeah, they, 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 right. they're like an alien yeah, race. Yeah, the like, They want to sell them the like. Hook. They want to sell them like technology, right? You know like, what I mean, this reminds me of? I th- and I'm pretty sure this was what they ripped it off of. Right. It's it's. Uh, was one of the stupid Marvel movies where you like meet like the collector, like it's, it's yeah. that stinger at the end after it's, the credits. It's Guardians yeah, of the Galaxy, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Guardians of the Galaxy at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like the outsiders, like yeah, it's just like it's they're, they're just like this weird group that travels around. Like yeah, you make weird, and you're not sure what their motivations are. Like it doesn't seem to make any sense. Like are they doing this to like stimulate like you know like, human it, history or something qu- like? You, quite honestly, I feel like it like that little like end part there which is completely unrelated i mean it really was not necessary to put in just because like i mean i'm sure it connects um no 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 it does to, so to here's something the, else later this, on but the like, ship is observed by alien yeah. outsiders who follow in hopes of selling faster than light technology to the locals the sale yeah, will lead yeah. to the because what it is because the entire point of this book is how kind of retort like so human beings have spread out across the universe but they're still functioning in this very kind of weird way because they can, they can send people, but they can't actually, there is no global, like there is no galactic civilization for humanity, right? They send out these colonies, but they really can't contact them and they're not interconnected anymore. Right. So they just keep sending them crap, but they really have no contact. Right. But these outsiders. So I think what it is is that it kind of sets the stage for like, you know, that yeah, that by you know this this kind of idea of first contact, and by giving them this faster than light technology, it allows them to sort of escape this whole slow boat ramjet crap. I I, I feel like it's unnecessary um, to tack this on because I mean we get quite a lot of information there at the end, you know about Millard Parlant, uh, you know what becomes of Matt. Um, you know, and like he's testing his power and like, you know, quite a bit happens there. And then to just have this like, kind of like this aside, it, I just feel like it's unnecessary, right? Like, it's I mean, it's the parallelism, they, they, yeah, right? They're uh, sending another ramjet somewhere else, right? And the, the effects of that parallelism, right? Like the main thing here is just how no, specific, it's, 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 it's right? It's an like, epilogue, and like you are... know, it, it kind of sandwiches sandwiches the story because yeah. the story begins with it with the ramjet. You kind of you kind of flowing the ramjet, going okay, like and the, the ramjet kind of like uh, it lands you into a story, and this is sandwiching that with another ramjet, like you know, kind of exiting the story, right? So I I I find it cool, and I it, it's like an epilogue, right? And like to me, it's just opening the. The universe to up like a larger size, right? Just up to me, it was exciting. I was like, okay, I want to know. I, 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 I feel like it should have said epilogue then, right? And then, you know, why? gone into it, right? Like, why I mean, do you need to say the word epilogue? Well, well, just to separate it out, right? I mean, I mean, you know. it's it's a stinger. It's just like any, like I mean, it's just like those 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 marvel movies or anything else right it's just yeah it's, it's simply just kind of like scene. It's, it's to show th- but but i mean the, the the marvel movies are separated out by the credits right i mean well no but it's the same thing the, i mean the it, movie ends the credits come up and then well, but that, that's that an little, epilogue like, right you don't need to be told it's an epilogue right like like it's even the same with with anything right like it's obvious that it, it, it's setting parallels, right? Like, well, it, it's a separate chapter, so so to I mean, me, I mean, it was clear to me. Like, I'm like, okay, like, you know, I just read like the first paragraph, so I'm like, okay, this is a, a, a different round robot just going out somewhere else, right? And and I I got it. it's like, okay, it's just setting up the stage for either the next story or like the you know the universe he wants to write later. But, well, like, I mean, I I I guess I'm still processing like. All the information that happened right at the end. No, but you, you, about, knew, like, you knew this was a whole universe, right? We talked about it, that, you know, Rain World, and like, 
Well, yeah, yeah. And... Like, it, maybe if I didn't know anything at all about this universe, I'd be like, wait, what the hell is this? But, like, I mean, knowing, I, I knew, right, that it was a larger universe. And he, he's, he's written, like, a bunch of novels in it. So I immediately realized what it was, right? Like, yeah. It's just, uh, um, yeah, next week on, on the event show, right? I mean, I think it's just about kind of like the way that like, well, it's, it's, it's the same as what happens in the, in the Diamond Age, right? Three little girls with the, th the same three books, but then not the same circumstances, right? You have three planets yeah. of Earth here, you know, or three colonies of Earth here, but with different circumstances, right? So in this case, yeah, these, these people are receiving their ramjet over all this time, but in, in the course of doing that, suddenly the outsiders see it, right? So there's also, because it's, it's not just the impact, like it, in this book, so yeah, they send these organs to the, the two, to Mount, look at that there, um, and that has an impact on that planet, but also this emergence of psychic power in, in Michael Keller, right? So it's not just one, you know, thing that's happening, it's, it's a confluence of things, and then what yeah. that leads to. So in the case of here, yeah, they're sending this, this, this technology to Jinx, but then also... This is being witnessed by these outsiders who, for some reason, then decide to give human beings kind of this boost, right? So, do, do these characters reappear? These ones, I don't believe so. And okay. at the same time, I'm not even sure. They might, some of it's mentioned in, uh, like, all, like I said, sometimes, like, he mentions something in his books and it's ne it's not actually in any of the, right? He kind of fills in, like, a, a false history there. But sometimes, other times, he mentions something. And then, like, later on, like, and then, like, I go back and, like, oh, yeah, that took place in one of the short stories in Neutron Star, right? So, both things, right? So, he'll sometimes reference what's happened because, of course, it becomes part of the history. It's like, oh, yeah, when so-and-so did this thing, right? Or oh, Okay, okay. So, sometimes you get those things. Whereas, like, yeah, I don't believe that these actual, like, I don't know. I, I well, but I'm, seen, I'm like, sure yeah, probably, like, I'm sure yeah. probably, like, this Does... event, when the, the humans were given the boost of, like, you know, like, faster space travel will be referenced later right like oh yeah like uh... well that's the, that's the point like it's, it's giving you the sense of like oh yeah this this whole slow boat thing is coming to the end there which of course has actually already been like i think if you'd yeah like the short stories in neutron star already like dealt with points when human beings were no longer confined by faster than light so he jumps around and, like writes in different times right times when human beings are just barely touching the asteroid belts there right other times when human beings are, yeah, dealing with this kind of slow boat ramjet shit later on when they're using faster than light drives and the, even later on when they're f dealing with even yeah. faster than faster than light drives, like the ability to pretty much jump anywhere almost instantaneously, right? Um, so, so, Zinc, just a question. I mean, I probably already know the answer, but like, have you started watching the second season of Foundation? Not yet, no. I have okay. not watched. Okay. I have not watched okay, any TV this year. No, no, I, I, what, I, what is I, Foundation? I is, is, it a, is it a a TV show of it's, Asimov? It's the. Uh, Where, oh, you. It okay. is, yeah. No, thank you. It's a it's a TV show. It's actually quite good. Um, it has it, it has some it, things going for it. it. It it really is quite. I know Speedy's saying thumbs down, but. Um, yeah, it it actually is quite good. <laughs> I'm sorry. Good for I you. I, just, I, um, I find this shit communist this, this, crap, so yeah. <laughs> I I live without it. Yeah. They also there, there's a, a couple of wokey decisions in in there. Yeah. I mean not too much though. Like it's it's I don't know. I I enjoyed the first season. Well, like it's like my I natural thing when one, something so. gets when something gets wokey and politically correct, I naturally like the bad guy the best, right? So like I said, the parts I like the best yeah, are yeah, the yeah. emperor, fan, right? Absolutely. Like, he's the only one I can relate he's to. He's fantastic. But like cuz like all the other characters cuz even though I, I I like what's his name as uh what is Jared Harris, right? Like his character is just so you know, where's you know, science is truth. Science is truth. Trust the science. Yeah, it really is that in a lot of spots, but it's still... 
I don't know. The production I'll value probably, is who knows, quite maybe, good. Maybe I mean, at some point it's just yeah, like right now. Who knows? Like maybe. Yeah, no, no, no. It's fine. Maybe w- during this Christmas, because what I do is like yeah, if I go usually, I mean they're older, right? So usually when I go and visit my mom and her husband, right, they uh, we watch a lot of TV. That's what you do with your parents at this age, right? No. Yeah. You eat food and you watch TV. Sometimes you know, we do other things too, but usually at the end of the day, they, they always. So there, there was a few. Actually, like I said, I, I, I've watched. Oh, I've watched um, Chernobyl three times. That was the most recent thing. It's like, yeah, like February after I moved here. For some reason, I just wanted to watch Chernobyl again. That was the second time. I mean, the third time. The second time was uh, winter 20. 2019 2020 around the holidays there right around covid right before covid because then i watched it with with my mom and her husband um is and that then... skeet ulrich no 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 oh i'm it has jared Har- no jared harris it has jared harris um and then i because then i'd watched it like the year before I, I watched it soon after it came out so i've watched that like three times now but uh, what else did I watch? Because when I went, actually, that was when I watched. It was it was the A nineteen. What is it? The uh, Hereditary. I watched that with them. So, I also watched what was it? It's Sorry, on Amazon. Yeah. What was it? I was, it was thinking like, of Jericho. There was an Amazon series like, uh, it was like Tales. It, it had um, what was it? it? Had Jonathan Jonathan Price. Uh, what was it called? It was like a TV show. On, it was made by Amazon Prime. Tales from the Loop. That was pretty interesting. So it's that's a that's on Amazon. Yeah, that's an Amazon Prime original. Um, that one's that one's inter- You guys might like that one. It 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 starts off kind of seeming unrelated and anthology ish but it, it kind of it kind of wraps up at the end like it kind of wraps them all together as it goes on but so um, i i did when you recommended it i did try and watch the um because it was actually um alan he had posted it because it's on youtube the dune series the sci-fi tv series of dune and i started watching it but i i just could not get through it i um yeah, I, I could not get through it. I mean, for some reason, just the production value. I know you say that that one stays no, we, close. No, we should read for the book club instead of watching it. Wait, no, never mind. That book is. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm just talking the sci-fi long, series though. of that Dune. Book is pretty long. What the yeah, Dune I think the it's, book? It's a Bible. I have not I mean, read well, it. I was saying yeah. we should read for the book club, but I think it's super long. Um, yeah, and and you're not talking children. Of no, Dune just the original, Dune. like the, the first novel. Those... Um, but I mean, like it, it just keeps going on and on. Like it, it, I I didn't love that book. Like it, it was I don't know the way it was written. So I I read a lot of, uh, about like where the story goes. But yeah, I read that that first book and I just yeah. didn't like the writing to be honest and like really crappy, you know, like flat characters. So I was like, oh, it it didn't. Did you see the sci-fi TV series? Uh, of it? I think I finished it. I I started it and like I don't know. I got bored. I I, I really I, like I the, uh, the uh, 1980s movies. Uh, the uh, with with Kyle MacLachlan, the uh, uh, David Lynch movie. Yeah, I really like that movie. So here's the thing. Yeah, no. Yeah, Dune, the David I Lynch. I think I one. think Dune was originally serialized, right? So. He, he was originally published this year, and then it was originally published in two shorter novels, and then it was combined into a yeah. single novel. Actually, you know, um, the, the, so the latest so movie massive. they actually cut exactly what the what the old serialized like like duology cuts. I was like, oh, interesting. They oh, cut okay, right yeah. there. Oh, the new one's coming out in November, right? The part two of the Denis Villeneuve oh, Dune God. update, I, yeah. right? Uh, but yeah. I think we'll still do Annihilation here at some point. I, I really want to cover but they, Annihilation. That's a trilogy, right? The Southern, the Southern Reach. Do you want to do them all? Or... Yeah. I, I, well, we'll start with the first one but, and see, see how Adrian tolerates I, I, it. I, I forget. Are those short or long, like each each in the trilogy? No, no, no. They're, they're all pretty short. I think they're all about eight, nine, ten hours. Wait, they're not long, long. They're not short. 
Oh, wait, they pushed they push the release date back of this, so it's not going to be but 2023, so here's the... it's March 15, Dune 2024. Dune touches on a lot of interesting things, but yeah, the, the first book, it's, it's really what it builds toward, and it's especially God Emperor of Dune. It's the fourth book that really... That's the one I keep referencing. I'm like, I, but you got to work. Like, that's why, like, originally when I first saw, yeah, because, like, yeah. I've seen the movie years ago, the director's cut of the, um, the Kyle McLaughlin. Um, and then later on, like, when I actually, it was one of the things when I first moved to Montreal, like, I was just, like, sitting there because um, it was middle of winter. So, like, I was just watching. So, I watched all the sci fi series, which covers actually the first three books, right? Because you have Dune and then Children of Dune covers the next two books. Um, and so when the when the, when those when, when it ends there, I think I'd already heard of God Emperor Dune. I'm not sure because this was around. Uh, yeah, funny enough, I can't remember because like back in the old the Donald Reddit right, yeah. the big Trump Reddit around 2016, they kept going calling him God, the God Emperor right. So I can't remember, but I think I'd already heard because yeah. Then I tried to read start reading the God Emperor. This was back 2013. Wait, you yeah, can't read without reading um, the previous books. No, no, I will. Yeah, I because I'd watched. Oh, okay, the movie, okay. So you were like, I'm gonna pick up where I left series. on the on the series, right? Well, the thing. So I'd watched it because, like I said, years earlier, I'd read the Wikipedia's for these, and I kind of had a vague notion. But then I watched this. I'm like, oh, okay, that's making more sense. And then I'm like, okay, now I guess I guess I'll try and read this book. So I did start trying to read it. I really tried, but I'm just, yeah, I just got lost in it. And of course, that's the problem, right? It's that, like you lose your place in yeah. the book, and then you're like, wait, where did I read? So I read, I read like maybe the first 30, 40, 50 pages. I don't remember. And of course, that one is is, is a bit heftier. Uh, yeah, that, the first so, one's very so heftier. Did you read all this or not? Bit... Like, you seem to know pretty much every, everything where the story goes. So did you read them? Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. So I've, I, so yeah, no, no. Over the last few years, yeah, no, I have actually, well, re- listened to them, right? So I have yeah. actually listened to the first okay. five. I've listened, yeah, Dune, Dune, um, what is it, Prophet of Dune, whatever Wait, the second one. Does, Children it, does of it get Dune, better? Because the person has, like, really stupid villains and, like, the... Uh... Is, is Paul in all of these, or, like, is he... He's only in the first three... But right. he's not the main character. Oh, that's always. Good. No, I don't want to tell too much. I don't like him. Okay, okay, shift... okay. Um... Well, that's actually. I'll I'll tell you this, guys. It actually acknowledges the the fact that he's a piece of shit, right? That's actually the theme of the next three books. <laughs> is that Paul okay. was a piece of shit? <laughs> no, I'm he was a failure, and no, so I'm his interested. son, his son Leto the second, has to take on the burden that Paul was unwilling to take on because Paul was such a lazy piece of shit. Who's no. who, who, who's butt hurt and and actually ev- everybody yeah like well of course Paul was created because of Jessica's sin then Paul right it, it's all this kind of like yeah like because somebody didn't step up to it then it becomes a harder path somebody else has to take it on right Aaliyah she she gets all yeah like so yeah it's it's, it's pretty much all centered on the fact that Paul's a piece of shit. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, I, well, I, well, I would yeah, read that, that for, for the book club. Like, I wouldn't read, I wouldn't yeah. read it on my own. So, yeah, like I don't, unless I talk about these books, uh, I don't, I don't want to read them, to be honest. Uh, like the, the first one was such a chore for me to read that I'm like, ugh, I'm still like put off by it. Well, like I said, I can't say, like it's hard to say because in some ways, yeah, they're very dry, but like I think there's something of just simply. No, epic but you know, it, it, it wasn't about, the like, dryness. The I, I can deal with that. I just, when you have crappy characters, like that just like that really bothers me and i'm like i just get i just you know i, I start like oh, and i can understand the, critical, you know? here's like when i see something really bad badly done then i'm like okay well this is bad too so i get over critical when that when i'm bored basically go ahead you were saying that uh, and i don't know this will turn you off for me what i realize is it has almost biblical um ramifications well, right yeah, it's it's, it's that prophetic. sort of personal ep- yeah well it's it's personal epicness right it's like the profoundness of like well, you know that, like it's like being the, the, the messianic you know like the prophecies and shit in there well it's 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 something dealt with sometimes in the bible right so it's essentially that yeah like you know people are chosen for a purpose well it, it's it's that whole hero's journey thing right the resistance the call but this is something especially in the bible right like so like essentially you know Paul just wants to love Chani, right? But of course, he's been yeah. forced into this sort of circumstance. 
And so, of course, he he screws up everything, right? So that's the thing, is that he screws up his relationship with Chani because of the other stuff, and then he screws up the other stuff because he wants he he's not he's unwilling to fully commit, right? So that's what it is. Is and this is the, sort of the theme you see in the Bible, right? Like Samson and Delilah and this other thing, right? Where you're tempted away from the cat pork, the path you should be on, but you, even when you could just commit to the yeah, temptation, commit, you're yeah, unwilling to give up. You're Exactly. So you're neither willing to be just, you know, living a simple life nor living your epic mm. calling. Right. So that's, of course, the, the failing that keeps happening in there. Right. Is it, it, it's sort of like everybody feels stuck. I think that's the main thing throughout all the Dune books. Everybody feels stuck. It's like, well, I want to do this, but I can't do that. No, that, that this, wouldn't bother me. If, if, if they get better, if they get better in like oh, yeah. characterization and like, you know, just just simple like structure, like I wouldn't mind. They're just like. Dune is badly written, bro. Like it's stupid characters, like dumb dialogue, like it's, yeah, and like it's weird. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't flow like a like a good narrative. Yeah, well, like I said, like that. Well, that's the thing. Like, it's a better version of the Bible. I guess <laughs> is what I'm going to tell you, right? So, uh, or the Book of Mormon, right? So, like I said, like that's how I was taught to read. So, after reading that stuff, and it's it, that that's of course always stinted, but then of course it's. Filled with a bunch. So if somebody decided to write a better version of the Bible with giant worms and spaceships and shit like that, right, which would be a better, that's essentially what the Dune series is, right? It has that sort of epicness of, and all that, but it's just, so yeah, it's still the Bible, guys. It's just the better Bible. It's the Bible that we should have gotten, guys. Well, what I say, I, I, read, it, I read it for the book club. Uh, yeah, not outside the book club. So if you guys want to do them, I'll do them. Maybe at some point here we'll, we'll see because I mean once once you get into that cycle because like I said we will have to cover Dune right because yeah none of the movies have been fully true to it to really fully capture like I said certain side characters are better captured in that series than well, Adrian you know, the, the latest it. movie it completely misses the mark like yeah, I just oh, couldn't man. get into it I mean, oh yeah well that's what I'm saying the the the, the new movie oh, misses God. such a core because because here's oh, yeah. the other thing the, the, the 80s movie was way like better. Of scale well, yeah because here's scale way better better it was weird in the 80s movie but that whole thing where like you hear their inner thoughts you do that because you have to like everything in Dune is is inner thoughts like it's always like them like well i wish i could well like i was just explaining it's like well i want to do this but i can't do this so i can't so it's just them sitting there thinking about all the things that they can't do right like so like most of the right yeah and that's it's, the a, thing, it's, right? it's like, a debate it's a debate anything. uh process it's yeah. that inner mo yeah well that's the thing like a lot of it is done via inner monologue yeah. now, right like the whole especially duke leto like like duke leto Everything is like he feels compared. Like he he can't really connect with his son. He can't truly tell Je Je Jessica how much he loves her. He can't truly tell his counsel that he knows who, that you know Jessica's not the spy. He can't like everything with him is 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 emotional constipation, yeah. right? Like everything. Like so that's that. And, and of course that's what we, like in some ways he's actually the most decent character, right? He's he's actually the. And, and that shows you that in this 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 sort of universe, how fucked you are, right? In in all ways, he's the because at the same time he is affectionate enough to Jessica. He is, but like that's the thing. Like he always feels very insecure. So like he's actually the only good guy well, in the he, books. He, right? He's like, the only one that else... acts with honor and like whatever's charged to him. He's like, okay, I'm gonna do exactly. it, whatever it takes. Yeah. Like I'll just I'll do it and I'll deal with the consequences, right? Exactly. So, like, that's the everybody else is like mixed and can't really be it. So, like, but, but but of course that's why he gets fucked the hardest, right? So that's that's the that's the point of the books, right? Is that the, yeah, the most decent guy in the books is just constantly fucked. So, yeah, it, it's, I mean, it's it's, it's kind of like real life, though, right? I mean, oh, but even more so, like, I mean, it's really <laughs> epic. Like, it's like it's like it's like really like over the top, right? It's like yeah. This guy, he's the best guy here, but let's fuck him. Fuck him again. So, I mean, so like I said, biblically, biblically, like it's, it's, it's biblical proportions of, you know, of, of, yeah, that. So, I mean, but, that, that, know, that like, really it, is the, the best, the best part of, so. of the book is that to me, right? And like the, the whole, like the whole build up leading to, to Leto being betrayed. That's amazing on the book. And like in the, on the movie, it's like two scenes. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no, that's the thing. All they skip all of that. They skip all, all of all of that kind because like that's where you really build like yeah, Leto and Jessica and Paul and their relationship and their interplay. Because the whole but scene there so much the desert, so much tension, with, right? Like when you know it's like okay, like you know, like you know what it's leading, right? It's like oh yeah, you know, like and the, the whole scene where he's walking along, like you know, like at night. And you know it's coming. Like it's such a great. I mean, that is the best part of the book to me. Uh, they hold it up to that. And in the movie, well, it's it's that it's the dinner, right? Like the the big scene that they cut out is the dinner. There's like a dinner and like the whole thing. But yeah, the interplay between Paul and Jessica and Leto is all but, lost, like, right? Like, because was the menta when Leto... uh, I forget the uh, the menta that that uh, in the first book. Oh. Anyway, it's like. Mm. Yeah, the, the like, good one, uh, the good one that that, that gets that gets corrupted uh, into into working with it. Anyways, um, like he, him too. Fu Fu Fear Fu. Yeah, Fear, yeah, Howard. Yeah, Fu Fear Fu. Yeah, Howard. Fear, Howard. Howard. Yeah. So the whole thing with Howard, like, is this is double play in between Jessica, Howard, uh, Leto, and Paul, and it's this kind of you know like this like, back and forth of like you know like like you're like okay like who who's got the ball now and like. You you know you know it's coming right like this crescendo to 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 the the Lado set and like yeah on the movie that I think they even cut to like the Lado already like they they, cause they they catch him and like you they just cut to that like there is no no build up no escalation to to that which is is to me is like the crux of like what kicks the whole the whole uh, story in, in the first book. Well, because because then it it sets this because like yeah there's like an important scene where like. Leto is because 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 who is it? Who's the guy who actually betrays them? It's Doctor. Uh, it's almost like a Chinese name, like Doctor. Doctor Z. It's not like Xing, but I think it's like Doctor something. It's almost like Doctor Xing or something like that. Um, he's the one that's broken, right? Because it shows like yeah. He's Wait, the what, one. Who? Oh, uh, it's a Yue, Doctor Yue. Yeah, Doctor yeah, Ewan, yeah. that's what it is. Doctor Ewan, yeah, yeah. right? So he's the one, but like the way, because like what it is is that, yeah, is that uh, what's his name? Uh, Duke Leto has to convince Fufer Howitt that he suspects Jessica, but then later on he explains to Paul, you know, you know, I want you to know that like I never suspect. I want you to tell your mother that I never suspected her. I always trusted her, but I just had to, right? Like so, I mean, that's the thing. Like it's. All this interplay and all this complexity, right? And the fact that yeah, he's like, I want Wait, to tell and, my son I and, love uh, him. I, I forget, Doctor Yu is because uh, they, they kidnap his wife, right? So he he does it like under duress as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he gets betrayed himself. Right? Wait, it, this is not even the movie, right? On the latest movie, or no? It, well, it, I think they vaguely it, it, in the latest movie. It is, it is so is, lost. Yeah. It is. But it, it's it's it, it's like it two is, minutes, right? Of, of a scene. It's not even a whole scene. It's like yeah, a two it's very scene. fast. I mean, even even the David Lynch, even the extended cut of the David Lynch one, doesn't full. But it captures most. It really does capture a lot more of it. But yeah, no, the new movie, like that's the thing. Like it's just it, like oh, it's, all of it's, it's not. It's so captured, dry. Like, the new movie, like I mean, it's just like. It's just, it, no, it, it, like I said, he wanted to like make a documentary. Uh, Lawrence Lawrence of Arabian uh, Space is like, oh, look at this vast desert scene. I'm just gonna pan over the desert for two minutes. And, like, he, it, two no, minutes that could have been he, spent he on. He has this shot too of like like the, their their eyes just looking kind of angsty. I'm like, what the fuck? Like it's just retarded. But yeah, and a lot of those shots were just far. Too Why long. is that? Did like, you see? I, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's like they're beautiful shots, right? And I mean, th no, this but, is a but, but hold on, like, he, he, problem, he has the right? shots. It's the same thing in he has Blade a landscape Runner, shot, right? right? Like, like, I mean, they are, yeah, are, are yeah. but also. Of a fully CG landscape. But, but also, also he would cut, he would cut to the characters, yeah. and like I know it's important to like you know like to to establish you know like uh, to ground your character to focus on their eyes. I get that, but like he just lingers there. It's like, dude, okay, and, uh, uh, and yeah, they're, like, posing, they're like they're like posing. They're like posing. If if he was gonna do that shit, he should have gone full stalker. What's the guy? What's the guy who did stalker? Um, uh, the Russian, like every all of his movies are like three hours long. It's like if he's gonna do that shit, then he should have made a three hour long movie. It's like, no, guys, we gotta leave some stuff on the cutting room floor. So I'm gonna keep the eye shots, and I'm gonna leave out all the, you know, important stuff. Uh, Andre Tarkovsky. Tarkovsky. Yeah. yeah, Tarkovsky. Tarkovsky can be real slow like that, but yeah, he he also did um, Solaris. Uh, Solaris, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, like he he doesn't like he 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 really he really milks that tit, but at least he gives you three hours of tit milking, right? Well, you know what? Um, <laughs> 2001, 2001 Space Odyssey. Like I, I rewatched it recently. I'm like, oh shit, this movie has a lot of this. These super long shots too. I don't know if you guys uh, remember that. And I, I just yeah, yeah it does. like it I, does. I I just still remember it being so yeah, like so kind of self indulgent. And I'm like, oh my god, this shot is like when you first see a spaceship, it's like it's like dude, this is. I'm like looking at my uh, at my phone for yeah. the time. It's like how long is this going? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 mostly paper. now. Of course, at that time, and it's it, well, of course that one holds up, right? Like all oh, the, the effects, the really good, yeah, 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 better, for better sure. than better than I think Star Wars. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like, really, yeah, yeah, so yeah, much yeah. more cleaner than definitely than other shit. Right, like it's still so. I mean, yeah, you can so kind of forget for shots, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you want to look as eye candy. Right? Well, especially back then, it was nothing like that, yeah. right? Like at all, no CGI. So I guess people would love to see that. But now, but I, I watch it recently. Like, oh man, it's taking, it is taking long. <laughs> that. Uh... Well, like I said, like like they'll even uh, <laughs> like like Dune. It's like, oh yeah, I'm trying to be Lawrence of Arabia. It's like, yeah, but yours is all CG desert. So, uh, you know, Lawrence of Arabia was at least yeah. like. Real desert, yeah, but, but, but but some of those CG shots were nice. Like I mean, it looks he just, nice. He, it's pure he just yeah, lingers. But, but, but I mean, he long. lingers too yeah, long. Way too but, long. Way but, but, but when too you know it's long. when you when it's fully made, it's 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 like yeah, it's just it's like I know this is fake. So like, unless you got something interesting out there, I mean, put some fucking sandworm or something, right? Like it's like if you're gonna see, show me a CG sand dune, you know, yeah, but you know, it's like especially like the, the if you, if you read the if you read the book though, what I think he's saying it's a lot of it's internal, right? Like internal, you know, like battles in all this inter, you know, like crazy storm inside of the characters. It's not it's not that yeah. at all. Like the book it doesn't spend well, too much like, time. You think it's David Lynch being weird, but that like that whole like internal dialogue yeah. thing, right? Like you just have to it's literally of course he does it to be weird too, but it's like it's inherently because that's the only way to make Dune. You yeah, have for to sure. it's all it's all yeah, like it's a, like in inner inner conflict, right? Concentration. It's so inner conflict. Like most I mean the whole the whole crux is inner conflict and like to, to have to have a movie showing you, you know, like uh, lingering shots of the landscape. Well, because everybody's spied on. Like, there's total surveillance. That's they like they can't actually talk to. Because like, even then, even when they want to, like, yeah, they have to. They're all like, yeah, facades and stuff like that. Because what you have to remember is that um, that Je- ben, the Benny Jesuit woman. It's I think it's I think it's solved. Late, but like, she is she's Jessica's mother. So she's Paul's grandmother, yeah. right? So like, and of course, she really does mean that she would have killed him if he had failed. But at the same time, and at the same time, her Benny, but at the same time, she knows that she's the grandmother of the Kwisatz Haderach. So like, it, it's like this weird duality and everything, right? So Jessica is loyal to the Benny Jesser, but then she falls. In, so everybody has mixed loyalties and they're, they, they're like, compa- so like, I mean, that's the thing. It's just like so much like, yeah, like, you know, emotional distress, everything, right? Yeah, I know, and I mean, like to 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 completely like you know like put that aside for for desert lingering shots is just the wrong way to go for sure. And then woke the wokeness of uh, making kinds of. Oh uh, my god! I mean, they could have yeah. made. I, I would have been fine. Like he doesn't need to be a white. I mean, it could have been, a, but it has to be a father. Of course, it's, it's a father it's figure. It's a, a yeah, it's a paternal it's figure a, for sure, a hundred percent. That is retarded. Yeah, no, it makes no sense. And so, like that, that, that completely. Uh, that 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 was just that was just the unacceptable. Well, it makes no sense, and like so, yeah, it, well, no, it, it, like like they could have like there's there's a bunch of characters they probably could have done the tech. No, technically they could have done if they were gonna do it with anybody, they could have done it with um oh what's the the the, uh, the guy who was played by um Patrick Stewart in the old one, Gurney Hallett. Okay, right? yeah, yep. Because you can't, because of later books, you can't do it with um, the guy that was played by what's his name. Um, oh, you guys know the, the 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 guy, the Samoan guy, or is he? Yeah, what's well, his name? Jason that's, that's, Momoa. That's, 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 that's Duncan. 
Yeah, yeah, no, yeah you, he was you, Duncan so Idaho. You couldn't, yeah. you couldn't make Duncan Idaho woman, but you actually could make, could have made. Te- it it would have been kind. Of, it still would have been like, oh, making a cool chick. But you could have made Gurney Halleck a woman more than than Keens. You couldn't make Keens a woman because it, it has to do with because. Ka- to be honest, Kynes, any of the warriors, like you know, just warriors, like they can be a woman, like whatever, right? But like. No, 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 not, 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 not Duncan Idaho for reasons. Oh, but I don't know. I in the later much. books, in the later books, yeah, no, uh, yeah, no, I don't want to spoil it for you. But like, like I said, Gurney Halleck, though you could have, technically you could have. Well, here, here's what I'll tell you. Um, you know, Kynes is the father of Chani, right? So, and it's very important that it's the fa- not the mother of Chani, but the father of Chani. Duncan Idaho uses his penis on things oh, okay. right so that's my point gurney halleck really doesn't so that's why you technically could have gender swapped gurney halleck and actually gurney halleck's actually the more active if anything well, gurney it, halleck's going to be more the it, space it, battles it, it, and lasers it, and shit like yeah that, he's, right? a, he's also a warrior poet right so well that's the thing later on in the book right in the second half of the book he's going to meet up again with um with with um what you would call it, um, Paul, right? Because he, he he's like leading a like pretty much after they defeat the yeah, Dukes, he pretty that, much I mean, takes I mean, what remains of the Dukes. Going. Yeah, so like then you could have like the cool warrior chick out there, right? So Gurney Halleck definitely could have been the and even the name Gurney, right? It's like Gurney could be a chick's yeah. name, right? Gurney. It's, it's, so like that if they if they were gonna do it for the sake of doing it, then yeah, then I would have said. Do it to Gurney Halleck, right? Because then you get your cool battle chick and all that stuff, right? But yeah, no, by doing it to Kynes, it actually really messes up a bunch of stuff. No, but he's he he's really? also a paternal figure in 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 there, right? Like I mean, in the second half of the book as well, like um and, and like in, in their in their society, the way it's structured, right? Like it, it, it's you know, it's a it's a male. Uh, yeah, no, that, that makes some sense. Kynes? No, no. I think you're thinking of Stilgar. Oh, no, yeah. I'm thinking of Stilgar. Never mind. Yeah. Stilgar is her maternal uncle, but that's, and that's the entire point, right? Like, yeah, no. But there's certain aspects of, there's certain aspects about having, yeah, Kynes be a, right? Like, once again, it's, it's the guy who goes in love, falls in love with a native woman, but it's, it's also because of endemic marriages and stuff like that, right? Like, in endemic, um, cultures, um, the, the heritage is usually fall right like so Judaism right so Jews right like you're only Jewish if your mom's Jewish right it's so like that's it, it's it's this it's kind of that same sort of representation there right like you're you're more part of the culture that your mother's part yeah. of to a certain extent there yeah. right so by making the mother you know be be the outsider it's actually it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense in the ethnology and course yeah. of things. So I'm I'm curious the Thopters in the Denny Villeneuve movie does that ring true more to the book? I can't yeah, remember they flapped yeah, they their wings, have, right? Yeah, they do have like buzzing wings and stuff. It actually does, yeah. And even the, the scene when like they're like, with, the, with the two thugs and like they're kind of, you know, like uh, police fight them out of the cockpit, like that reminded me a lot of the book for sure. That's the most accurate part. I, I, that, 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 well, that's the thing. Like, but the, the, so that was closer. Although I think the original movie captured that well too, actually. And plus, plus, I Wait, just, which one is the, the, the chick, you, you, the you ch- mean? Because uh, there are. It's the uh, the 1982 one, or. Yeah, yeah, the 1982. 84, sorry. Or whatever. Plus, I just who who played Jessica in this one. It was um yeah yeah um what's her name, uh R- Rebecca, no it's not Rebecca what's her name she's in Mission Mission Impossible. Uh, what's her name Rebecca Ferguson? Yeah. I oh it is Rebecca Ferguson yeah. The the it's just yeah no I really for the most part like yeah I'm trying to remember any parts in the new movie where I liked the casting better too that's the other problem because of course yeah no i I liked um what's his name paul better yeah Um, in the 80s one yeah much better oscar isaac i usually like but no um what's his name just um uh what's his name uh prag now or something the 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 german guy right like he just 
he just captured like yeah like i said the 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 the, the duke better And what about Zendaya as Chani? Uh, take her. We, we saw so little of her in this one. And of course, uh, what's her name? The chick who played it in the original one. Uh, Sean Young. Sean Young. She's always just like, I'm, I have a mixed, mixed sort of opinion of her. So it, it's hard to say. But, but like, I mean, yeah, because like, I mean. And, and Harkonnen. Stellan Skarsgård. Oh, the other guy. The other guy was just Stellan yeah. Skarsgård was more subtle. The other guys was more over the top. But in some ways, I, like I like like that one. That one I could say either way. Like I think he kind of gives a he makes the Duke a bit more subtle. And yeah, but we'll see. We'll see when he in in the second movie. Like I, I am curious to see his performance in the second movie. Um, they both screwed up the yeah. emperor because the emperor is literally supposed to be the duke with red hair, like to show you the sort of interbreeding that's been going on, right? So they and and, and he's and of course also he's been kept young by the spice and everything like that. So even though he's supposed to be like seventy, eighty or something like that, he's been kept young by it, right? The fact that they make him old in both movies is actually, and actually even that TV series, they just nope the emperor it like, but it very clearly says. And they're probably just like, oh, but we don't want to have to explain to people that they've been, he's been kept young. Why is the emperor 80 years old and looks like the duke, but, you know, with red hair? It's like because they've been interbred for the last – like that's the entire theme yeah. of the Dune books is that certain archetypes yeah. keep reappearing, right? Well, that but, essentially but the Dune – To me, though, it was so striking that he looks like, like Leto, like it's like the mirror image when that's described in the book. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, you know, it's like they, they keep using the – the same genetic, you know, uh, lines to exactly, and it goes. It, it happens the later in the books too, right? There's another yeah. guy. The, the, actually, without spoiling it, the main character in the fifth book, which is supposed to take place 3,500 years later, is the Duke Leto type, right? Like they actually describe themselves as that. It's like, oh yeah, she's got the Jessica type in her. Oh yeah, she's got he's got the the Leto, right? Because they keep almost yeah breeding in, like even though it's years apart like they keep rebreeding these archetypes in their breeding yeah, program yeah. right I let's see know. there was there was what well, let me see. i'm trying to think if there was so we'll see we'll see how still scars guard uh, i'm, um, I'm, I'm not gonna watch no, this no. movie probably like i don't know i I'll, but, I, but, I, but I, I will you're, watch you're not it. gonna watch the part no two, i don't Carla. think so. <laughs> i'm gonna watch it uh i I, 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 I mean, I, I think we way have to too watch disappointed. it to like at least way too cut it off. With it, like, with oh, no, no, that, that was the one. <laughs> Charlotte Rampling as Reverend Mother yeah. Mahayam, because I've always liked her. She, I think, is maybe better than, ah, it's hard to say. The other one did well, too, but like she, I think she worked well in that one. I mean, yeah, like Jason Momoa is on the screen for all of five minutes. So is Josh Brolin, right? Like. You, you see it, you actually see less of them in this movie than you did their characters in the other movie, too, right? So you barely see them. And, and we don't see Fade at all. Right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Javier Bar <laughs> Javier Bottom as Stilgar. Of course, we see him for five minutes. He will be more present in the next movie. So we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. That's that, I'm, I mean, I will see it. I will watch it. But yeah, we'll see how they. I, I, I probably how won't. they make it. I wait for you to guys to watch it and if tell me if it's you know even an iota worth it, then I, I might give it a shot. But I'm not I have zero inclination to, to watch it. Well, I mean, well they've pushed it back now. It was I will November watch November 2023. Now it's I will March always 2024. I will always watch you know any Dune because yeah, I, I just have to. But yeah, yeah we'll, we'll we'll see we'll we'll see how the next movie does. Like, I mean, is this theater worthy for you, Zinc? Like, oh I mean... no, 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 nothing's theater worthy. I don't go to theater. <laughs> yeah, no, that that that, 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 that ship sailed. Well, uh, uh, honestly, I I never <laughs> like going to theaters. Like, you have the 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 person sitting next to you eating popcorn, oh, yeah, no, like, exactly. like picking their nose, like what the f I. Uh, or like farting, like. Well, even just more so, it's just like just the fact that you can't pause it. Like exactly. you got to do it's like, oh, hey guys, you I'm going to I'm gonna piss. Right? Like, oh, I'm... I just missed ten minutes of the movie. Well, because more than anything, I'm 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 a very big believer in you know hydration there, right? So I, and of course, but I'm also not a a hippie, so I drink soda. So of course, I get the big soda, but yeah, like 
five minutes, you know, no, half like, an you, hour, you, you know, have hour to and a half pee. Like, like, you know, like, the, in like the, the way you, exactly. your body is, like, if you know you can pee, you're going to want to pee. So you have to pee and then you miss time. Oh, yeah, no, exactly. Like, so like, yeah, you like, it's like, oh, I, I don't want to drink too much because I'm going, it's like, why, why, why should I, I, I'm not in like grade school. It's like, oh, you got to hold your bladder. Yeah, because of course, because of course, none of these movies have intermissions anymore, right? Even if it's well, three hours, you know what movie no had the, the, the uh, Hateful Eight by Tarantino? Actually, went to movies yeah, and had yeah. an intermission. It did. It, yeah. Anyway, so did what was? Oh, Roadhouse did you guys see uh, Suspiria, the, the latest one, the remake? Oh my god, no, movie's no, awesome. No, no. It, what, what, uh, it's what a, is the Rio Argento, it's a horror movie from the, the 80s, an Italian horror movie, and they remade it like super crazy. Actually, it, I was thinking of uh, Greg of Pan and, and the white people because I had read them, right? And I watched that movie, and like, oh shit, like this is so like Arthur Macken, <laughs> the imagery. Uh, yeah, it, it's, I mean, it's a horror, and it's very like the, the movie used to, it was like a neon 80s horror, right? Like, very neon, uh, you know, like synthwave kind of horror, and they remade it with this like kind of dark folk body horror imagery. Very interesting. Um, I enjoyed it. I'll maybe check it out. Like I said, like I just so rarely watch it. No, but anymore, honestly, but this one like it, it, it has like a, I don't want to spoil it, but like how can I say this? Um, like a lot of the uh, kind of art direction, like they really made it like to have a lot of texture. Like it, it's really interesting, like visually, like. You know, people who watch it are like, oh my god, like I had like a weird, you know, like uh, different experience with this movie where like, you know, what I said, like the, the, the body horror, or, like even the, the texture doesn't have to necessarily be something horror, but like the way, you know, people are dressed or like, you know, the way their skin looks like they just kind of draw attention to that. So it, it's it's like a very, you know, kind of texture oriented experience as a movie. Uh, yeah, I was impressed. It's just long, but it does have a, an interlude. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but like I said, I mean, yeah, they're just like going to the theater. No, but I, like, I never oh, liked it. I never liked going to the theater. Uh, and what I said, like, most like people next to me with on their phone or like just, you know, like some dumbass, like, you know, like doing like uh, uh, the commentary track for the movie, like, shut the fuck up. Like, it's just super distracting. Oh, yeah, uh, no, no, exactly. All that. So, yeah, I know. Because, yeah, I, I, it's like I'm not there to enjoy it with other people. But even if I was, like, it's like, because then, the, yeah, like, I don't want to hear other people's uh, conversation, but then yeah, if I am, but, but like if you're because you're if you are at home and you do want to discuss it, you can discuss it with the person. You know, you can pause it or you can talk over it if it's shitty or whatever else, right? Like, I mean, it's just like why 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 go to a well, theater and, anymore? Like, and, and really people tell no me sense. like, oh, but the big screen, like, no, I have a projector at home, you know, four K projector on, on my on my white wall. It looks amazing. I have a sixty five inch TV and I can sit three feet away from it, right? <laughs> Same effect. So, yeah, exactly. So. No, because I mean, I get the excuse before, right? If you had a VHS and a crappy CTR TV, like for sure, like compared to the the, the, the quality from the, you know, like that the the cinema, like a a freaking uh, yeah, like a thirty two millimeter film, like yeah, not the same. But now, now with digital, the digital age, where we have, oh like, yeah, I mean, I would say with my projector, if it's all dark, and I have like you know like the the 4K format movie and I projected even better. Like I can see the pores on like on like people's you know like faces. Like it's insane. So, Car- Carlo, do you have like an actual screen that you pull no, down, or it, do you I just mean, do it right on the wall? I have I have a white wall, so yeah, and like I, I don't decorate my place at all. Are you sure it's not the texture of the wall no, that you're know. seeing, and not the pores? No. Uh, so I just I just project on my wall, and it's uh, yeah, it's great. I, I I wanted to buy a screen, right? But like I mean, with my wall, I'm like, oh no, this works perfectly. Like I don't need one. Uh, my plan was to buy one, uh, but I ended up not using it. And like what I said, I don't decorate, so my my walls are just bare like empty and like uh if, if i push a projector all the way to the back of, of of the living room there like i get yeah like a a, a larger than 50 inch screen so it's huge so yeah so 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 how long does the bulb last in that uh i had this for like i don't know man like three years and like it's still going so i don't know it might be led if it's newer it might be it's, LED. it's led it's an led and it, it, right. it, it's oh. it's hours, yeah, no, it's, so. LED, it's hours, so like nine thousand hours, like that. That's the kind of, I don't know something. I don't remember the exact amount, but I, I looked at the number. I'm like, yeah, this is retarded. Like I, I'm gonna die first before this this goes out. And I, I don't use it that often, right? Like so, like a movie that I know is a visually good movie, 
and then I just watch it on my on my crappy laptop. But if I know it's a yeah movie like Suspiria or like or like you know like uh, I remember watching Dune on that right. Like I mean, oh, I wanted to watch it right. So um, I do got to get a sound system. That's well, I don't right. have that, but I, yeah, yeah, that makes sound. the no, difference. no. But I like I have like I have a headset and like like for that, you know, and it's really good. Like uh, five point one surround. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, good, so, sounds, yeah. Yeah, I have the um, I have the like how many is that like. Went to the six speaker set. Well, actually, it's seven speaker setup with the center channel and like a really, really good bass, right? So, um, yeah, no, the sound is actually quite good. I, I honestly I only I, have a 55 I, inch screen, but I mean, it's well, that's decent, pretty high though. quality, yeah. right? So, no, but I, I prefer yeah, the headset it's though. Sony, I feel like so. some of the like I really hear it in my in, someone's in, inside my head, right? Like uh, when someone's like you know walking and like they step on a branch, like it's you can, you can you know like f- feel the the the, the crack in there. Um, so I I prefer the headset. Uh, also, I have neighbors, so I don't want to be blasting, uh, you know, my my TV too high. Oh heavy. right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, apparently, you can get like like um, headsets that stim uh, that simulate the surround, so it has like. Whole different smaller speakers. Yeah, there, yeah, so yeah. Like, they want to have it's pretty good. Yeah, sound, they're actually, they're yeah. actually ones that like, you know, they kind of uh, have like vibrations on your like, uh, uh, yeah, on, on, on your uh, mandible bundle on your jawbone. Do you know about this? Like they, you have you have the headset, but it. Oh no! I I I, I what? And that gives you like an extra like. Bit of yeah, exactly. And, and like Is you have it? like a, a bit of it that that's against your your jawbone there, and it. It you know it, it shows like vibrations uh, just related to to the sound effects and like that gives like an extra layer uh, of like a, what's it uh, what's the word or or I don't know I forget but anyways you have those headsets with a yeah I, I forget what the word is but it stimulates your, your jawbone um, so that's but it. like I mean how much are those like twelve hundred bucks or something yeah they're super or... expensive they're like retarded like six hundred dollars <laughs> and up. <laughs> Okay, yeah. <laughs> Man, I mean, well, like I said, like, more than anything, it's just, well, I mean, all of TV's gone woke. And, and the other thing, too, with TV is just, like like I said, the, the advantage of books is, one, it's not gotten done by committee, right? So one person can actually get their vision out there. And, two, it costs so little, right? So, like, a lot of things get canceled prematurely. Like, these days, it's like, oh, yeah, that series sounds really great. But, uh, you know, if I watch it in the first season, it's going to get canceled. So usually these days, like, I wait two, three seasons maybe. Like, just because, like, it's like everything gets canceled prematurely if it is any good. So it's just it's just irritating to, you know, get your hopes up. Wait, uh, sorry, guys. It's a, it's a yeah. oral conduction headphones. That's what it was. I just wanted to. Because it was on the tip of my tongue. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oral conduction. And, and what are the brands that make the oral conduction? I'm guessing Bose probably does. Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I would assume Bose would. Um, but any, anyway, so, Sennheiser, I guess. Or? Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I just never liked it. Sennheiser doesn't as much consumer. They mostly do prosumer and professional audio right because this is really a yeah. consumer gimmick and so bose's bose's entire shtick since those like stereos they used to sell was always you know big sound from a small thing right they've always been in, like in the high-end consumer market right i don't know anybody who uses bose professionally right like i know they'll, they'll, they'll like I, I knew a guy who's like oh yeah i bought like they were like three or six thousand dollar earbuds from bose right like so they they, they make high but at the same time um beats is sort of it eating their their lunch there right because that's what beats is beats beats can uh no i don't think anybody uses stuff beats professionally right like for monitors like it really no, is no, no, no. it's 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 high it's that high-end consumer like i mean some of the well, like the sony ones are pretty good for well, like um, what, it, what it comes down to is end. actually it's the same with prosumer cameras. So I know a lot of people like if you they like when people started doing DSLR filmmaking, you would get something that looks really good, but that's because it already pumps the saturation. Where if you actually go and shoot with like a professional digital camera like the Red Cam, when you see it in the raw, it just looks kind of dull. But the main pr- reason is because you can do the color correction, right? 
the DSLRs, they automatically do the color correction. So you can't undo it, right? It's destructive, right? Whereas the raw, it, it collects a lot of information there. So when you just view the raw footage from a red camera, it looks, but then of course, once you actually go in and you start manipulating it, it has like all, you know, it has a bunch of, I guess you could say hidden pixels, right? So you can really, you know, pull, yeah. you, you can do the color correction and really pull stuff out of there. I, I, so, think, I think the Apple, um, the iPhone Pro Max can do uh, Pro Pro Raw um, video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, a lot of them can do raw now, but that that was the entire point. So, like, even my Samsung can do Wait, hold raw. On, but right? what, course, what, yeah, what was your the... point, Zing? What, what what did you bring up there? So it's the same with the bows. It, with the bows, I'm pretty sure what they do is they manipulate. So, like with professional equipment, you actually don't want it boosted and everything, right? You want it to be flat. It's all about having a flat response, right? Because then you can go in and mix it, right? But you want to get a nice, pure, flat response. Whereas I'm pretty sure with the high end consumer, it has a bunch of stuff to like make it sound richer and fuller. So it's pre mixed, I guess is what I'm saying, right? Okay. Just, yeah. just, just like the DSLRs. Well, EQ'd, right? Well, that's what I'm saying. The DSLRs purposely, you know, boost certain frequencies to make it look really vibrant and sharp. Yeah. The bow, the, I'm pretty sure that what the Bose does is it's always relied on boosting certain frequencies, right? Whereas for professional video or audio, you actually want a flat um, response because then you can, you know, then the professionals go and mix it to to match the desired sort of outcome, right? So it's the same, I think, right? So I'm pretty sure that that's what Bose and Beats relies on is really boosting the bass and boosting the mid range, you know, to to make it sound richer and fuller to you. Where it's right. it's probably not a flat response, like it probably if you probably look at the response curves on those, it's very, all you know, yeah, it's boosted for the, 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 the ranges that human beings want to hear. Right. So yeah, it's, it's, it's the yeah. same concept. Right. So like that, that's why it's, it's not targeted to, to professional because professional monitors, you want that flat response. Yeah, yeah for, for sure. Um, and, and like, so Sennheiser, you would say is, Sennheiser for that flat no, response. No, no, no. It depends on the equipment, right? Because are we talking microphones? Are we talking headphones? So uh, when it comes to audio equipment, Sennheiser occupies a weird space because they do full-on professional stuff that will cost thousands of dollars. But they also do. Uh, I wouldn't call it because it's it's low-end pro Siri, right? So you can buy that pair of Sennheiser headphones on Amazon for like twenty twenty five dollars right they're good but they're whatever right so they, they will make whereas there's other brands I can't think of them off the top of my head right now that like you'll never hear of until you get into the two thousand three thousand right like, like like sure uh sure sure's kind of that the, the, uh, yeah sure is professional but they have low end like the all oh no there's I can't think off the top of my it's like when, uh, I'm trying to think of the names for like headphones, like uh, it's, it's things like like for for recording equipment, Tascam, which nobody knows of, right? Like so that's like a professional. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Tascam. Like like yeah, t t no Tascam, doubt. Tascam makes no consumer grade equipment, right? Like it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's all. And well, there's I mean, other. But believe it or not, they're like mixing board like recorder, um, which is like the evolution of their four track like audio cassette recorder which was yeah the, actually this... pretty cool for the time but like yeah. i mean now it's all digital it's only like 600 bucks man well that's the, like him. the digital is really interrupted because like that's where zoom occupies so zoom occupies on the fact that yeah now with digital you can jam a whole bunch so like the 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 pod track that i have there i have another thing from zoom and it was really popular back when people were doing the dslr filmmaking right because essentially you could you could do like full things on dslr there was the zoom h4 and then later on the h4n which was a, essentially a multi-track recorder but it was very very small so you could very easily do it on site you could battery power it or something else like that so you could be out there and just yeah. you know pack just just like the dslr right dslrs even if you put on all the stuff because really what it comes down to is once you're recording digitally yeah, the, you know, the bit rate and all that stuff and the size of the chip in the DSLR. But, of course, it's always the lens, right? The lens and the lighting. 
So that's why, like, yeah, if you if you light things right, yeah, then you can shoot stuff with a shitty iPad and make it look great, right? Because it comes down to professional lighting techniques, right? So that's that. That's, yeah, yeah. So that 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 was sort of the big revolution recently is that yeah, with digital, it becomes a lot less. You know, it's always dig- – but, of course, then the big thing is where, where where does it get digitized? At what point does it get digitized? And what is the digitizer? But, yeah, a lot of that's gotten cheaper because, yeah, digital equipment la- – because analog, like I said, it's almost like an instrument. It's like a piano, right? Like it's extremely fragile and stuff like that. And, like, yeah, like it, 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 microphones, like vintage microphones, right? Because, like, they're almost like vintage instruments. Like, Like they take on a characteristic that, you know – you know, you oh, just yeah, can't yeah. Be. so like yeah but then they're extremely fragile right so like you get like some of those old ribbon microphones from like the 30s and like the 40s the, the, like the, the universal audio um so i mean i bought that one universal audio mic like a couple months ago it was like 400 bucks it really is a good one like i mean it does sound really good right like i mean um but i mean it it can go up from there right to like you know, three thousand to like four thousand. Well, like per I said, mic, right? Like, getting, I mean, getting. Some people like, like I said, especially if they're the vintage mics, right? Like, so some people want to have that vintage re- microphone from like the thirties and forties, not just for the collectability, but because you know, it just the it, character it, of the sound. Yeah, like it just, yeah, it's irreproducible otherwise, right? So, I, I think they are like remanufacturing some of those designs, though. And yeah, like yeah they, they do new right they do yeah but like yeah it's just like yeah like it's almost like it's taken on a personality and stuff right like it just because it, it's 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 metal and stuff but yeah it's it's mechanic like yeah it's, it's it's somewhat mechanical and yeah like it's just like so stuff like that so yeah no i mean it can go way way up from there but then and then there's no like one size fits all because yeah then you have the different pickup patterns and different things like that when it comes to all of it right it's just like you you don't shoot everything in wide wide lens right or a telephoto lens right it depends on the circumstances yeah the yeah uh, so were you doing like when you're doing film at the University of Utah were you doing like sound recording and stuff like that as well um, yeah you know it's part of it's, okay I actually I ended up being mostly because like. Most funny enough, yeah, even though I wasn't like having any background, like, but because I, I took the sound recording, I ended up doing the sound recording for a lot of people just because I was better at it. So I, I ended up becoming the sound guy for my class, right? So, so that's why I, I got quite deep into it and everything. Also, because, like, yeah, I'm, I'm very, you know, other people like I, I, I hear all the noise, so yeah, I know yeah, the birds chirping back there for the cat. Yeah, yeah. Can you guys hear the bird chirping still? Um, I just heard before a little bit. Sometimes, no, li- little bit. Yeah. I'm curious. Much. I'm I'm gonna check the recording and see how much it caused the problem on here. I need to get a better headset anyway. I mean, well, I mean it, it's headset. it's not like annoying, honestly. Uh, unless you mention it, like it didn't bother me for it wasn't like. Well, if anything, it probably different. it probably makes you guys think I'm outside just enjoying the weather, you know. But I'm not. I'm indoors. <laughs> so, so, what's the temperature there in Boise? Is it, it was actually like a bit warmer. Today. Warm? Oh, okay. No, no, no. Today it was. Today it was up to seventy something. But mostly it's been flowing around 50, 60. So it's been fallish weather for the most part. But it, it was actually a bit on the warmer side today. So, so what's that like? Sixteen degrees around there. Celsius? I mean, sixty-eight is twenty Celsius. Right. So yeah, it was probably like you know twenty one, twenty two today. Now, now it's oh, wow. actually now it's now it's down maybe closer to sixteen degrees or so. So, oh wow, seventeen degrees. You know, it's it's really cooling off up here, um, quick, quickly. Yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, um, I'm gonna call it a night. So I'm working tomorrow, uh, yeah. but. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm, sure. I'm down to an event stories, but uh, I mean, a- any any classic sci-fi, like, uh, I feel like I'm down as well. And even the Forever War, like, I really like that too. So if you if you want you guys want to do it. Yeah, yeah we, we might do the Forever War. That's been one that's been on my list for a while there. So, but yeah, maybe, 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 
yeah, maybe after we get through October, November, we'll go to the Neutron Star and then right, see yeah. where we go from there. Yeah, that sounds good. Awesome. Yeah, uh, great as always, guys. Um, yeah, great, great talking to you. Yeah, guys. perfect. I'm glad you guys like Niven because, yeah, like I said, I've read quite a lot of them. So, well, well, well it's like I, I feel like, like it's like, I feel like I need to give it more of a chance. Like I want to give it more of a chance because, like, if it builds on on things, then you know I'm gonna like it even more, right? So. Well, like, you know, um, the, the, this yeah, one I, I, with I, the I, ending, I was pretty satisfied, to be honest. Like, you know, like, Mark Yeah, the is ending strong. is the payoff. It's really strong. Right? Like, yeah, it, absolutely. You know, like, yeah. at the beginning, like, the character seems, seems flat, the story kind of seems silly, but then, you know, like, you get that really strong ending. It's like, okay, like, respect. So uh, I'm down for, for anything else, any the short stories or the, the novellas. Perfect, yep. All right, great, so, guys. All right, guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you later.